Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Florida Winter Tour here. It's leg number two for the 25th year. The Florida Winter Tour here in Loxahatchee, Florida. For, as I had mentioned, leg number two. We're getting our morning warm-ups in this morning as today is, I guess we ought to call it sunscreen Sunday because the sun is out and shining brightly this morning. So a different racetrack for everybody. Probably a little slick out there. A lot of rubber on the track from all of the racing that we've had going on the last several days as well as practice. So we're getting ready for our finals today. Final Sunday here at the Florida Winter Tour. Right now we've got our senior group out on the track warming up this morning. And then what we'll do is we'll have our national anthem here in just a couple of minutes and then we will actually go live with our finals racing here and in our junior VLRs will be our first group to get out and get ready to go racing. Again, uh, they'll be going 16 laps and then we'll also uh, have our micros out there in the minis. The minis, that is, will go 14 laps. So. All right, let me take a seat here. Again, a nice warm morning here in Loxahatchee, Florida. Great to be here live with our friends from Car Chaser, Xander and the crew. Always fun being able to work with these guys. And it's been, uh, to say the least, a pretty exciting week and we're looking forward to some really good racing today. Hopefully it'll be some really good, clean racing and have some, some exciting results. Talk with, uh, quickly talked with Hugh Templeman this morning just to see how he was doing. He was doing okay. After the incident he had had yesterday, he's up and all right this morning. Again, our seniors are out there warming up. Interesting, Sir Murray up there uh, on the top of the pole right now based on how he finished yesterday in this particular group. Yeah, Martin Kremers obviously ended uh, on a sour note in Pro Rock Senior. Great note in Pro Rock Shifter. Yes. He currently sits second. His teammate Diego Ramos is uh, top of the boards right now as he passed him there, but both of them with a nice little gap. It's a PSL 1-2-3. Ramos Morgado, who just goes across the line to go into second there at a 51-5-1-6. Cameron Weinberg is fourth here in the early warm-up. Aaron Benoit sits fifth on that U-Race Tony cart. Carol Pashawick, Connor Zillish down there about six tenths off the pace in his racing edge motorsports cosmic. Blake Nash up to six there that time by as the lap times will continue to shuffle. But uh, like you said, Saturday definitely had its fair bit of on-track carnage there. We had a red flag, of course, in the micro minis. Um, you know, we had a, a, a lot of kind of ups and downs, even for that kid with Mateus Morgato having that wreck on the first re uh, session of the day. And I think probably a little bit of it was the nerves, right? Normally you get a warm-up session at the beginning of every day to kind right. of test everything out and to also get yourself uh, a little bit, uh, you know, confident. Let's go down trackside here for the first time today to our boys down in the pit lane, Alexander Searle and Emery Lida. Boys? Thanks, Xander. I'm here with Steven Miller getting ready for the VLR Junior Final. Steven, you start third in this one. You did not run the pre-final in Rock Junior because of a rib injury. Just tell me through how you're feeling right now. I'm feeling pretty good. It's a little bit sore. I just got to make a clean race and hopefully take the lead right away. Or I can't let Ernesto check out because then my whole entire season will be over for the rock. Yeah, so when you come into this race, and obviously you've had Ernesto way clear of the field of this class for most of the weekend, you've kind of been fighting for that second position. What do you think? How does it change your expectations? And is your goal to get up there and beat him, or do you think it's going to be even realistic for that? I think I can beat them. I just, I got to pass right away. If I don't, he's going to check out and the whole race will be over. So I got to get up front and go. Got you. Any changes to the go-kart last night? Uh, we changed the whole entire setup around. Hopefully it'll be better today. All right, we'll see what happens. Steven Miller starting third in VLR Jr. Ribs are a bit sore, but he's ready to go. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Emery. Appreciate the update there. No more updates on the time charts besides one. Cameron Weinberg went a little bit quicker there. He went to third on that Tesoro Raceworks CRG. You're watching Blake Nash come across the line as the checkered flag flies. Where does the Nash Motorsports EOS cart leading man go? Seventh. Make it eighth here in warm-up. It's a good lap from Frankie Esposito, who will jump up in that prime power team, Viral Art. Connor Zillis there just crossed the line. He went to sixth. Elio Meza there on that 2014 model Tony cart. <laughs> a nine-year-old chassis. He goes sixth in the Iron Rock Motorsports entry. And then no changes at the top of the leaderboard. Diego Ramos, Mateus Morgado, the two quickest. Two tenths off is their teammate, Marion Kremers, who pulled in early. Here comes Morgado looking to go a little better. He will to the top of the boards at a 51-325. He'll nip his teammate. 
And the championship points leader and, and the pole sitter for today's main event, Mateus Morgato, will end on top in morning warm-up. So great, great uh, start to Sunday as the championship rolls on. 33% more points here at round number two. Another 33% point boost when we get to Orlando in a month's time for the Rock Florida Winter Tour Championships. And Mateus Morgato is well on his way right now to defending that 2002, uh, 2022 title. Well, it looks like uh, we're going to have a little change in our weather quickly here. We had uh, sunshine, and now we've got the sun going behind the clouds a little bit. I was wondering whether or not uh, the track was pretty slick as they had gone out this morning. I imagine with all the rubber that's in these corners from all of the work they've been doing, all the practice, all the races, probably making the track a little slick this morning. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at least, you know, uh, today here, though, all dry so far. So uh, a couple announcements here in the paddock. Of course, we'll have the national anthem in about two minutes time while we get set for that VLR Junior main event, the first of the five here in the morning group. Wrapping up, of course, with Pro Senior Rock being the main event at the end of our morning half of sessions. Main events in the afternoon get concluded with Pro Rock Shifter kickoff with Rock GP Masters uh, in the early afternoon around 1 p.m. or so with uh, a round of warmth for all those drivers as well, but a beautiful day from Loxahatchee, Florida, here for the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. And again, we'll take a commercial break, come back, have our national anthem, and get underway with main events here, live from Florida. How tight do you want it?
Time to get suited, booted into the go-karts and main event action underway here from the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Again, what a beautiful day for racing action and VLR Junior will kick us off for the first of five classes here today as the live timing continues to get set up. People tune in from live around the world here, 16 or 20, uh, 16 laps for some of the major classes, 14 laps for the minis and the micros. Let's go back through for VLR Junior what your starting grid is going to look like for the massive field we have here today. We go back to that pre-final, of course, where Ernesto Rivera in the Rollison Performance Group Cosmic has had such a perfect weekend. Couldn't ask for anything better. Got an 8.9 second margin of victory by the time the flag flew and 13 laps yesterday evening. Anthony Martella on that Speed Concepts Racing, black, white, and red. Red Speed will join him on the outside of row number one. Stephen Miller in the Chad Dawkins Racing Cart Republic, as mentioned there, suffering a little bit like a few drivers here this weekend with some rib injuries. He'll line up to the inside of row two and try to do what he can to get himself through to the lead, starting on the inside lane. Leonardo Escorpioni's had a decent day. He rolls off Fourth to the outside, and that Zanella Racing black, yellow, and uh, t black and yellow Tony Cart in the number 855. Then back to row number three, it'll be Emma Scarborough in the Chad Dawkins Racing KR. Lines right up behind her teammate Stephen Miller on the inside. Third row for the 808. Nine spots gained to that pre-final. Heck of a run forward. She'll be joined on row number three by Jordan DeLeo in that Goodwood Cartways Expert. Moving back to row number four, John Antonino Jr. in the Tesoro Raceworks CRG has had to start from the tail end of the field in all three heat races after a problem in qualifying. Drove through another six spots in that pre-final. Rolls off seventh here. I said, well, it should be a little bit easier today. They said, well... Maybe to get through a couple, but to get up to the lead with Ernesto Rivera that the speed that he's had might be a little bit more difficult. David Ibarra, his Tesoro Raceworks CRG teammate, will roll off to the outside of row number four. And to complete your top ten, it'll be the Nash Motorsports EOS card of Victor De Allen Carr and the Lando Norris card uh, SLC entry of Salvador De La Vecchia. Moving back outside your top ten, Turner Brown and that Speed Concepts Racing Black, White, and Red Red Speed. The number 868 will start 11th to the outside uh, of him, Christopher Aitken in the 818. Quentin, uh, Quentin McPherson in the Rawlson Performance Group Cosmic will roll off in 13th. Couple spots gained in the pre-final for him. To his outside, Shun Sekiguchi, the Japanese driver driving for Super Tune USA. Moving back to row number eight, it'll be William Rasmussen, who started dead, dead last in that pre-final, picked up 13 spots in the 8.23. We'll roll off 15th here today to the inside of the Soro Raceworks CRG driver, Carson Weinberg. Martin ramirez Barreto, Ty Fisher, Walter Jenkins the fourth, Christian Quijano, Naomi Garcia, and the rest of the field are a little bit too early on the power, I think. So no green on the first time by here, and they will have to form on up, which gives us time to go back through the last few again. It was Martin Ramirez Barreto on the inside of row nine. Ty Fisher had a penalty after driving through in that race lab, uh, team race lab TB cart. Rolls off 18th here on the outside of row nine. Walter Jenkins the fourth to the inside of row 10. To round off your top 20, it is again Christian Quijano up two spots in the 824. Naomi Garcia on the U Race Tony carts had a up and down roller coaster weekend, but she'll be starting in a bit of a hole down in 21st. Alexander Vanchev on that Lando Norris car will roll off in 22nd. Joshua Sumvalis uh, in 23rd. Peyton Westcott, man, oh, man, as the young lady from the West Coast had uh, just nothing but bad luck here to try and knock her down. She rolls off down in 24th, but, again, should be only up from here for the Nash Motorsports EOS cart. Chase Lee will start to the inside of row number 13 alongside Austin Dramalev. Alexander Jacoby, Landon Cardwell, and Lillian Scarborough will make up the last bit of this 29 to 30 driver VLR Junior field as we get set for action here, Ron John. First thing we're gonna have to pay attention to is the kind of start that Ernesto Rivera gets here as they have gotten all formed up, getting ready to come through turn number five. It's Sunday finals here in Loxahatchee, Florida Winter Tour. We are underway. Green flag down to turn number one. Rivera gets a good jump. Miller going to try and run him a little bit wide on the start, and he will. Steven Miller gets to the lead. Escorpione with a good start down low to get to second. And just like that, you know you have your target on your back when you dominate the way Ernesto Rivera no has doubt. this weekend. And they have taken it to him here on the opening circuit. Back to fourth for the RPG Cosmic. Is he close enough for anything in the PK teardrop? I don't think so. And a Scarborough looking to the inside. And again, one note that's funny here for this one, Ron John, you got boyfriend and girlfriend going at it there for oh, second no. and third. And Emma Scarborough going to go through for second. <laughs> and the Scorpione 
back to Ford. There's Rivera gets through and almost gets to P2. And what a lead. It's Chad Duncan racing one and two on the Cart Republics. How and Emma that? Scarborough up to second. That is a great run for Emma, yes, to get around Leonardo. I think she's going to have some talking to do with him. Yeah, a little bit of a good trash talk between yes. the, the young couple, young kids. <laughs> and uh, as Emma Scarborough heads down the front stretch, here comes Rivera with a big head of steam. He'll go to the lead in turn, or the lead of the pack in turn number one. And what a start for Anthony Martella to fall back and then kind of close back up to this group wow. here. <laughs> and here comes as well Jordan DeLeo, Victor De Allencar, Turner Brown, as it was not so good of a start for a handful, including John Antonino Jr., I believe. No, sorry, Antonino's up to uh, six. I thought it was him there. Indeed, John Antonino, the next driver in line behind uh, Anthony Martella ahead of Jordan DeLeo. He's closing in at the Sorrel Raceworks CRG, but we're watching already Ernesto Rivera making hay, closing the gap to the lead, pulling away from that second group. Looking a little bit further down the line here, we'll see that uh, Turner Brown, the Speed Concept Racing driver right now, on a roll up to the ninth position, already up two spots. Not a bad run so far for Turner in the 868. But boy, what a what a great run so far for Ember Scarborough. Now as Ernesto's gotten around her, bumping her back down into third, but at one point coming through turn number Watch three this. there. Right here, right here, here he comes. Oh, oh. thought he was gonna go oh, for it I there. I did too. He was about to get there. Ernesto Rivera has arrived on the scene, didn't take him more than a lap. We saw this a lot last year with Ryan Norberg, his elder teammate and coach here this weekend. Let the race come to you. They're gonna try and dive bomb you. Get back by him, and there he goes. New leader, Ernesto Rivera gets back to the point. Steven Miller gonna try and get back to him. Rivera goes a little low there into turn seven. Problems on the backside, one of the Ansa Motorsports FK drivers. I think that might have been Walter Jenkins out in the final corner. Yeah, an unfortunate uh, issue there for Walter. Unable to continue. And as we say that, it looks like we've had another pass. That I believe that's Emma Scarborough gotten back around. Steven Miller now. That'll bump Emma back up into that second position, dropping Steven Miller back into third. Now, I, I ran into Steven yesterday in the elevator at the hotel and was talking with him. He felt like... Uh, he was pretty sore. He wasn't even sure if he was going to be able to race this morning. So I know he's I know he's in a little pain, but he's out there grinding away right now, sitting in that third position. He did everything he could to keep Ernesto Rivera at bay, but just left the door open just enough into that PK teardrop, and Ernesto got around him, and now he is starting to set sail once again. Emma Scarborough still second. Here comes a Scorpione looking for third to the inside. Turn seven, got him. Leonardo is Scorpione. Yeah, he set him up nicely there going into that turn. So he gets by. Anthony Martella continues to look on there in the fifth spot. Not close enough to dive on Miller there into turn 13. Maybe, no, not enough for 14 either, so they'll stay single file. But Emma Scarborough leads this four-car train as Ernesto Rivera already starting to build that massive gap once again here over the VLR Junior Field. 53-4 uh, for Ernesto, a purple lap for him to a 53-7 for our second place driver. So he's out about a second right now. Again, working 16 laps here. We've got four in the bank so far. Our first final for the second leg of the Florida Winter Tour here in Loxahatchee, Florida at the PK Entertainment and Race Center. Here comes the Scorpione back on Scarborough. Going to go back to the inside and Leonardo Scorpione takes back that second position. So he'll get back by around Emma Scarborough, who is right now in contention for what I believe would be her first Florida Winter Tour podium. She's had some good runs here, but this is by far one of her better weekends uh, in her career to date in the junior classes as we watch again as Martella closes up to Miller. Made a little mistake there in turn 14, though. That'll give up a margin to Miller and kind of keep him back safe. And they pulled away from John Antonino and Jordan DeLeo. DeLeo got around Antonino a little bit further back for the sixth spot as Miller drops the tire there in turn number one. So Scarborough closes back up to a Scorpione and gets about a car length and a half gift with Stephen Miller making a mistake in the first corner. Interesting, Xander, as, as I was talking with Stephen, I asked him about that particular turn, turn number one in the speed, and he said, man, it's actually scary going in there. We're going so fast. And you just got to barely hang on there because if you do, you're off into the wall really quickly. Looks like we got a couple of carts around there in turn number three. Yeah, that's way back here from the leaders. Yes. You can see that at the top of the screen. We'll identify those drivers there. Let's see if we can zoom on in. It's one of the DR North America entries, the 851. Uh, I believe 851 was Landon Cardwell, and I think the other one involved was Lillian Scarborough, Emma's Please sister. Sell. In that Chad Dawkins Racing KR, Lillian had to start from the tail end of the field, got up to 21st, gets collected here on lap number six. So unfortunate for Lillian, but six down, 10 to go here in VLR Junior as they head over to turn number three. 
And little two-car tandems forming, forming Leonardo Scorpioni and Emma Scarborough, Stephen Miller and Anthony Martella, Jordan DeLeo. Next best in no man's land down in that sixth position as the field works its way through the infield. Got to be a strange feeling for Emma Scarborough to look up ahead of her and realize that's my boyfriend in front of me. Get out of my way. But uh, nonetheless, she's uh, sitting there strongly right now in that third position. Anthony Martella continues to battle with Stephen Miller. Anthony wanting to get around Stephen. We'll see as they come through turns number 13. Looks like he did get around Stephen Miller, so that will bump Anthony Martella up into that fourth position, dropping Mr. Miller down into fifth. So again, looking a little bit further down the list here, some of the guys that are still making some moves down there. Uh, Peyton Westcott, we talked a little bit about her. She's up eight positions. Alexander Vanchev, the JC Carding driver, we're now uh, up eight positions as well in 14th. But still, that lead continuing to stretch it out just a little bit. Ernesto Rivera, the RPG driver, the Mexican driver, has been absolutely flawless this entire weekend. He's now out 2.8 second lead over Leonardo Escarponi, the Zanella racing driver. Yeah, Scorpioni again just running there. Here's a look again at Turner Brown and that SCR red speed. Let's see if we can give ourselves a, a little bit of air time for some of the drivers. Is uh, unfortunate there for him so far back at the moment uh, from anyone else on the racetrack, but he's picked up three spots. Turner Brown, of course, heartbreak for Turner Brown in his final mini race at the Scusa Super Nationals as we see, oh, pass back further. Car uh, Carson Weinberg making some uh, runs forward. Weinberg uh, picks up, a, I think, uh, no, that was, might have been David Ibarra. Was that David Ibarra? David Ibarra, uh, yeah, sorry, Ibarra. the one making the move, my bad. David Ibarra picks up a spot there, gets himself back up to ninth. He started eighth, fell back a little bit. There's John Antonino Jr. in the Tesoro Raceworks CRG. His teammate David Ibarra just a little further back. It's Ibarra in the ninth spot, just ahead of Christopher Aitken, and then Salvador de la Vecchia in that Lando Norris cart for San Antonio Racing headed into the PK Teardrop. So you're watching again the battle at the edge of the top ten. Looks like, looks like Salvador's a little faster there than Christopher through that particular part of the track. Yeah, just a little bit. Salvador de la Vecchia has been kind of carving his way up the grid after not so great qualifying in a lot of his heat races, qualified right. back outside the top 10 and uh, has made up a little bit of room, maybe not race winning pace, but definitely top 10 and, and possibly top five pace if he starts a little bit higher. So he's been having to kind of start on the back foot. Again, today here he started 10th after a good pre-final, but um, being on that outside lane, lost a couple spots on the start. So the LN car driver there headed through turn number one is uh, just trying to get back to neutral as behind him Sean Sakaguchi uh, started 14th has picked up two spots already on that Super Tune USA Tony Kart running forward towards the top 10 as the leaders uh, continue to stretch away Ernesto Rivera that time by reset the fastest lap of the session at a 52 968 the only driver in the 52 second bracket he was six tenths better as De La Vecchia looking for 10th he'll take it away Salvador De La Vecchia gets into the top 10 Gets himself back to neutral again. Chris Hake in 11th. Sekiguchi in 12th as they head on into the hair penalty. We'll if Sekiguchi goes for it, he will. Nice dive bomb down on the inside of turn 13. And Chun Sekiguchi moves up to 11. The Chris Aitken jumps back. Here's a look at your leader, Ernesto Rivera. And uh, we said it earlier here this weekend. We've talked about him quite a bit in that Rawls and Performance Group Cosmic as he shows the way over Emma Scarborough and company. But, uh, and, and as well as Leonardo Scorpioni. But what a weekend it's been for Ernesto Rivera. Great weekend for Emma Scarborough. And how about Anthony Martella as well? Yes. Really coming into his own in his second winter tour. He's now getting himself closer and closer. The last few laps, he's been just a couple hundreds better than Emma Scarborough. That time lost about two hundreds. Both of them losing some time to Leonardo Scorpioni, who has pulled away a little in that Zanella Racing Tony Kart. But I think Martella even better this time. As Scarborough will fall out of the slipstream, Ron John, that'll be a big benefit for Anthony Martella. She's no longer going to get help in front of her. She's going to close the gap here half a car length away as they come down the front stretch. Interesting. I was thinking perhaps maybe uh, Anthony had a had a shot at it there and thought better of it. Tucked back behind her. He's definitely a little faster through a couple of session, I mean sections of the track right here, especially coming up here through turns six, seven, and eight. Seemed like he was just a little bit faster through that part. That's where he was able to get around Stephen Miller earlier. Just now coming out of six, heading for seven. He's right there on her here as they go through turn number seven. So Emma Scarborough fighting for that podium. Anthony Martella would love to get there. I don't think we'll see any penalties for any of them up here. 
Stephen Miller has continued to fade away from them. He'll have Jordan DeLeo bearing down on him here soon enough uh, if he falls any bit further. But DeLeo is still a couple seconds away right now. This time by the line, it'll be 12 down. Four laps to go here from PK Race Park. Let's see if Anthony Martella can mount a charge in turn one. He got a good run out of the final corner. Gets up to the bumper. Gives her a little shot there going into turn one. Gave up a little bit too much, I think, going into that corner. I don't think he's close enough here in turn number three. And no, sir. He'll Not stay in just line. yet. He's, he's definitely, without a doubt, trying desperately to get around her. He would love to be up on the podium, but Emma is really just putting her card exactly where it needs to be. She's pretty fast, although, I, like I said, I, it looks like he's maybe a little bit faster through this particular area on the course. Here he goes. Yeah, he's going to take a look to the inside. She's going to go ahead and kind of go high. This is going to get tr tricky here, and Martella gives way. Smart move by Anthony Martella. Aggressive driving from Emma Scarborough to fighting tooth and nail to hold on to that third spot. That's only one charge, right? It takes some drivers a couple laps to kind of build the momentum up, clean the tires off, and make another run at it. So she may only have one or two more times. She has to really fight hard to hold the spot, and it, it may be worth it to yeah. battle to uh, stand on the box here today. But for Anthony Martella, you can see it this time by here as we've got now three laps to go. The difference in line in the PK teardrop for himself to Emma Scarborough. So they're going to go through turn three turn number four here they'll make the full throttle run through turn number five coming around that fast left-hander and watch this from the overhead camera Emma Scarborough kind of goes low stays on the bottom side through the corner Martella sends it in deep really jacks up in the center of the corner and gets down again to that second apex at the end and it gives him another run at her and this time he gets clear and he gets the job done but he just again he's kind of taking that sweeper as a double apex versus Scarborough getting down and just riding along the bottom and it allows him to kind of shoot in deep, kind of reset in the center of the corner, and then rock it off. And that's what gave him that run to make that able, pass in turn seven. Able to maintain that speed as well. And you're right, get around there right there at turn number seven. It seemed like that was the faster part for him as opposed to her. So he was able to get around her. Hanging on right now as they come through turn numbers one and two. Here's back Heading to the for lead. Three. There's the leader. Two oh, laps to go for Ernesto on his own at 5.8 second lead right now for Ernesto. Yeah, not as big of a dominating run, but got to give it to the Mexico driver here for the Rawlison Performance Group of Ernesto Rivera as the battle goes back into the teardrop. But Ernesto Rivera, again, he could have gotten rattled by the way he got shuffled out of the lead by Stephen Miller as we continue to watch that battle for third. But the race leader, Ernesto Rivera, is going to come to the line this time by for uh, the white flag. And Ernesto Rivera... Again, for many drivers here, the first time that they really have pace over the field, and they kind of get targeted a little bit. They get uh, shuffled backwards. They get, you know, the field kind of taking shots at him. He did not let them uh, let that get under his skin. Didn't let it rattle him. Didn't let it, you know, kind of just knock him back out of rhythm and, and fade backwards. Ernesto Rivera said, you know what? You guys can do whatever you want to do to try and shake me. I know that I've got you all covered on speed. I'll let the race come to me. And again, shades of what his veteran teammate Ryan Norberg has had to do many times over with the speed he's had over the field over the last two years especially. Just let him go. Take a deep breath. The race will come to you. And it has. He picked him off one at a time. Got by a Scorpione. Got by Emma Scarborough. Got by the race leader, Stephen Miller. And he's put on a phenomenal drive. He'll head into turns 13 and 14 for the final time. For Rawlson Performance Group, it's a pickup from St. Petersburg. No big battle. One of the biggest margins we've seen here in the season so far. Welcome to the top step of the podium for the first time here in Bam. PK. Ernesto Rivera wins in VLR wow. Junior. And here we go Dominating across the run. line for Leonardo Escorpione in second. Anthony Martello will give a nice thumbs up to uh, his Speed Concept Racing crew as he crosses the line. Podium for the Canadian. Boy, Emma just on the outside there. Ends up in that fourth position. Stephen Miller fifth. Jordan DeLeo, good run there for Jordan, the Goodwoods Cartways driver. Uh, ends up in the sixth spot. Uh, John Antonino in seventh. It'll be Turner Brown ends up in that eighth position. Uh, David Yarbera in ninth. And Sean Sekaguchi will end up in that tenth position. So our first final for the second leg of the Florida Winter Tour is in the bank for our VLR Juniors. And congratulations to Ernesto Rivera. He has been absolutely dominating throughout the entire weekend and he takes the victory here yeah he'll take the top step of the podium congratulations to ernesto rivera and that entire team it just seems like his cart took the bumps a whole lot better than about everybody else yeah he uh he really did an awesome job in that one uh ernesto rivera gotta give it to him um you know 
nothing anyone can take away. What a phenomenal effort here for the Ralston Performance Group Camp for himself. You know, each weekend he's been fast uh, everywhere we've unloaded uh, so far to start 2023. Picks right back up from Las Vegas, goes to Homestead, Miami, goes to St. Pete, goes back to Homestead, and comes back here to the Florida Winter Tour. Two different engine packages, right. two different tire compounds, and he's been phenomenal here. And of course, he's got that Rock Junior main event in the afternoon, so we'll have to see if he can double up on the weekend. It would be a very, very impressive feat that not many drivers can do to not only win both classes in their age group, but also to do it in such dominating fashion where you win pretty much every single session, lead every single lap, complete sweep. It's, uh, uh, you know, I compare it a lot to baseball, right? There's right. there's a, uh, a no-hitter and a perfect game, right? So uh, in this case, it would be a no-hitter for Ernesto Rivera. Didn't lead every single lap, but he won every single session. Still on track for what could be a perfect game in that Rock Junior class by uh, leading every lap of official competition from the pole and winning the main event. But hey, again, that's what he's got to worry about later on today. Phenomenal run for him. Congratulations, Leo Scorpioni. Gets another podium. Great Keeps that championship within grasp as we move to Orlando. Again, I know for himself and Stephen Miller coming off of St. Petersburg, they're probably thinking, well, this was a big hit to our points, and it is. But again, that Orlando round has 67% more points than St. Pete, 33% more points up for grabs than here at PK. So if they can go out to Orlando, which There's is home turf yeah. for Leo Escorpioni, right. home turf for Team Zanella Racing, um, you know, they could easily flip the tides and, uh, you know, really turn this championship fight around. But it all lays in the hands right now of Mexico's Ernesto Rivera. He is your winner in VLR Junior. Ron John Ebersole here and myself, Xander Clemens, and the Cart Chaser crew. We are here in a hot and sunny morning in Loxahatchee, Florida at the PK Race Park and Entertainment Complex for the second round of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Don't go anywhere. Four more main events here to come in this morning group. part of the magic that's taken A.J. Myers to multiple national championships. Check out Greyhound Racing Seats and their full catalog of options from their R1 and R1 Extra Soft Seats for high grip condition, their Viper Medium Seat for medium grip, and the RS2 Stiff Seat for low grip conditions. It's time to win. It's time to see why Greyhound makes the difference. If you're looking for your first foray into car racing, the Formula Inter F4 Series is for you. It's an arrive and drive championship costing a fraction of the price of the USF4 Series or USF Junior Championships, utilizing a spec fleet of cars that are randomized at every single round. You can start with International Motorsports Karting Team and advance through the ranks to the Formula Inter Championship. For more information, follow us online at Formula Inter on all social media. Welcome back here to PK Race Park and Entertainment Complex in Loxahatchee, Florida. You're watching Car Chasers coverage of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Myself, Xander Clements, Ron John Ebersole in the booth. Carts have been released onto the racetrack here for VLR Senior. Ron John, let's take them through their starting lineup. All right, and uh, Wes Duchek will be on the pole, the 935. The RPG driver been having a great week so far on the outside pole, the 927 of Haley Omeza. The Iron Rock driver keep an eye on Haley as well. Joseph Botting up next, the PK Sports driver in the 955. It's Sarah Vico rolling off in the fourth position in the 921. Prime Power Team, the Canadian driver. Aiden Chimbashi in the uh, 972 will roll off right on the outside shoulder there of Sarah Vico. Up next is Giovanni Cardone, the 910. Alex Albert Dalbon Cologne in the 959. The Bibrahim Albahi in the 
949. Sebastian Matthews will pull off in 937. We already speaking of 937. There's Sebastian Matthews right there. Braden Domang up next in the 985. Miles Hewitt, the 917. Travis Varney, I don't believe is actually. Yeah, he's a scratch he's off for a that scratch, one. Yes. I believe Grayson Redson is out there indeed. So okay. uh, no Travis Varney sideline with a rib injury following the Challenge of the Americas main okay. event at round one over in Tucson, Arizona. So he's going to be on the injured reserve list here for a couple more weeks before he makes uh, his return to the national scene. But for VLR senior, Wes Duchak had never led a lap in a national main event before, never led a lap in any national heat race before. Well, he starts from the pole. Great place to try and get that done, try to get that first national win. And here we go. We're green down to turn number one. Mesa will fall back a little bit. Hello, Joey Botting up into second there on that PK Sports Gillard as they head for turns two and three. Man, what a great run there for Joseph. Great jump there on the start. Helio's been kicked back now into that third position. Wes out there in front. Again, just now on their very first lap coming out of turn number five, a sweeping left-hander into another left-hander here we call the PK teardrop. Just now coming out of turn number six, heading for seven. Still Ducek out in front with Botting right behind him and Haley Omeza all over the back end of Joseph Botting right there. Yeah, a little three-cart breakaway here to start this VLR senior main event as then it's a big gaggle of go-karts all behind them with the prime power team, Birrell Artis Aravico right there. You can see Meza took a look down the inside of Joey Botting, didn't go in 13. Botting's going to block as he felt him from behind in 14, so... They'll stay single file. Mays still looking to get by. He's trying not to let Wes Duchak get too far up the road as they head down to turn one. Lap one complete, 15 laps to go. And Botting's going to go way wide wow. there with a little mistake in turn one. Got the tires a bit dirty. We got another one off. Oh, no, that is going to be one of the CRGs. That might be the Tesoro Raceworks CRG of Miles Hewitt. I don't think so, though. I think that's uh, going to be the uh, – might have been a different one. That might have been the 9 – looked like the 925 to me, but – We'll confirm that in a moment as uh, up front, Mesa getting around Botting with Botting's big mistake there. Heck of a save for Joey in turn one, but sure uh, we've seen that all year long. Drivers go offline to block or get offline to pass, and then the next corner they're expecting the same level of grip, but their tires are all nice and dirty. Meanwhile here with the laps getting underway as we see a little more battling going on, how about Braden Dome up the inside? Going side by side, just out of Miles Hewitt. So there's Hewitt right there on that Tesoro CRG. Problems for Elio Meza, the championship points leader. Oh no, the Iron Rock Motorsport Tony Kart comes to a halt. His head goes into his lap. Oh my goodness. Elio Meza, man, that is heartbreaking as he slowly no parks that oh. 927. And he will retire from this one. It gives Wes Duchek the biggest lead he has ever seen. Over two seconds now back to Joey Botting there in that PK Sports Gillard. Big gift for Wes Duchek. Let's go side by side as we work through lap number three here from PK Race Park and VLR Senior. Two down, 14 to go, down to the aftermath of our VLR Junior main event. Alex and Emery, take it away. Thanks, Sander. I'm here with Ernesto Rivera. Ernesto. Pretty rocky start to the race. You fell down to fourth after the first corner, but kind of picked your way up. Only took you two laps to get back to the lead. Walk me through that initial start and then how you were able to pull away. Yeah, I got pushed a little bit from behind, fell back to fourth, and made my way up to first. And we've been talking to you all weekend about just how dominant you've been. Obviously, yesterday you mentioned how the tracks in Mexico helped you adapt quicker. But just talk me through what, what, who all made this possible this weekend. Uh, everybody on Rollins and Performance Group, uh, my mechanic, Kevin, my other mechanic, Brady, Alex, Joni, and my family. All right, one last question. Orlando, the final round, you think you can be quite as dominant? Yes. All right, that's some confidence there. Nestor Rivera, your VLR junior winner here at PK. Back to you guys. Thank you, Emery here. Great run for Ernesto Rivera. And again, you have a weekend like this, you can't not have confidence. However, problems for Brayden Dome and the Iron Rock Tony card and the silver, red, and black cars oh, are wow. dropping like flies. Oh, you hate to see it there for Brayden sure Dome. Did. He had a good run going. He was starting to get towards the top five, and now he'll suffer a DNF like his teammate and the championship points leader. Elio Meza. We stay green here. Wes Duchak continues to lead over Joey Botting, Sarah Vico, and the field starting to spread out as Grayson Redson on that Techno Kart USA. Tony Kart is closing up here for fourth on Rahim Alabahi. Let's go side by side for the driver that started at the rear of the field as he closes into that Ansa Motorsports Formula K of Rahim. And uh, let's also send it back down track side. 
Thanks, Sandra. I'm here with Leo Scorpioni. Leo, a little bit of a rough start for you as well. You had to kind of work your way up into second position, passing the rest of the carts in that pack. But once you did, you kind of broke away in second, had a comfortable race, just not quite enough to challenge Ernesto. Talk to me about how your weekend went as a whole and what you gathered from that race. Uh, in the beginning, we were struggling on the cart a lot, and I was driving really bad, and then we just worked our way up through the weekend, and we were able to get second. Yeah, and looking at the weekend, obviously not quite enough pace to match up with Ernesto, but still a great effort, and you guys got consistently better over the course of the weekend. Who would you like to thank for this? Is obviously you've had an another strong weekend after Homestead last weekend where you won. Uh, I want to thank everybody at Zanella Racing, Naka, my dad, my mom, and my mechanic, Juan. All right, and I'll leave you with the same question I left Ernesto with. You head to Orlando. You've been pretty good so far this season. Not quite enough to match Ernesto here, though. Is that going to change in Orlando? Yeah, I have like 3,000 laps over that track. Like, I'm winning that. All right, that's some bold statements there by Leo Scorpioni saying he'll win. We'll see what he can do in Orlando. But for now, back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Emery. We go back to the on-track action. While we were away, Grayson Redson got around Raheem Alabahi, and now he is working on a podium. Sarah Vico and that prime power team, Beryl Art, hasn't moved up thanks to the uh, mechanical failure for Elio Meza. Sarah Vico looking for her first career Florida Winter Tour podium. Grayson Redson's been on the box before. He's trying to get there again on that Techno Kart USA Tony Kart as he closes up through turn two, turn three. Not able to stick it down the inside behind him. Raheem Alabah, he also has Miles Hewitt on the Tesoro Raceworks CRG starting to apply some pressure. That's in the battle pack for fifth. So battle for third, battle for fifth while the top two have gotten away. Looking into the PK teardrop for Redzin. Got him. Grayson Redzin onto the box. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great move. He'd set her up coming out of turn number five, heading for six. Got down to the inside, able to make a smooth, nice pass there. And Grayson now into that... I believe that will put him into that third position now to yep. drop Sarah back into fourth. So she's just one, one spot off the, off the podium here. Well, coming out of uh, turn 13, Miles Hewitt also, again, we saw that pass for third. The next battle to follow here will be this battle back for the uh, fifth position as Hewitt on that Tesoro Raceworks CRG continues to roll. He's closing up to Raheem Alabahi with now seven laps completed. Nine laps to go. Here he goes, turn two. Quickly taking a look down the inside. He'll get there, trying to get clear. Clear through three wow. into the top five for Miles Hewitt. Took him that entire corner to be able to get around that driver. <laughs> it's like, okay, Miles, here we go. Absolutely a great move there coming out of turn number three. Up now seven spots, six spots that is into fifth. What a run though for Gratian Redzian. Redzian now up 10 positions into third. Of course, with all the other chaos going on, it's uh, several of the carts going off the track, allowing him to move up. Like I said, right now sitting in that third position, a good run so far for the Techno Kart USA driver of Gratian Redzian. Again, our driver's just now coming back past the start-finish line. Wes Ducek out 4.3 seconds over Joseph, Joseph Botting. A little home cooking for Joseph, right now sitting in that second position in the 9.55. Again, working our laps down. It's lap number seven in the bank. We're working number eight of 16. They come by, they'll pick up the halfway flags. Yeah, halfway in, halfway home here. This time by the stripe to put eight laps in as they work on lap number eight. Wes Duchak's lead continues to grow as he's now up to 4.3 seconds. Let's go side by side one more time down to pit lane, boys. Here with Anthony Martella. Anthony, pretty good race for you as well. You were able to get yourself up into third. What a raw face in that speed contest racing car. Um, just talk to me about your takeaways from the weekend as a whole. Of course, in the Rock or the VLR Junior category, you were able to have a strong pace, just maybe not quite enough to match Ernesto. Yeah, it was a very, very good weekend. I got my first podium in the USA. Worked really hard all last year and start of this year, so it feels very good. Yeah, and looking at how you've been doing so far this year, obviously a new team, you've been fast, but this weekend really was a step up. You're inside the top three, you're obviously starting the top three in Rock GP as well. Talk to me about what's gone into making you improve as a driver and where you think things go from here. Well, the team has been absolutely amazing. Mike, Alex, Richie, Adam, both my mechanics, Mario with the engines, everybody just been really, really supportive and they just just been pushing me and to try to get better. Yeah, one last thing. I got to ask you about the Rock GP race because you're starting inside the top three. You had a water roll pace yesterday, briefly went purple. 
Do you think you're going to be able to challenge Ernesto in that one? And what do you think you found over the, over the course of the last couple of races? Well, we changed the some things with the go-kart, so it's, it should be good. I mean, we were like a tenth to half a tenth off of him in the pre-final, so I think we got a good shot. All right, he'll give it a good shot for sure. Anthony Martella, a podium in VLR Junior, and he might not be done yet. Back to you guys in the booth. Well, while we were side by side here, as the camera remains on Miles Hewitt, he got around Raheem Alabahi as well. Uh, unfortunately, that left rear bumper bolt has broken for that DeSoro Racework CRG. His hand will go in the air, and Miles Hewitt, all that hard work to come through the field here. Lots of mechanical DNFs, unfortunately, in uh, VLR Senior, and it's going to hit now one of the black and orange machines as Miles Hewitt. Again, great run going, Ron John, and nothing takes yeah, the wind he, out of your sails like a deal like that. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he was having a really good run. Talked to him a little bit yesterday. He was pretty excited about the opportunity you have today. But unfortunately, of all things, again, kind of like what happened with Vincenzo, having a great run, and all of a sudden the, the bolt breaks on your bumper, and now it's dragging the ground, and he'll be, uh, he'll be out of the race. Has to pull it into the pits, just went into the scale line now. Meanwhile, our, our leader continues to stretch it out. 4.3 second lead now for Wes Duchek, the RPG driver again. Just out there on a kind of a, a Sunday stroll for him because he's really got nobody within, like I said, 5.8 seconds of him. So no problem for Wes. Just get out there, get all of his marks, put the card exactly where it needs to be and continue to run around the course here. 15, la uh, excuse me, 15 turn, three quarters of a mile layout here at the PK Entertainment and Race Park. And uh, for Wes Duchak here, he uh, really hasn't had a home racetrack uh, until this place got built. The closest he had was Homestead, Miami, down about two hours down the road. Uh, but for Wes Duchak uh, here this weekend, I mean, uh, just to be able to sleep in his own bed, to, right. you know, have uh, friends and family not only tune in live, but also watch him in person and come out and support him. Um, he's been looking for that breakthrough win. How about Joey Botting, though, here in this Gillard for PK Sports North America? Joey Botting in that 955 black and uh, red and yellow machine has done an awesome job here this week. A little mistake here in this main event. Might be kicking himself over it, but if he looks back on the lap charts, I think he would know that you know he still did about a, as good as he could because Wes Duchak is just about a half second quicker lap to lap. But for this young kid here, it'd be a major national podium, big boost in confidence. And how about Grayson Reds in there on that Technocart USA Tony card in third? To start from dead last year, uh, you know, didn't let it get to him, didn't overdrive, right? We've seen Grayson Reds in uh, over the years here in the last two seasons of Car Chasers live coverage, have sometimes really good speed and then kind of bloody his right. own nose, put himself in a bad spot and end up with a crash. Here this weekend, he's gonna not only see the checkered flag, he's gonna get himself some hardware as he worked his way around all the way up to the top three and gets by Sarah Vico now with just three laps to go. Vico on that prime power team, Viral Art doing a great job, the young lady out of Canada. Not a lot of time here in the States for Sarah Vico. Fourth place right now right. as I mean, things that's, run. That's a, that's a tremendous run. You know, to come down here and be in first, fourth position in the final race uh, on a really difficult track, a really physical trap. I, I, I've heard it more this weekend than I have at any of the tracks that we've been to, how physical this particular track is because of the speeds and the bumps. But uh, great to see her out there. She continues in that fourth position. And how about Raheem Alabahi here in the Sansa Motorsports Formula K? One of the brand new drivers here, Ansem Motorsports. Again, the newly announced Formula K US factory race team, IPK US factory race team. They've got a lot of new drivers. They're just starting to bring and version onto the national scene, onto the tutelage of uh, longtime shifter pilot, Alan Isabart. Little bobble there for Raheem, unfortunately, but he's still safe there inside the top five, picks up a couple spots. Big learning experience for Raheem Alabahi. And uh, as we go back up front, I talked to Wes Duchak's father, Kevin, earlier today. I, I said, him. Kevin, is today gonna be the day? He said, man, I really hope so. Wes needs it. He's been working so hard. The Rawlison Performance Group Cosmic Camp have been doing everything they can to give him uh, everything he needs. He's got one of the most experienced mechanics in the paddock here, John Russell, who has been working with Wes ever since he joined forces with the team at the end of 2021. Ran the entire 2022 season with them. Made some serious strides, and they said, you know what, we're going to run you in a mix of some semi-pro 100cc competition and some pro national 125 Brock Senior and X30 Senior races as well. And here for the VLR Senior class, Elio Meza jumped, you know, he sees everything go through last year, right. learns a lot. 
uh, and then hopes that maybe this year will be the year. And then rookie Elio Meza comes up, stuns the field in St. Pete, the VLR Junior Champ. This weekend kept Wes honest. Unfortunately, we didn't get, we got robbed of right. that battle. Yeah, we sure did. With Elio's DNF. But how about it here? No better way than to get your first career national main event victory than at one. home, than to get it here at a brand new racetrack, than to set yourself up here for what could be a championship run. Wes Duchak will round turns 14 and 15. It's finally time, and the crowd is loving it. Welcome to the winner's circle. Bam! Wes Duchak is a main event winner on the national tour, and Rollison Performance Group, the entire crew, are pumped up, and Joey Botting a first career national podium here in VLR Senior, and Grayson Redson will join them to complete the top three. Those moments are so cool to have, and just saw there Wes's father. He's about to get sworn by a very, very ecstatic RPG Cosmic crew and go down to have that moment there with his son in the scale area. Wes Duchak is a national winner here in VLR Senior. What a way to start off Sunday morning, yeah, Ron John. Yeah, doubt. Doesn't get any better than that. And I, too, had spoken to Kevin earlier, and uh, he's felt the same way. You know, it felt like maybe today was the day. Didn't want to get too overly excited about it, but uh, congratulations. What a great run there for Wes. Unfortunately, though, for Haley O, uh, you know, a DNF here, not what he wanted at all. Uh, not some way, you know, the way you want to see people go out, and uh, certainly not in the finals. No, I think Wes would have wanted to, to raise some heads up and, and to pull so away, too. but you can't control everything here. Wes Duchak does a phenomenal job, ends up with a 6.6 margin of second margin of victory. Here he comes on into the scale line there, into the behind the wall, the Greyhound Racing Seats final corner, and uh, we'll continue to get set for Mini Rock here. Stick with us, folks. We'll be chatting with our newly crowned national race winner, Wes Duchak. Podium finisher Joey Botting and Grayson Redson as the minis get set to go racing here live from PK Race Park in Loxachi, Florida. You're watching Car Chasers coverage of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Stay tuned. <laughs> If you're looking for your first foray into car racing, the Formula Inter F4 Series is for you. It's an arrive and drive championship costing a fraction of the price of the US F4 Series or USF Junior Championships, utilizing a spec fleet of cars that are randomized at every single round. You can start with International Motorsports Karting Team and advance through the ranks to the Formula Inter Championship. For more information, follow us online at Formula Inter on all social media. Welcome back to PK Race Park and Entertainment Complex. You can see the crowd starting to form there over by the scale area as they get set to roll on through. Uh, you, you can see Wes's uh, father, Kevin, there just on the far side by the Levanto banner, that big blue RPG t-shirt. Getting, of course, a, a lot of thanks, checking out some of the photos. Here comes the scale line that'll roll through. How about it for Joey Botting? There's his dad in that big sombrero. Big hug to his son to get himself a Florida Winter Tour podium. They'll get him and his PK Race uh, PK Sports North America Gillard up on. And here comes the race winner, Wes Duchak, getting uh, the first of many handshakes and thank yous and uh, a big congratulations for Wes here on home turf. There's a congratulations from Ryan Norberg, who's been coaching on the sidelines here this week. And there's his dad. Big hugs all around for himself to Joey Botting and to his son. And 
Man, what a weekend here for West Duchak. A lot of friends that he's made over the last couple of years racing at these big races, all there making their way over to the scales to congratulate him. You can see Rock Pro senior driver Jacob Kolar. Big hug there from Greg Campos. Lots of lots of congrats for a very what will probably be a very popular win here in the paddock as the day rolls on. Congratulations, of course, to Wes and everyone. Big time. Yeah, to say the least, Dad's pretty doggone excited. Great to see his team down there giving him big hugs because he certainly earned it. So uh, they'll roll on through. There's Rahim Alabahi, and the scale line will continue to push on forward. We're slated to go green here momentarily with your uh, Rock Mini Division here in about three more minutes as they start to make their way into uh, the uh, grid. And the last few drivers kind of getting all suited up here. Plenty of uh, extra time for us before they get going. So we might be able to get Wes uh, a word with him and, and with Joey before this race actually hits the racetrack. And for Rock Mini, Julian Rivera and that AKT Racing Team uh, uh, Energy. Uh, really funny story for him yesterday. Uh, I was uh, here and hanging out with a lot of people around the racetrack. So obviously yesterday, um, you know, the warm-ups get canceled because right. uh, the ambulances right. uh, were were uh, had, had their own issues just arriving to the racetrack. And then a few uh, people parked uh, not knowing or maybe did know uh, where the ambulance was stationed and blocked their way in. And ultimately, again, these guys didn't go on the racetrack till maybe 10, 30, 11 yeah. in the morning. And Julian Rivera, trying to be very respectful to his parents, said, you know, you woke me up at 6 a.m. and it was just very unnecessary. You know, I could have slept in for a little more. I right. could have rested more. And, uh, you know, from what, was from what it was described to me, just very respectful. Yeah. Nothing mean. Wasn't upset. Wasn't trying to throw in a fit. Just saying, I would have liked those few more hours of sleep. And there was no need to get me up this early in the morning because I didn't have to drive today until 11 o'clock. Now, of course, nobody knew right. that. Nobody knew right? that, exactly. Uh, we even joked as well for the Pro Rock shifters, they didn't even drive at all in the morning. They didn't get on track till after uh, 12 p.m. Right. So um, very, very uh, awkward and, and weird start to uh, yesterday. But luckily, everyone's had a pretty smooth start here uh, to today. Everything's rolled on schedule. And, and that's where we're at right now with a couple minutes built into the timetable. Right. So uh, as, as we go... Um, We'll have a couple announcements here in the paddock that we'll make here, and we'll go quiet on the air for those, and then we'll come back, hopefully, with post-race interviews from VLR Senior, and uh, then we'll go to uh, the uh, main event for many. All right, so the engines will be fired up here in just a moment for Rock Mini. In the meantime, let's go down trackside as the VLR Senior main event has concluded. And we've got a very happy Wes Duchak down with Alexander Searle. A first time main event win. Alex, take it away. Thanks, Xander. Yeah, Wes, I mean, it's a long time coming. Just walk me through your emotions to get your first national victory. And then after that, I'm going to ask you, you know, Talk to me, just what, is, what has it been like, all the hard work and effort, just what has gone through to get your first national win? Um, I mean, you know, coming into this weekend, um, we didn't really know what was going to happen. I mean, we knew Mesa was obviously going to be fast, um, you know, being Super Nats winner, um, VLR Junior winner. So we knew it was going to be a fight. You know, we knew we had pace in St. Pete. So we were kind of just hoping that we'd have pace here, and we did. Um, so it was kind of just... Clean and consistent all weekend, keep my head in the game, not stressing about anything. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. Yeah, and I mean, um, obviously, great weekend for you. You pretty much swept the weekend of VLR Senior. Just what, are your, what is your takeaway? You know, what have you improved from St. Pete to this weekend? Um, I mean, in St. Pete, I think we, um, we tried something with the setup and the final, and it just, it was a little bit too much. Um, this weekend, you know, we made little changes here and there. Um, you know, keep the cart fast, and I mean, that was the key. It was fast and consistent, and I was able to drive it properly, so that was about it. Yeah, one more question. I mean, obviously, what's your takeaway from this weekend, and what can you uh, improve on going into Orlando? Um, I mean, definitely showed me what I need to do to win a race, um, you know, what's required of me. So now I know what to do in the future, especially for Orlando. You know, we'll be uh, fighting with Mesa again for the championship. So now I know what to do. Now we just need to get the setup right, and I just need to do my best. Awesome, yeah, Wes Juchak, everybody. P1 VLR Senior.
Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Alex, here. We'll uh, talk to some more drivers from that VLR Senior Main Event in a moment as the minis come into the tram lines. It is Julian Rivera and Kai Johnson on the front row, and it looks good. It will be good enough for the green. They're racing down to turn one. Good start for Tyrone Kemper, Jr., the Louis New Orleans, Louisiana native, goes into Whoa. second, and we had one driver hard off the racetrack into the pillows in turn number one. We'll ID in a moment here as the leaders come out of turns three and four and head for the infield for the first time. So lost one off the start around midway through the grid, but good start for Julian Rivera. Great start for Tyrone, but he's going to lose his spot here now into the PK teardrop. Antonio Pizzonianito gets through, as does, uh, I believe, David Zhao. What a start for the Goodwood Cartways Formula K. He was on row four, and he's up into third. Yeah, that was a great run so far, and also a great run so far for Antonio Bazzonianito. Started off in that fifth spot right now, sitting in second already. Boy, look at the battle still going on, coming through turn number 13 as Tyrone Kemper Jr. gets kicked to the outside, and that uh, allowed Kai Johnson to get around him. It looked like was, somebody else was setting him up as they come down the front stretch here. We'll be able to see if he pops out and gets around him. Looks like he's going to be able to maintain that third position. Excuse me, now he's back down into the fifth position. It's Kai Johnson in fourth. David Zhao, as you had mentioned, now up into third. What a great run so far for David. Yeah, and Tyrone Kemper Jr. lost a spot there to Royce Vega, and then Max Christie got around both of them by the end of the whole stint. So wow. Max Christie, a great run to rebound. He started fourth, fail, fell way back on the outside lane. He'll lose a spot, though, as Kemper Jr. goes back by. Christie arrives the top side. He's got company coming now. Uh, as uh, Vega goes high, loses his position to one of the Super Tune Tony cards, a Fion She. She gets through, Vega back down the order, and then they're all going to stack up around there with Antoine Lemieux, Luis Nunez, uh, and I believe Cole Medeiros in the Pro Card in Canada, uh, Pro Card Ontario entry. So as uh, they continue to fight back in the hairpins, it's allowed the leaders to stretch a little bit further away. She getting around Max Christia, Vega still there, two down. 12 to go, and it is Julian Rivera over Antonio Pizzonianito, and quickest on the racetrack, David Zhao, as here comes Christia back on Fianchi, leans on him a little bit, gets through, Vega's gonna come through as well, back behind the leaders, who head through turn three, and Vega indeed gets by, so finally, maybe the argument will be settled, maybe not, let's see if Max Christia can get that Motaz Sport parallel to roll, as he now sits sixth, and the Pied Piper of this uh, pack here at the end of the top 10. Yeah, these guys are still really going at it back here, what a battle. David Zhao, though, up to third position, still working his tail end off up there. And again, uh, Antonio Bazzonianito hanging on in that second position, a little home cooking for him. we we'll have to keep an eye on him. It's Julian Rivera, though, still out in front. Kai Johnson now just got around the third place driver, David Zhao, that'll push Kai now up into third. David Zhao now back into the fourth position. Again, working lap number three here of 14. Let's go side by side here now with three laps completed and 11 laps to go as Kai Johnson uh, getting around David Zhao starts to roll forward on that PSA race team, Benick. Great run for West Duchek, but there were other storylines coming out of VLR Senior. Alex and Emery Lida down on pit lane. Boys, take it away. Thanks, Andrea. I'm here with Joseph Bodding. Joseph, first national podium. How does it feel? Uh, very exciting. It was really hard, really tough weekend. I had a lot of great drivers here, so the competition was really good. Um, I'm very happy to be in second. Uh, I didn't know Amaza was going to have that incident. I really thought he was the better driver out of this, and I didn't think I was going to finish second. But, I mean, it's really great having all this competition and finishing very high. Yeah, and, I mean, obviously, just walk me through how your weekend went as a whole. It was a very tough weekend. I mean, from the start, we were already a second off, and we didn't think we were going to gain all that time. And out of nowhere first heat we uh, gained a second easily and we were already there and um, I don't know it was very difficult but we had the pace always and we're just glad that we finished here yeah I mean one more question obviously what's your expectations going into Orlando I feel very confident I mean I've raced there a lot and I feel like I can do really good awesome yeah Joseph botting everybody P2, VLR Senior, back to you guys. A couple of Florida boys on top yep. here as we battle back behind the leaders. This is, again, uh, right around 6th to 10th or so. Tyrone Kepper Jr. there in that black suit and red and black helmet leads the pack on the uh, energy chassis in 5th. Max Christia sits 6th. Beyond She is 7th. 8th is Royce Vega. Ninth Declan Dionaran. And 10th, uh, Luis Nunez. Here comes Christia into the inside. Gets 5th away. Again, the driver that crossed the line first in St. Pete. Fianchi will follow. Kemper's going to cross him over, though. Gets that spot back. Vega trying to follow. A little tight. 
gets the move done on Fion. So nice move by Royce Vega, the ultimate opportunist right there. And now he's got a run on Tyrone Kemper. Out of turn one, here he goes to the inside in two. Gonna get the nose down low. And Kemper tries to hang tough. He'll find a place in line behind him for seventh. So wow. all that one lap of passing allows Max Christie a whole lot of breathing room there in fifth. Sure does. What a some serious battling going on here amongst these drivers. Constantly going back and forth. Tyrone Kemper Jr., of course, finished second last year in the Florida Winter Tour for 22. He's hoping to be able to better that by one spot. He would love to take home the hardware. Working huh. really hard right now. How about it up front here? Let's pick up uh, the leading group because Julian Rivera got away with a nice lead. However, last time by, he was about three-tenths slower than the top drivers as they come out of the final turn here this time, out of turn 15 and onto the front straightaway. You can see Rivera on that AKT Racing Team Energy. Antonio Pizzonianito and Kai Johnson are making some serious change on him. That time by, Johnson was two-tenths better than the race leader, Julian Rivera, and it's uh, three-tenths better than Antonio Pizzonianito. David Zhao as well picked up a little bit trying to come along with Johnson for the ride. So Julian Rivera is far from out of the woods as uh, we go through to the infield PK teardrop. It'll be halfway in, halfway home this time by. Johnson, big run on Pizzonianito out of six. Is he close enough? Not yet, but that move will probably come in a moment. Let's go side by side one more time. Alex and Emery, back to you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, I'm here with Gracian Rajajan. Gracian, I mean, he had a good weekend. Didn't have the pre-final he wanted. Started last in the final, worked right to third. Walk me through your race. I mean, uh, yeah, it was uh, started from the back. Uh, didn't have the best start. Got pushed up into the grass a little bit, but, uh, but I worked my way up slowly. Took everyone by one by one. Some people uh, made some mistakes, so it's easy to get through and uh, try, to, try to catch up to uh, P2, but... Uh, could to make it happen. Yeah, obviously you've shown good pace all weekend. Just walk me through the progression of the weekend for you. Uh, I didn't have good luck this weekend. I uh, was struggling with penalties, bumper penalties, uh, struggling on the starts, but uh, didn't have the best weekend, but uh, it worked out in the end a little bit, so that's good. Yeah, awesome. Graciano Rejection, everybody. P3 and VLR Senior, back to you guys. So there we go for Crash and Regin. And uh, as uh, we looked up front, we saw there in the side-by-side, -side, Kai Johnson made the pass for second. Here he comes. Big run here to the bumper of Julian Rivera to turn 13. Not close enough there. Not close enough yet to 14. We're about to have a heck of a fight on our hands here with six laps to go. His problems are Max Christia. The Motasport peril and is off. Entering turn, or coming out of turn 12. Oh, man, Ron John, you wow. hate to see that you here sure as we go do. back to the lead. Yeah, Max was uh, working his tail end on, trying to make his way up the ladder there, and unfortunately not going to be able to continue. But, boy, what a battle we've got going on for the top spot. We've got three drivers, nose to tail here, working lap number 8 of 14. Rivera out in front, Johnson, Pizzonia Nito right there in that third position. And in fourth right now, David Zhao hoping that something happens up ahead of him. Yeah, he's not terribly far back. He's not too far. He's not uh, as consistent as the leaders. He'll put a good lap together, then give up a couple tenths the next. It's such a tricky racetrack to really get right. But the orange and uh, green colors of the FK still running back in the fourth spot, while the top three, I thought Johnson would have had a little bit more oomph once he got to the lead. He had a great drive forward. Now he's just kind of riding around a car length away as Julian Rivera simultaneously, I think, has picked up the pace a little bit. The lap before, a 57.5 for Julian Rivera. This time by, 57 flat, his personal best. So... Rivera feeling the heat and rise into the occasion, rise into the challenge with five laps to go, trying to keep himself out in front on that number 134 AKT Racing Team Energy. I tell you what, he's certainly got his hands full because Kai is coming. Uh, we'll see as they come out of turn number five now, a nice little run down to the inside. Ooh. Looked like he was thinking about going to the inside, but thought better of it. Still, again, maintaining a lot of speed, staying to the high side, coming out of turn number six, heading into seven. Still just not close enough, but he is absolutely pushing Julian Rivera. Great stuff out of Julian really Rivera to stuff. hold it, oh, but he opened go. the door there he sure and he did. got him. The Johnson good. to the lead in turn 13. Here comes Pizzonia Nito as well. And Julian Rivera, he was playing that one about as smart as he could. Wasn't even looking back, was listening. Look at all the hand Look signals the of the hands. parents coming across <laughs> the line. Saying, go, go, go. It's go time for sure. Four to go or, uh, here in this one as the minis work their way to turn three. Rivera's going to go back for second. He'll take that away from Pizzonianito. 
three different teams up front. Wow. Three different chassis manufacturers. Four, if you go back to David Zhao right. on that Goodwood cart, was FK. Uh, and into turn number six this time, we go to that PK teardrop. They'll round the long sweeper. And Rivera with a great exit here. He'll close down to half a car length away from Kai Johnson through turn seven. Wow, they continue just to try to work together. It looked like Nito and Julian Rivera maybe get nose to tail there and kind of push one another up to the back end of Kai Johnson as he heads down towards turn number 13. As they say that, he opens the door. He's going to do the crossover move. What a tremendous move there for Kai to maintain the lead. And oh. as I say that, here comes... Julian Rivera right back around him to the inside as they come through turn number 15 down to the front stretch once again. Three to go this now time. Now they got four carts up there. David Zhao now has joined the back end of the pack. Nice crossover again from Kai Johnson. He gets the job done in turn one. Rivera to second, and like you said, David Zhao has arrived. Tyrone Kemper Jr. is only three seconds back with uh, no pressure, really. He's got uh, Royce Vega pushing on him. But three to go here this time, 11 down. And here comes Pizzonia Nito. Rivera oh. looked, chopped the nose off. Sure did. Not going to happen that time for <laughs> Antonio. <laughs> Was here not he letting that happen. Yeah, I thought maybe perhaps he would be able to set him back up, but nope. No, he had a run on him there in seven. Not enough uh, to his liking, though. And a smart play there for Pizzonia Nito after that one move. He's like, all right, you know what, Julian, you go get Kai. Bring him back to us, and then I'll get you both here as they go through 13. So Rivera, good run through the hairpin there. And they'll come out of turn 14. It'll be time for the double sticks. Two to go. Can Kai Man get the win here? What a disappointing run he had to end St. Petersburg. No doubt. Running up front, and a mechanical failure takes him out halfway through that main event uh, in the town that he grew up in. Now lives over in Charlotte, North Carolina. But down here at Loxahatchee, Florida, he's looking like he owns this place with the way he's driven through to the lead and has managed it so far. Julian Rivera trying to get there. Johnson goes low to block into five. He's going to stay on the low side into the teardrop. Rivera's going to go to the high side, and he'll try and maybe tuck back in, get himself a good run to seven with a lap and a half to go. Does he leave the door open? He does. He's trying it, sends it. Here comes Pizzonia Nito. They're, They're three, go wide three wide for the lead. Meanwhile, David Zhao is right there. He didn't, wasn't able to get up there and make a move himself, although that dropped Kai Johnson all the way back into that third spot. Just a couple of laps left coming up here to the white flag. This is uh, the opposite of what David Zhao had back at St. Pete. He was leading, trying to defend. Now he's got to find a way to carve through everybody, and he's got to kind of wait and see how it all plays out. Antonio Pizzonianito, the youngest of the group, as Rivera leads them into turn one. Car length apiece between everyone. Rivera and, P and uh, Pizzonianito, they've already battled once here before, just a, two weeks ago, and Pizzonianito goes way wide to go through three to try and set himself up better. He'll get a big run here coming through five. I don't know if he'll be close enough into that PK teardrop, and he's going to start low lining. Now moves up. Johnson's not close enough to get there. Julian Rivera starting to pull away. Just a few more turns to go here. Just now coming through turn number seven. They'll go through the S's right here. Up through the S's for Julian Rivera. Back on down. Jumps the curve here through 12. Pizzonia Nito going to block for second. Johnson tries to cross him over. Can't do it. They're going to fight for the podium. Johnson has to block from Zhao. And out front, Julian Rivera withstands the charge. Falls back, drives forward. Welcome to the Florida Winter Tour top step. Bam! Julian Rivera wins in Loxahatchee. And lots of hugs going around there. The parents, the family are ecstatic on here. And the tears are already starting to flow. Julian Rivera what a has great won here at PK Race Park over Antonio Pizzonianito for second. Kai Johnson in third and uh, David Zhao in the fourth spot. Tyrone Kemper Jr. with a solid run solid there to run. fifth. Fion Chi, what a great run for Fion. Look, all the way up into the sixth position. Louis Nunez up there uh, and uh, Royce Vega in the seventh. Louis Nunez in the eighth. Antoine Lemieux ends up in ninth. And Cole Medeiros into the tenth position. Congratulations, Julian Rivera. But I have to say, those top three really put on a heck of a show. Yeah, they did. What a great job there for, for all of them here. So Good we, clean uh, passings as well. Yeah, and so Julian Rivera, you'll see him slowly make his way into the pits. It'll take him a second to uh, make his way over to the interview station as he's going to light them up coming into the scale line as they round that Greyhound Racing Seat's final bend and go behind the wall into uh, scaling 
and post-race tech inspection. While we wait for that to go, yesterday, we normally do uh, a, a little post-day interview uh, deal with all of our Pro Rock seniors and Pro Rock shifters. And uh, honorary KC team member Connor Zillich decided to take the mic and uh, take over the interview duties away from Alexander Strill and oh, okay. everybody. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll cue that one up here for Saturday Thoughts. Uh, from all of our Pro Rock seniors and Pro Rock drifters, Connor had a good time. So much personality uh, in him, and uh, he's out. No doubt about that. Some way to have some fun here this week, because for a driver of his caliber, it's obviously not been the most fun to be lacking pace right. and lacking speed to run at the front of the field. And he's out looking for a little more. Warm up wasn't super great for him, but uh, yeah, well, not much else to explain here. Watch it, Let's see for it. yourselves. Hey everyone, Connor Zillis here. For those who don't know me. Um, I'm the newest member of Car Chaser. That's why they've given me this mic and given me the privilege to go ask some drivers how their day went. I got some good questions, so make sure to, to keep watching and, and just watch this whole video because um, I'm going to try and entertain you guys. So enjoy. Yeah, I was 16 to 6, and then Connor decided to drive into the back of me for some reason, which he apologized for. He said he got, got mad for being slow, so um, I was the victim of that. Can we fight? Because this guy. Yeah, I crashed him. I got a penalty! Good. I lost four places, bro. I lost four places from the penalty. You crashed. Good. You still crashed. I crashed because you put me back there. I was doing fine. I was like coming through, taking my time. I was like, oh, Connor is there on the outside. Give him some grass. And then, yeah. And boom. Who, 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 want, who beat the other one? Oh, you beat me. So. But now you're on top of my list. And DeMello too, because I've got a teammate in him. Okay, DeMello's not even racing. Doesn't matter, he'll, he'll, come, he'll make a comeback. Okay, we'll see. Uh, keep an eye out for this guy right here. Rock Cup officials, you heard the man. That's okay. Pay, payback's not cool, man. Payback's a B word. <laughs> What's a B word? Oh, you know. I don't know. Morgado. Mateus! We got an interview here. So obviously today, Good. Other than the heat race, you decided to crash yourself in the first, the second heat race, the, the first one today. Uh, first, walk me through that. What what happened? What were you thinking? Well, um, I think by watching the videos was kind of a race incident. Um, was a bit of a late move from my part, but also him, he tried to get in. So we take this as a our racing stuff. It was a good day. Um, happy with the day. Happy with the speed we have. Uh, maybe I got lucky with the tires, maybe not, so we see tomorrow. So yeah, obviously going in tomorrow we all get a new set of tires for the final. Um, do you have any thoughts of if the serial numbers are different or the same or what, what makes a difference? What do you think will be, um, what do you think will change going into tomorrow? Well, I heard there is difference between the tires. My tires from today and tomorrow are basically the same number changed by a bit, so I don't think should have difference. Um, I heard if you have higher numbers, it's worst. So I'm fine with my numbers and I hope to be okay. It's always a surprise for everyone, so we see. Yeah, clearly nobody knows what's going to happen, but um, my serial numbers are high, so you know we're good here. Uh, it was pretty good watching from the sidelines, to be fair. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you do for a living? Can you answer that? No, I'm thinking. <laughs> Alex, what's it, like, what's it like growing up in your brother's shadow? Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. He it was always my dad's favorite. Always kind of left me behind. It was really just kind of tough growing up that way, but I overcame. Here we are, running go race team. Yep, yep. You know, Scott helps me a bunch. Um, you know, he's a good guy. Um, but what do you think about the go-kart team? You guys fast? You gonna win any races tomorrow? Uh, I'm really hoping we get we get maybe a little bit of luck tomorrow and find some pace and. Uh, Get some W's. What do you need luck in? Tires? Uh, well, tires would definitely be helpful. Uh, a little inconsistencies there. Uh, but everyone's got speed. Uh, I just need uh, some good races. Me too. See you, Speed Concepts. Buddy, what do you got to say about today? We have Ryan Norberg walking into the PSL karting tent. What's going on here? FBI! <laughs> Norberg Nation, owner, CEO, founder, what are you doing? live in the flesh. Yes. Um, glad I could grace you with my presence. This week's been tough. It's been a hard week. I've had no pace. 
running back and forth, very difficult. So, you know, hoping tomorrow, changing the shoes, hopefully tomorrow goes a little better. Clearly your cheeseburger ate your hamburger and your yeah, yeah, your yeah. cat, you know, you fell off the yeah. fell off the sink. But what what are you gonna what are you gonna do negative tomorrow um, upstairs? I don't even know what you said, bro. I'm like confused. <laughs> like seized my engine. I'm like um, negative, yes, but yes. but uh, tomorrow hat, it's gonna go up. Affirmative. Affirmative. Cool. Uh, I guess I like silver because I got second place all day today. So um, yeah, I kept it clean. Um, Morgado just seems like he has maybe a tenth or so more than me every lap. So. <laughs> Uh, maybe fix my driving in some of the sections and uh, yeah I think the chassis has been really well uh, working good and uh, speeds given us a really good engine to work with so everything seems like it's going uh, pretty smooth so far it was good watching plates loose end all day oh, thanks yeah <laughs> maybe if Louie was driving it would be a different story yeah I've got a fake loose end <laughs> tires what's up with the tires this weekend black ones what's up with them black ones but why are mine like Eight tenths off. Because you suck driving. Yeah. Well, the day much better than yesterday, so that's a positive. We just kept getting better and better, you know, throughout the day. But I would say the pre-main we struggled. It was more or less me um, track position. Where I started inside isn't perfect. Um, I was on the outside for the other two heats and much more preferred. You have a little bit more freedom where to go, more traction off the launch and things like that. But all in all, it's pretty good. Everything can't be perfect and positive. So at the end of the day, wherever we start, seventh or sixth, wherever that is, it's uh, we have a spot and we're able to fight for a podium. So we'll go from there. Um, I feel honored to be here with Connor, to be fair. Yeah, so I heard your rotisserie chicken fell off the hamburger and your ribs upside down. So what do you got to say about today? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a shame the rotisserie chicken's gone. Um, ribs upside down sucks. They hurt a little sore, but, um, you know, definitely, you know, good overall day still. Where do you start tomorrow? Uh, P3. You got a good set of tire or a bad set of tire? Uh, good, I think. I got a 8.8s and 8.6s, so we'll see. We'll see how we go. That's pretty, that's pretty average. Um, you know, what, what, do you, what do you think about this track? Good, bad, mediocre? Um, the layout's okay, could use some work. Uh, a little bumpy for the speed we carry, but overall it's, it's not so bad. Yeah, I think it's the worst track we've ever been to, but um, you know, I'm glad to hear that, that someone enjoys it. Um, but yeah, um, good luck tomorrow, and I hope to see you up at the front like we did last time. Perfect, thank you, Connor. Yeah, no problem, good luck. I like your shirt. Thank you. Shiftery had a good day, um, always very fast. Um, we made some changes last night about with the card, and uh, it really took off in the morning. So um, yeah, really can't complain. Um, I'm gonna go on new tires tomorrow morning uh, on a similar number of batch as our race tires, and um, hopefully set up the card pretty good there. And uh, hopefully not having to make any changes. I mean, the card feels really good, and um, yeah, I think we'll be all right. Welcome back here to PK Race Park and Entertainment Complex. Rock Shifter Master making its way onto the racetrack here as we get set for action. They're yeah, going to go a nice uh, 16 laps here for our Master Shifter Rockers. It's all about the start here with these guys being the fact that they come around and they start from a standing start. So important to get a really good jump here. We'll keep an eye on Antonio Pizzonia Jr., your pole sitter in the 503, Daniel DeVos. I talked to Daniel yesterday, as excited as he was and as happy as he was, he's hurting. He yeah. told me he was hurting. Really? Yes. And uh, he was just hoping that he would feel well enough just to get out here and run, whether he got up there and really tried to battle or not. He just wanted to be able to get out here and run so he could maintain his points. And uh, looking out there, just looking to see if perhaps he is out. I spoke to him last evening just as we were getting ready to leave the track and there he is so good It's good to see him out there. He's probably got them all stuffed full of Towels and anything that he can get in there to help protect yeah. those ribs just a little bit and he was just He didn't know you know whether or not he was gonna be in good enough shape to be able to get out here and race And he was just absolutely disgruntled about that thought yeah, I mean, it, it really is a mix of everything we talk about physical right when they have bumps on a racetrack like this or a track where you hit the curbs 
There's the, the physical part, that's fine, and that's honestly pretty cool that right. you know, it really works their shoulders, their arms, their biceps, triceps, forearms, chest, the fitness of the driver, the cardio of it all. The, the lesser cool part of the deal is when they're jumping in the air and then landing right. in these plastic seats. Um, even though they run rip protectors, you can see those kind of two stripes that kind of look like suspenders on the back of Antonio Pazonia uh, Sr.'s uh, race suit. That's his rip protector he wears outside his suit, so that's like a plastic uh, rip protector with some uh, just straps over top to hold it in place. And even with these like plastic and kind of rubber molding that they'll make with some padding, that you normally run with in general for a go-kart because you have no suspension, you feel everything, it's still the bumpier it gets, right, the more curves you hit, it, it just hurts. So no we'll see how he that. can survive for this one. Him on the outside, Daniel Debos, round one winner on the inside. Pizonia Seniors had the best of the start so far. We get set for Rock Shifter Master and go to the lights. Antonio Pizonia, can he get the whole shot again? We're underway, and he does. Great whole shot for Antonio Pizonia. They'll go two abreast behind the field here. But overall, a clean start and a great getaway for the Orsolan Racing Bureau Art Driver. Debo second, quickly into third for Jose Montalto in that DRT entry. And then you go back to Scott Presti on the VTM Racing Engines, Presti Racing, Ralph Schumacher chassis. Headed to the PK teardrop for the first time. Yeah, I talked a little bit about the start, how important it was and is. And you can see from Antonio, that start was exactly what he was hoping for. Got out there, actually has already put about a good 10 cart leaks between he and Daniel Debos just now coming around the track for the very first time. Look at this, Jose Montalto oh, wanting that second the... spot. Debos not one to give it to him, has to get into him a little bit. Gives him some elbow grease and gets on by, but Debos is gonna get a great launch out of the final turn, trying to force his way back on the inside. Montalto gets run off the racetrack in the last corner. He's frustrated, he'll lose two more spots as there goes Mueller as well as Scott Presti, and now Montalto has Ren uh, Luis Gautier starting to close on in for him, I believe, if not, no, Rene Martinelli closing in as well. So heck of a fight uh, that may be coming back to him for Daniel Debos, but for now, that move into the final corner has secured him some real estate. Scott Presti, the next driver, to bring the challenge here from the field. Again, headed through uh, turn seven and eight and up the S's. In the meantime, he continues to stretch it out lap after lap last time like i said in the very first it was probably about five six carts now it's about 10 to 15 there's montalto maybe 20. yeah montalto still trying to make his way back up gets by alex mueller turn 13 so let's go side by side now two laps complete jose montalto with that pass moves himself back up on into the top five as he stays ahead of Rene martinelli gets one spot higher in the top five correction up into fourth and he'll now look to try to hunt back down Scott Presti and Daniel Debos. Alexander Swell and every lighter down on pit lane. What do you got for us, boys? I'm here with your winner in Mini Swift, Julian, or Mini Rock, Julian Rivera. Julian, it's an outstanding race for you. You battled with Kai and Antonio. Came away with the win. Who would you like to thank? Hey, ¿Cómo te gustó el, uh, la carrera y qué le quieres dar gracias al equipo a quien? Um, gracias a todos los que nos están viendo aquí. Estoy haciendo la entrevista en español. No sé hablar muy bien en inglés, entonces hago lo que puedo. All right, there you have it. Julian Rivera, an outstanding <laughs> race friend. He goes from third to first at the end of the race to win in Mini Rock. Back to you guys. Funny stuff uh, for Julian Rivera there at the end of it. He wanted to add on that he's not that good at talking in English right. yet, but. I bet you he's going to get a whole lot more practice with drives like that here in America no for doubt. Julian Rivera. Great, uh, great win. You can see how pumped up his family was, and uh, that's just so cool. We've had a lot of special moments to start today. May not be as special. Antonio Pizonia, he's been to victory lane before. Yeah. So we won't yeah. be seeing a first-time winner if he gets this one done in Rock Shifter Master. And he just went to the fastest on the time charts last time by at a 51 uh, eight. One or eight, eight, eight for Pizonia. That was uh, about a half second quicker than the second and third place drivers of Daniel Debos and Scott Presti in that red and white Ralph Schumacher cart that's currently on your screen. But for Daniel Debos, he's got to worry because Jose Montalto was not happy with the way that opening lap went down, Ron John, and he's yeah, I, closing the gap on I, that DR North I was America. Say, I, I think he's got one cart in mind as he's out there running around, and that's the 504. He went to maybe a little bit of a payback. Yeah, we'll see. Felt like again. he got a little roughed up there. Yeah, right. That, that's just, again, kind of what you see a little more. Uh, there's more both respect expected. And uh, if it's not given, uh, then the, the disrespect will be shown back no to doubt. you when you get to senior and 
and Master especially. So Master Shifter Rock, Daniel Debo's round one winner. He's just trying to keep his elbows up and keep himself in the championship fight going to Orlando on that International Motorsport Tony Kart. Mount Alto there is pulled away from Alex Mueller. Then it's Rene Martinelli. Uh, then Luis Gautier on the PSL card in Bureau Lart currently runs in seventh. Francesco Vassallo eighth. Frank Runco ninth. Corey Matthews up a couple spots to tenth. And everyone's continuing to run. No DNF so far. Michelle Legrand all the way down in 15th. Could turn in some laps, although a bad lap that time by for Michelle. But we stay focused here for the moment on what could be a really, really fireworks level battle for second, third, and fourth. Montalto yeah, to give you Montalto's an update. Montalto's definitely coming. Yeah, that time he was uh, four tenths better than Scott Presti and two tenths better than Daniel Debo. So he's chipping away. Not, it's not uh, hard to miss that Rolf Schumacher uh, card out there in Scotty Presti's hands. Makes it real simple to be able to tell exactly which particular card he is in. In the meantime, Antonio Bisogna out there on a Sunday stroll as he is out over three seconds now here at the PK Entertainment and Race Center. Again, kind of uh, clouds kind of forming up a little bit. Got a little bit of sun. Sun virtually has uh, gone back behind the clouds, but right now it's peaked back out. Heating up the track once again. Of course, so much rubber has been laid down here that I'm sure it's been a little slick out there and probably really grippy as well with that, that heat. So here comes uh, Debo still on his own in that second position. Scotty Presti up next, and Jose Montalto battling it out. Let's go side by side, down to pit lane here to Alexander Serrell and Emery Lida. Boys? Thanks, Xander. Yeah, I'm here with Elio Meza. Elio, before I ask you about Rock Senior, just walk me through what happened in VLR Senior for you. Yeah, so, I mean, we were off to a pretty good start going into the race. Um, we, got, we fell back to third, got around second that same lap. And then going into 12 going on lap two, we just threw a chain. Unfortunate. Yeah, really unfortunate there. But obviously here, Rock Senior had a good warm-up. You're starting P5 in the final. What's your game plan? I mean, I don't really have one right now. When we go out there, I'm just going to see what happens on lap one. Just I'm going to try and make the smartest moves that I can, work with who I want to, and uh, just see if I can move forward and finish well. Yeah, and obviously this being, one, this being your first weekend on the Rock Senior package, you know, it was kind of a last-minute thing for you. You're on the 2014 OTK. Just... Talk to me, what's it been like? What's the progression been like from when you got here Thursday to now? Yeah, I mean, so on Thursday, it was completely different um, with the engine. We had to change up my driving a little bit, so it's been a, a little difficult getting adapting to the GP package, but um, every session, just getting more consistent with it, getting more familiar with it. Um, still not comfortable with it yet, but uh, we're doing our best. Yeah, I mean, clearly you've adapted pretty well. P5 here, start for Elio Meza. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Alex. Back to it here. We'll continue to flood through some more Pro Rock Senior interviews as now Jose Montalto tries to see if he can close back up to Debos, who just started to hit his stride. Daniel Debos, that time by, was about a four-tenth uh, margin better than the DR North America driver, and he's opened that gap up now sure to 1.6 seconds. So for Daniel Debos, the International Motorsport, just to be able to be on pace with Antonio Pizzonia Jr., that would be phenomenal uh, here for him. So... Uh, the gap is, is massive. It is 4.5 plus seconds and growing as we've rounded the halfway marker. We'll come to see seven laps to go this time by. But for Antonio Pizzonia, uh, he, he doesn't need to add any more in those final few laps. He can just kind of roll it. Yeah, he is definitely on a roll. And what, what we're going to do is go ahead and send it down to our guys down in the pits. Alex, Emery, take it away, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. I'm here with Cameron Weinberg. Cameron, I mean, it's been an up and down weekend for you. Obviously, you've shown really good pace. It's maybe not the luck that you would have you wanted. Walk me through your weekend so far. Yeah, uh, we messed up in qualifying a little bit. Um, first heat race, had a failure with the chain. Second heat race, threw some stuff at it. It went P4, and then the next race, got wrecked on the start. Just, you know, kind of unlucky. Pre-final, had some problems with the cart, um, made some wrong decisions. Smart warm up, threw a whole bunch of stuff at it, see if we got lucky, and we, we did. We went P3, so hopefully now we can keep that same pace in the final. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned obviously you didn't really have a cart yesterday in the pre final. You said you threw things at it right now for the warm up. Can you walk us through anything that you've changed that you would like to share with us? Uh, maybe if I finish up front, I'll tell you, but I can't right now just in case. But hopefully it, it goes better. 
Awesome, yeah. Cameron Weinberg, everybody, starting outside of row six for this Rock Senior final. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Alex. Here, bad news for Ale or, uh, for Rene Martinelli. Unfortunately, a mechanical failure has taken him out, and he's obviously a bit bummed out after that one. The TB Cart USA driver is running in sixth, and Rene Martinelli, uh, a mainstay here at Rockmaster Shifter Racing in the Florida Winter Tour, is done on lap number nine. Yeah, that's such a shame. He was actually having a pretty good race, making his way up the, the ladder there, Rene Martinelli. But I tell you what, the one that's really enjoying himself is Antonio Bazonia Jr. The Come Brazilian on. Orsalon drivers. He's showing them the way. 5.1 second lead right now. Go ahead, Xander. I'm sorry. How about Alex Mueller on yeah. our screen here? He's just worked his way around Scott Presti in that Ralph Schumacher cart for VTM Racing. So Scott Presti back to fifth, and Alex Mueller getting some late race charging in. Uh, we've got now five to go. The privateer, he calls himself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good run there for Alex. Right now sitting in that third position, as you had mentioned, gotten around uh, a fourth position that has got around Scotty Presti there. Louis Goche on the way as well. The PSL driver sitting right there in that sixth position. Unfortunately, when they spread out, they do just that. All right, looks like we've got ourselves another driver. We'll send it down to Alexander and Emery and see what they have. Thanks, guys. Yeah, here at Diego Ramos. Diego. You've been really, really quick all week, and obviously the PSL team in general has been really fast. You know, Morgado on pole, you're starting P3. You've been consistently about a tenth off of Morgado. You know, what is it maybe that he's doing just a little bit better than you so far this weekend? Uh, for sure, we improved a little bit in the warm-up. I did exactly the same time than him. Uh, for sure, the race will be, will be fun, but, but let's see. Yeah, and obviously, I mean, you've gotten really, really good starts all weekend long, starting on the outside. Now you're starting row three. I mean, I'm, just, I'm sure the goal is to just to try to work with Morgado. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. For sure, we, we're not going to fight hard. Uh, I want to do, like, a clean start, try to go to P2, and, uh, and then see what happened uh, during the race. Awesome. Yeah, Diego Ramos, everybody, starting inside of row two and P3 for the Rock Senior Final. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alex, there. So Diego Ramos, like he said, just hoping to run good as we got more problems. This is the 515 as well. Another one of the TV carts with an issue. That is Corey Matthews, and he is frustrated oh, he there. He certainly Rondon. is. I had talked to Corey a little earlier. I said, whatever you do, Corey, don't change that color of the helmet. At least we know it's you. Oh, man. Uh, look. It's a you TV car graveyard so bummed here. bummed out. Yeah. TB Car Graveyard coming out of turn number six. So Yeah, that's not a picture you want to see, that's no, for sure. <laughs> no, they're not posing, ladies and no. gentlemen. They have broken down. Uh, meanwhile, Pizzonia Jr., his lead nearly seven seconds as he'll come this time by to get two laps to go on that Orsolan Racing Beryl Art. And for Antonio Pizzonia, he had uh, to watch his son go out and race in mini. He'll get to watch his son race in micro again this afternoon. But you go from that, and then you got to lock in and uh, get ready to get after it here in Rock Shifter Master. It's seeming to come pretty easy to him. You see him reaching his hand over there to the air box coming down the front stretch. We talked about that a little bit yesterday watching some of the VLR Masters uh, where uh, they're putting their hand over the air, one of the two holes in the air box to flood the engine with fuel and what they call choke the engine out. Uh, so not sure exactly if he's feeling like he needs to do that every lap, if he's doing it just to kind of conserve the motor a little bit or right. if he's... Maybe just a little bit bored out there. I don't know. but <laughs> Give them something to do. Hard to think of being bored driving a six-speed shifter cart around this very, very physical, tight, twisty, bumpy racetrack with a lot of curves to hit. But when you race in Formula One, this is uh, normal. That's right. This, this isn't uh, a beast. Any other kind of motorsport coming to shifter carts is is a real wake-up call. But for Antonio Pizzoni, maybe not so much. So he'll round the final turn. White flag in the air this time by. And let's look back here. Second place on the racetrack, Daniel Debos. Again, we talked about it being the round one winner. Was super, super stoked. Didn't have a lot Very. of seat time. And the International Motorsport Tony Kart driver, well, he's not up in the lead right now. Antonio Pizzoni is the driver on your screen in the lead. Daniel Devos has put together a really, really solid drive on that silver and red OTK back in second here with the final lap underway. Uh, so there goes Pizzoni on again on into the teardrop. And then back from Daniel Devos, you got Jose Montalto. I know he wanted to get back right here to this guy on that Tony car for International Motorsport, the Chrome and Red, still running second. And if you go a little further, you'll find that DR North America entry of Jose Montalto. He's just going to come up a little bit shy of getting to kind of, you know, uh, tit for tat with Daniel <laughs> Debos. 
Maybe with, a, maybe with some words with him in the scale line. But in any case, the scale line first to it should be Antonio Pizzonia Jr. He's going to win in Rock Shifter Master. Bam! So the checkered flags out there from our head, race, or head flagman, Justin Dittrich. There, a little wave from second and third for Debos and for Jose Melantel. How about it for Alex Mueller? Solid run. Gets to fourth as he cruises across the line. Scott Presty survives yes. to round off the top five. So uh, Rock Shifter Master getting ready to roll. Rock Pro Senior down on the grid. Alexander Cyril and Emery Lida have been giving us a lot of interviews. They've been getting us a lot of intel. We'll probably talk with them before that race gets underway as Antonio Pizzonia Jr. makes his way there out of turn number seven. But Ron John, talking with you, we've seen Mateus Morgado be yes. the, the guy to beat all week. Do you think that stays here? Womp looked like I, it was I, all red again. No, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that, yeah, I, I think it's going to be the same. Uh, he, he's just shown he's got really, really good speed in that cart. He's a great driver to begin with. And with that speed, I think uh, he'll be able to, to hang on and, uh, and take the victory. It's a safe bet. Again, the 2022 Florida It is a safe bet. <laughs> I, I'm winner. normally one of those guys that likes to go down the list a little ways and find somebody that, you, you know, you just is a great person and you just want him to win one time. But I, I believe that uh, Matthias has shown he's uh, pretty much the class of the field this weekend. Well, I, I think he's, uh, you know, again, a very, very safe bet. California kid Blake Nash yep. here uh, getting set to go from the outside of the front row. Alexander Emer uh, Searle, Emery Lida, they've got some thoughts of their own. Let's send it down to you guys. What do you have for a pre-race report and a pick here to win in Pro Rock Senior? Thanks, Sander. I mean, heading into this Pro Rock Senior, it's hard to bet against Mateus Morgado when you look at his weekend. He won two of the three heats, walked away in the pre-final. The only blemish has been the second heat where he got an incident with Santiago Fernandez. But all things considered, he's been really, really impressive. Diego Ramos as well has been right there. Blake Nash, they have been the top three throughout the weekend. Uh-oh. We got some input from Mario Kremers here. Starting <laughs> tail of the grid, obviously. He had a good heat race yesterday, going from 19th to 7th before getting crashed out. He'll be one to watch. But his parallel or teammates have been controlling the race. But when I look for a pick, I got to say, Blake Nash has been getting closer and closer from a pace standpoint all weekend long. He's looked consistent. At the start of the weekend, it was about a 10th, 10th and a half. By the last heat, he was trading shots with Morgado. Came about a second off in the pre-final. And we get to the final. I think he has enough to put it together. I'm going to go with Blake Nash to win this one. Alex, who do you have? Yeah, I mean, I don't know who to pick. I mean, obviously, like you said, Morgado's been the quickest guy all weekend so far. Ramos has been about a tenth off. Blake Nash has been there. I like your pick for Blake Nash. My pick, though... Um, I just had Marion Kremers come over and say to pick him, so I'm going to pick Marion Kremers. I think he's going to go from the back of the grid to the win. Um, back to you guys, though. I want to see what your picks are. Well, again, Ron John said he's going with the safe pick. He's going with Mateus Morgado. Alex, got to give you credit. Last month you went with Josh Conker, the only guy to pick the Canadian. That's he did true. win it. So, hey, maybe Marion Kremers does a last the first challenge here and pulls it off. I think it'd be a big, big reception if Blake Nash, who has been on the cusp, multiple pole awards, heat race wins, to get his first career Pro National 125 main event win. He's got the Nash Motorsports boys here, and uh, the heads of the race team, again, taking an eye on him here. So it'd be awesome for him to split up that Red Army duo. Mateus Morgato, super, super safe bet, and you can bet Diego Ramos, his teammate there, is going to try to play you know, as a, a really good kind of benefactor on him. I think, honestly... Morgato, you know, I, I don't want to go with the pull sitter. I think it's right. a safe, right. safe it's bet. Safe. But if you look closely with the lap times at the end of that prefinal, Blake Nash was making some hay. So, hey, you know what? I'll oh. put my pick on the California oh, kid. The California I'll, I'll give kid. him there okay. from it. The outside of the front row. We're going to find out who, we t uh, who takes it here in Pro Rock Senior again. Let's go back down to the grid, and we'll show you where they all line up as the engines get set to fire. Again, Blake Nash will join Mateus Morgato as Morgato has been the man to beat all weekend and has majorly extended his championship points lead with a couple of heat wins and a pre-final win as well. Nash has kept himself in championship contention heading into Orlando. Needs a good main event to continue that streak up. And the same for Diego Ramos, who uh, Diego Ramos is still looking for a uh, podium here in the winter tour because he crossed the line third in St. Petersburg had a pushback bumper penalty, Ron John, that right. took him off the box. Yeah, that, he, I don't think he was too excited about that, but uh, this time we'll have to keep an eye on him. It's interesting, nobody picked Diego. 
No, no. You know, and he's been pretty doggone strong himself. So He has been. He has been really, really strong. And he's then you a, have a couple of youngsters back behind him with Jorge and Helio. So. Yeah, Jorge Ortiz there on that Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed, getting to talk with his father and Jorge a little bit, seeing him blossom here. And, and again, you know, just reminding themselves that they're only three races in to their rookie campaign right. in the 125 Pro Senior Classes, and it really is a, a completely different ball game <laughs> than where he was a year ago when he won the Junior Rock Championship here at the Florida Winter Tour. And then, like you said, you go back to Elio Meza. First time for him running a 125 Pro Senior. We asked him some of the differences from it yesterday. Obviously, higher horsepower class. But more than anything, he's racing a lot more guys. In uh, VLR Senior, St. Peter was him versus Wes Duchak. Right. And pretty much the same thing here with Joey Bodding starting to close that gap to the top two. But now, Meza, P5, with fast drivers behind him and fast drivers in front of him. you got to be really smart, and you got to be kind of on your toes at all times, especially in those opening few laps because they will know how to take advantage of you, knowing that we're all relatively even on speed, but if I shuffle you to the back, you can't get back up to me. There's enough guys between me and you. So the one-minute warning gets given. That's, again, your top five. How about Carol Pashewicz on the International Another Motorsport one. Lenzo cart? Uh, he was fast through practice, and then again, one of those many drivers that have been saying, you know, I feel a little bit off with some new rubber. So maybe the new set of sticker Levantos will be better for Carol here as we come through. Again, keep on voting in the live chat for all the live stream members that are watching us here. Oh, who do you think is going to win today's Pro Rock Senior Main Event? We'll let the survey results uh, trickle on in and give you the answers right before we go green. But who do you have picking for the uh, top spot in Pro Rock Senior? Let's go back from round number three onwards. How about Jacob Kolar, rookie PK Sports North America senior driver on that DAP cart, the uh, Brazilian brand. Uh, with the Cart Republic factory kind of producing this chassis, bringing it back. It was the same brand that Ayrton Senna uh, won his world championship in karting on and wow. uh, revived the uh, the black and orange colors. Super, super cool for Dake, Jacob cool. to represent them and the Brazilian heritage that, of course, goes to the, the PK, uh, PK family. And he starts to the inside of uh, family race team, Cart, uh, the Cartworks Cosmic of Justin White. You go back to the top ten. Just uh, Santiago Fernandez will start to the inside in that AJF Racing uh, Tony Kart, one of the saddle, uh, smaller race teams here in the paddock. And then it was outside the prime power team, Beryl Art of Frankie Esposito. Camilo Trapp on the AM Racing Engines x -Pre rolls off 11th. Alongside him, Cameron Weinberg in that Soil Raceworks CRG, as he mentioned in his interview, got crashed a little bit around in that pre-final. Then a rocky weekend for Cam Bam. We'll see if he can get rolling from P12. How about Connor Zillish? Boy, Got a penalty for his contact with Marion Kramer as we saw the two of them trading blows. Obviously, they were good good pals after in that Saturday post-race day thoughts video, but Zillish rolling off 13th, has some Got work a lot to of do. Work. A lot of work. Jose Hernandez, 14th. Justin Garrett, Chris Farino on row eight. Chloe Drummond, uh, Nazaro Lopez Cicerato, row number nine. Aaron Benoit and Marion Kremers roll off 19th and 20th along with Nolan Bauer. Lots of uh, room to go forward for them. We'll see if they can make good time with it. 16 laps. The main event of the morning finals here. Pro Rock Senior coming out of the final corner. The fans have voted. The selection is the reigning champion, Mateus Morgado from the poll. That's what everyone has decided to vote here in the live stream chat of who they think is going to win this one. Can he prove you all right? He rolls off on the inside of the front row. He'll control the start as the field comes onto the start finish line straight away. And here we go, boys and girls. We're green for Rock Senior. Blake Nash Whoa. trying to get down low, and he does down to second. Ramos, oh no, no green. No green. No green. Hands in the air. I thought we were green there I at did that time. Too. Wow. No green that time by. So a false start. And a little bit of an early jump on our own end as yeah. well, calling that one. So it was interesting uh, watching Blake too. It looked like right when they got here to the commitment line, that uh, Blake was actually a little bit ahead of Matthias. Kind of threw his hand up, like, "Hey, dude, what's up? <laughs> Let's go." Yeah, no kidding. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll see uh, see what happens here if we get another good start. Blake yeah. Nash again was. Trying to keep things even, wasn't trying to jump it, but right. he knows if Diego Ramos gets in front of him early, Ramos is going to play, probably uh, be a good teammate, maybe block a little bit to let M Morgado get away if Diego doesn't think he's faster. If Diego thinks he's faster, you can bet he wants to win. Hasn't gotten himself a win in a long, long time on the pro national circuit, and he's closer than he's been in a little bit. Sure probably is. even closer than where he was in uh, St. Petersburg. Was uh, one uh, ill-timed move between himself and... Um, uh, one other driver at uh, 
uh, and, and Donovan Bonilla, sorry, at Homestead Miami Speedway for Sunday, uh, round two of the Skiza Winter Series. So it's been a long time for fellow Brazilian Diego Ramos to win here on the Pro National calendar in North America. Mateus Morgado did it not too long ago, just a month back. Now he's got the field at his grasp, and we're green down to turn number one. Mateus Morgado, Diego Ramos, and Ortiz, and Ortiz Whoa. is going to get into Blake Nash, and around he goes into turn number one. Jorge Ortiz was banging tires of Blake Nash, shaking his head. He's frustrated, was trying to hang on, and we got a driver up and over in turn three. One driver is flipped up and over in turn number three. The officials are going to check him out. I'm not sure who that was. Driver is up and okay. But another flip in that third corner. Wow, something, yeah. So, Mateus Morgato leads your field early. Diego Ramos second, Blake Nash third, Elio Meza, Carol Pashowicz, Connor Zilich. What a, whoa, Connor Zilich from outside the top what? 10. Heck of a start for the REM Cosmic. Obviously must have found a little bit of speed because man, he's already jumped up, as you had mentioned, as they come back around to start finish once again. Marion Kremers is out with a blown chain there in the 302, and he's frustrated about it. Marion Kremers, you can see that cock of the head there yes. in the infield. So the uh, pro shifter rock pole setter, Marion Kremers, is out of this one, not able to go forward from the back. Here comes Blake Nash on the bumper of Diego Ramos. Little bit sideways there as he kind of got lost in the wake of the 313. We talk about it every once in a while, that little bit of understeer running too close to behind another driver where you get that air taken off the front nose cone and bumper just gives them a bit of a push and, and then kind of washes the front end out and that's what happened right Definitely there. Definitely looked like seven. he washed out for sure. Yeah. I've seen that a lot coming through this particular area of the track as well. Those S's work them hard and of course we've, we've seen a tremendous amount of passes coming here through turns number 13 and 14. Speaking of pass, there's Zillish on Pashowicz. There's Connor, yeah. Pashowicz got him back, though. Zillish going to go back on him down the front stretch. Not enough momentum. Looks back to Justin White. Justin says, all right, you want to get him? I'll, I'll give you a chance again. See what you can do into turn number three. Pashowicz, the Lenzo car factory driver. These two drivers, cool story behind Carol Pashowicz and Connor Zillich. They were teammates back when Connor Zillich won the Rock Mini International Final when they were 11 and 12 years old. So we're talking again about... Uh, 2017, 17, six years yes, ago. Right, right. And now Zillish going to war with his former teammate. Hadn't seen him in about six years since that season. And now he gets by him here for the fifth spot on that Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmic and starts to drive forward here. That was a great move there by Connor, but look at this. Thought Carroll was going to take another shot at him. Thought better of it there in turn number 13. Connor continues to try to make his way up the list, already up seven spots into that sixth position. As again, our leader comes back by a 53-5 to the 53-7. I think timing's not updating at the moment. Not so very we'll, well, we'll anyway. we see on the timing yeah, monitor to That may to have update. been from that first lap. I believe we're on to uh, three complete now, if I'm not mistaken. We'll, uh, we'll continue to update there as we go. But Blake Nash definitely rolling up to Diego Ramos. Ooh, again, just he's just missed time in his run a little bit. He got right to him in the center of the corner. And then once he tapped the rear bumper, it kind of knocked him, knocked himself loose, and he fell backwards. So Blake Nash needs to find a way to get around Diego Ramos if he wants any shot at catching his teammate, Mateus Morgato. Here it comes. Turn 13. Ramos drops the nose off. Blake Nash not happy. These two already had one run in earlier this weekend together. And Blake Nash here, knowing Diego Ramos, is trying to fend him back, uh, both uh, to keep get uh, Mateus Morgato's lead, but also for himself with a little personal deal between the two of them. So how does turn three look now? Ramos gonna go low and block. Here comes Elio Meza. I was gonna say it didn't take Elio very long to get up there. Now that these guys are battling, that's allowed him to get up there and battle along with them. But boy, I, I, I thought for sure that he had it going to the turn number 13. And as you said, Ramos just kind of slammed the door on him. Yeah, Diego Ramos on that AM Racing Engines PSL Bureau Alarm. How about Elio Meza again though? First time in a 125 senior power plant on the national stage. And that Iron Rock Motorsports Tony Kart is really rolling right now as he closes up there to the fight for second. He'll lose a little bit of time, but it would be a, a major statement for the rookie here. The kid and only his uh, second race weekend in senior in general and his first ever start in a pro national category on a, a nine-year-old go-kart in the back at Iron Rock Motorsports' race shop That's in Houston, crazy. Texas. Such a cool, cool story here for Elio Meza, and it would be a good little uh, send-off for him after that issue in VLR Senior. And yeah, again, it's just him and his dad, Ron John. Yeah, I know. And 
that's normally not too bad to run two classes in the 10 class format with gaps built out in a full day but they had warm up and it's only five classes in total they're running in the second run group and the fifth run group oh. he's like and they're pitted over not all the way out back but right. a little further back for the iron rock camp he's like dude we're going to be sprinting all day sunday morning back and forth warm up vlr warm up rock senior go back put the tires on the vlr and then come race the vlr and then Luckily, kind of worked out probably once that VLR broke down. The dad had to go, you know, went back to the right. pits early and uh, uh, got the, the Rocks GP senior car ready to roll. You so. know, it's so unfortunate for a chain to fall off in, in the finals, right? Uh, we've talked about that before where, you know, you go out there, you warm up, everything's fine. You get out there, you're racing, and then lo and behold, your chain falls off. That can't be too, uh, too exciting for him at all. Well, uh, we're watching Connor Zillis back here in the fifth spot because Blake Nash has kind of faded a little bit behind Diego Ramos. Hasn't really made up much more time. We're working through the more, uh, getting closer and closer to halfway here yeah, in this uh, Rock this. Senior main event. Hoping that timing will update. We're trying to guesstimate with our lap counter on the top left of where we are. I think we should be coming to six down, ten to go. But Mateus Morgato continues to show the lead as this battle here is behind him. This is 6th, uh, 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th. As Morgato comes by, there is Ramos and Nash in 2nd and 3rd. still right there. Yeah, he's close. Might be able to kind of remount the charge, but the, the gap out front is just getting bigger and bigger every lap here. And I thought for a minute maybe Blake might have something for Mateus, but I'm not quite so sure at this moment here because Diego Ramos has picked up his pace, and uh, they both are losing time, probably a couple tenths a lap to the reigning world champion, Mateus Morgato, who's just doing a phenomenal job here. And again, you can see in that PK teardrop, Diego Ramos getting a much better exit uh, than Blake Nash. Let's go a little further back here from the field. So that's second and third. We talked about Elio Meza down in the fourth spot. Back in fifth there is Zilich, then Pashawicz. Looking in that group there, going back. Here is Aaron Benoit and Santiago Fernandez. Remember we mentioned Aaron Benoit started back there in dead last with Marin Kremer. As we see Frankie Esposito making a move down the inside of Cam Bam, Cameron Weinberg. And he'll uh, make that one stick. But how about it for Aaron Benoit on his first weekend back in a, a competitive pro national scene as the halfway flag flies. So we are eight in, eight to go now if uh, we're on track with halfway. So there we go. So now we've got a lot kind of correct. But uh, really, really impressive for Aaron Benoit to be putting this kind of drive together here as he starts to work his way up the grid. You know, it's been so long since he actually had been in a cart. So, yeah, to get out here and be able to compete at the level that he is is absolutely amazing. Just goes to show you sometimes when you got it, you got it. Now, of course, he's not exactly in the position he'd love to be, which is up there towards the front. But nonetheless, after having that flip early on, in the oh, races, right? Oh, pass for second, Ron John. Oh, he Blake finally Nash got up finally to finally got around Diego Ramos. Blake Nash up to second. Ramos back to third. And that's going to allow Halio to make his way up there almost to the back end of Ramos. So now here, let's see if Diego Ramos can come back on him here. This is second, third, and fourth. Mateus Morgato not even in frame anymore. Long gone is Mateus gone. Morgato as Blake Nash leads this newly reset three-car train into the PK teardrop on that Nash Motorsports EOS cart. Ramos on that PSL karting factory bureau art trying to get himself some hardware, and Elio Meza going up against two drivers here again. Blake Nash entering his third season of senior eligibility, his second in the Pro National 125 class, and then for, El uh, for uh, Diego Ramos, 21 years old, veteran right. in the Pro National uh, senior division. So. Elio Meza going to school a little bit as we see him close up. Passing further back. Benoit loses his spot to Esposito, but here comes Meza. Big run on that Iron Rock Tony cart. Probably thinking to himself, man, I'm running against guys I've looked up to for the last few years. No kidding. Yeah, for, without a doubt. And that, that's exactly the type of driver he is. Uh, he's a very, very good young driver, and he's showing he's got the talent. He's just got to have the confidence to send it that's here. That's right. Didn't get the greatest exit out of uh, turn five, so he'll stay in line. Differences in lines there a little bit. Again, you can see Ramos is really, really good. That PSL Birrell Art, it rolls so well through that PK teardrop. Maybe not so good in some of the other sections, but that corner of the racetrack, he's way better than the two Tony carts around him. The Nash Motorsports EOS cart of Blake Nash, and even that time, the uh, 2014 model Tony cart for Elio Meza, not rolling as good to the center of that PK teardrop either. He just seems to be a little faster, though, when he comes out of turn number 14, heading for 15. Still just not close enough to 
take any kind of a shot there going into turn number one, heading for turns number two and three. He's still, he's right there on that back bumper, just not close enough. Again, perhaps he's trying to set him up here. Again, a great run there for Diego out of turn number three, coming through four, now heading for six. Yeah, did not get a good run out no. of five at all for Elio Meza. He, that gap opened back up. He was a little better through six that time, though. But, again, this is a fight for the last step on the box. I believe we should be seeing five, or, uh, five to go this time by with 11 laps complete. If we've got it right, we'll confirm that as we get closer to the two to go. So, you know, the white flag played off the, the uh, officials in laps as they exit turn 14. Diego Ramos still a car length up. Mesa great in the final hairpins. Not so good in the higher speed sections with now five laps remaining. Connor Zillish back in that fifth position still holding station outside the top five. In the meantime, Helio continues to bear down on Diego Ramos. It's a great Sunday drive so far from Mateus Morgado, the PSL karting driver, the Brazilian out there in front, just having himself a beautiful little Sunday drive. In the meantime, the battle still continues for that second and third position. Yeah, these guys here just, uh, again, Meza putting on some pressure, trying to learn a little bit. The longer he waits, though, the more aggressive Ramos will be to hold that spot. Here he comes down the inside, turn 13, and the rookie's got himself onto the podium as we'll come out of 14 now. Elio Meza blocks a little bit. Ramos going to follow and down the front straightaway. Four laps to go. Elio Meza now takes over third. Ramos fourth. Connor Zillish getting a late race charge is slowly closing up to these two, and he's bringing company behind Connor Zillish is going to be that Beryl Art for Prime Power Team. Is that Nolan Bauer? Indeed, Nolan Bauer. What a run forward here for the Canadian. The other driver, along with Martin Kremers, along with Aaron Benoit, that started dead last in this field. I believe that's Nolan Bauer, based on what I can tell her on the screen. We'll confirm that, but he's on to Zillish, and almost there, and these guys both could play spoiler into uh, that uh, podium run here for him. So does indeed look to be the three. Um, 388 and Nolan Bauer, yes. So Nolan Bauer sits in sixth. That's and a great run for Nolan so yeah, far, for sure. From the rear of the field, right? Wow. That's about 15 spots gained, more yeah. or less. Up to six now with two laps to go. 14 down. Two laps remaining. 14 complete. Here comes Bauer looking for fifth there. We just switched away. Here he comes on Connor Zillish, and he'll get it. Nolan Bauer into the top five. Zillish back to sixth. And Nolan Bauer making himself to be the highest running, uh, or the second highest running Bureau Lard as he catches the PSL factory driver. Diego Ramos up the road in fourth. Elio Meza might be just a little bit out of reach in third. So let's go ahead and recap up the order for the top five. Again, Nolan Bauer from dead last up there. Ramos in the fourth spot. Diego Ramos was hoping maybe today would be the day that he gets that big, big time U.S. victory he hasn't had in so long as the white flag waves. Then up to third, of course. What a run for uh, Elio Meza as Mateus Morgado comes through the corner. Elio Meza on that Iron Rock Motorsports. Tony Cart, the rookie, has been doing such a great job all weekend, balancing both classes, helping his father work on both go-karts. A really uh, father-son duo you want to root for as we see the battle start to come on for Ramos back to power. Ramos will defend from him through turn number three. Boy, Nolan is all over the back end of Ramos. Boy, he's close. He really is. He's really fast, too. I was yeah. thinking maybe perhaps he'd take a look to the inside, thought none. Got to be careful, boys. You're yes. both re representing the, the red and white army. They sure are. As Ramos is going to block to finish this one out. Meza will be safe in third. Blake Nash is safe up the road in the Nash Motorsports EOS cart in second. And out of turn number 14, Mateus Morgado will round the final turn. Checkers in the air. Bam. The sweep continues in the Florida Winter Tour. Mateus Morgano, round one and round two winner. And the championship points will get bigger. And look at this on the final lap. Nolan Bauer gets one done over by Diego Ramos and Connor Zillish. So at the line, Zillish gets fifth back. Ramos hangs on to fourth. Nolan Bauer ends up in sixth. And well, again, the timing and scoring monitors are down for a moment here on the Rock Cup app. We'll try to get some more info when it comes. What we do know, the first driver to cross the screen here is Mateus Borgato. We'll see if we can find him somewhere on the racetrack. He's getting lots of congratulations. There he is headed into the PK teardrop. Mateus Borgato getting a, a little wave from Diego Ramos. There's a wave, Justin White. 
Lots of drivers giving him thumbs up. You sure that's the thumb, huh? <laughs> I think so. No, the, the, I think so. That right there, you can see the bright blue car chaser vested. <laughs> Kyle and Trevor and uh, Mateus was giving him kind of a shrug like, I don't know. Hey. Nobody can touch me today. And, that's it. Hey, you know what? It's uh, it's not um, you know overconfidence when you can back it up. And the reigning world champ puts another incredible showing in the books here. Connor Zillich was the man pressuring him in St. Petersburg. Today, it was Blake Nash, but nobody had the pace of the Brazilian American. So Mateus Morgado will lead us into a commercial break here as he makes it around the outside to pick up some extra rubber to make sure he meets or exceeds the minimum weight requirement. And uh, some more waves to the crowd as he works his way behind the Greyhound Racing Seats banners and into the scale line area. We'll chat with our top finishers here from this one and hear from some of the rougher days with likes of Marin Crummers. Boy Ortiz getting collected in turn one, drove back to the field. We'll take this commercial break and come back with both race interviews after. There is uh, congratulations going all around here as the drivers start to move their way through the scale line. How about it for Elio Meza, first career pro national podium. He'll get himself a nice big hug for the Iron Rock Motorsports team and his dad coming over with the kart stand to get him onto the box. Great, great debut in uh, Pro Rock Senior. Of course, second place, Blake Nash. Gave it everything he had. He's already rolled on, or no, he's right there behind them in that National Motorsports EOS car. Here's Nolan Bauer coming on through. Long, long ride forward through the grid for Nolan. Had an awesome drive up, and then the final lap just kind of the way things shake out. He ends up down in sixth. Connor Zilich gets fifth, and again, Diego Ramos hangs on to fourth. They're still inspecting the last couple things on Blake Nash there here this time. Uh, we'll continue, of course, live race coverage uh, with uh, the beginning of the main events for Rock GB Masters after the lunch break and when warm-ups get back underway. Uh, that'll be later on today, of course, but first up here, we've got to continue closing out from the Rose Rock uh, GP Senior interview. So again, if you're tuning in live, main event racing gets back underway after the lunch break and warm-up start uh, back on up. We'll leave the stream up so you can continue to tune in. There's a congrats from Blake Nash there from Matt Johnson, Derek Zimmerman, and the rest of the Nash Motorsports team as they'll get him up. And uh, you can see probably a little bit deflated for Blake. It was a good run, gave it everything he had, just comes up a little bit shy of where he'd like to be, but you know, still good points, survives the weekend, gets himself a second place run. He'll move on to fight another day in Orlando here in a, a few weeks time. Diego Ramos gave it everything he had to survive for that one and he crosses the line in fourth and I'm sure again, Ron John probably bites a little bit. He was so close, so close to getting that podium. And uh, yeah, St. Pete can, gets robbed in here, just one spot shot. Yeah, you can kind of look at it in his face as he came through there. Not, uh, not too happy, pretty disappointed in that particular result. But nonetheless, as you were saying, what a tremendous run for Haley Omeza. Congratulations to Haley. Look it's at Justin White point. there, man. I mean, everyone's just gassed. They are gassed, no doubt. 16 long laps here, about an 18 minute main on what is, again, we've been harping on all weekend. Yep. Very physically demanding racetrack. 
hot, hot weather. The sun beat down humidity is at 60 to 70 percent every day. At least. We are really testing the drivers' fitnesses uh, here this weekend. And uh, we're through. How about Aaron Benoit on that U race uh, Tony Kart? What a good return to the seat. Good he return. was moving forward. You know, the whole the whole race there, trying to dig up the order. And right behind him, getting ready to go onto the scale line is Mateus Morgado in that PSL Karting Factory Bureau Large. And he made it look easy all weekend long. Drives through the field quickly in the pre final. And from here, it's a flag to flag. Perfect win in this main event. Little kind of spurts throughout the weekend where someone may have had a leg up on him, but for the most part, it's all been about the reigning world champ from Brazil. And he scores max points here in the main event. Here he goes to go see uh, everyone. Big hug to his uh, engine builder <laughs> and Ariel Castro, who he said has been kind of like a second father to him. He right. Named, Ariel named uh, one of his twin sons after him. Oh, no kidding. So it's uh, Mateus Castro will be in kid carts here really soon. Oh, that's cool. Um, and uh, Mateus, my God, there's a congrats from the big boss, Dominic Labrec, the owner for PSL Karting, saying, all right, mission accomplished. Job well done, kid. Good, uh, good work and uh, more congrats going around for Mateus Morgado. So we'll, we'll talk with uh, all of them as they work their way on uh, through the scales and some good, some bad, so a lot of stories out of that one for the first of our two headline classes here on the day. Pro Rock Shifter will be coming up next, Ron John, but you know what? Safe pick. Safe pick. Got it. Morgado gets it done. <laughs> yeah, how about that? I was actually right in this particular pick, and uh, I know he's got to be extremely excited about the fact that he once again has swept the weekend, able to uh, take that lead and head for Orlando and perhaps another Florida Winter Tour Championship. Yeah, he will uh, have uh, made it very, very easy. Again, we've harped on it uh, uh, as well a lot this weekend. It is 33% right. more points at each round. So Orlando, he'll still have to perform. He can't sit that one on the sidelines. Right. Can't take it easy. Needs to go out and put another string of race results together. To my knowledge, as we were talking through the years of the last few seasons of the Florida Winter Tour, I've had a bunch of different champions. Norberg's won a championship. Connor Zillish. Morgado last year. I can't think of the last time someone's repeated in Rock Senior right. as, as the Florida Winter Tour champion. I don't think it's happened I, since Rock Cup purchased the Florida Winter Tour back in uh, 2000, what would it be, 17 or 18? Right, I think it was 17. 17. So in this kind of new era of uh, 25 years of running the Florida Winter Tour, um, you know, that uh, for someone to repeat back-to-back -back and do it in dominating fashion like he's done so far, you know, Mateus Morgado won all three rounds last year. Right. He's won the first two so far now. I mean, if you go back on, on the races he's entered here, in the terms of the Florida Winter Tour, Mateus Morgado has been on a tear, and he's on a five-race win streak in the Winter Tour competition, uh, of course. So congrats to Mateus Morgado and, and the team. You know, we'll hear from him. He's got to feel pretty good about it. Maybe not as uh, excited as he's been in this spot before. And, right, right. And probably stays a little more neutral. Of, well, that was an awesome run. Thanks to everyone. Appreciate all the help, but... You know, we're ready for the next show, we're ready to fight again, and uh, and then we'll hear again from the rest of the podium. Elio Mays is probably going to be pumped up. First uh, career podium that's in Pro National 125 absolutely competition. Absolutely amazing. I know he and his father got to be really, really stoked about their fi final spot there, end up in the third spot. That's fantastic. Great run there for Haley Omeza in his first senior event yeah. here. So, And then a flip side again kind of for Blake Nash. You know, he – Maybe he uh, look, looks back at that one. Is probably going to beat himself up a little bit. He's been very, very open and honest, and that's, I think, been really cool to hear yep. from Blake about, you know, he's saying, you know, I, I'm making mistakes. I could be better. I could be doing this better. I could be doing that better. I should have, you know, not made as many. Uh, but I think, it, you know, net-net, I mean, he still beat a lot of talented drivers here, and he's going up against the best in the world, the literal best in the world, reigning world champion of Mateus Morgado. You come second to that guy, uh, that's not a bad place. Not to bad be. at all. Not at all. So very, very strong run. And again, like I said, it's, it's a marathon through this championship. It builds every round. You know, his worst round results-wise being St. Pete, not a bad thing. Got 33% more points, gets himself second uh, here today. And, and I think that should uh, might move him up to second in the championship standings as well with Connor Zillich having not so good of a run at PK. And then he goes to Orlando, um, and that'll be uh, really the first track that Blake is going to come back to and, and really have a lot of experience at with the right. races from last year um, and, and put himself in a position to maybe – finally break through there and get that first win you know being the first time we've actually raced at this track to say the least he had a tremendous weekend just not quite enough but uh, nonetheless a, a tremendous performance for him uh, ends up in that second position 
got himself set up for perhaps the Florida Winter Tour Championship. Eh, well, he's going to have to beat the one guy. He's that... going to have to beat that one guy that's out there in the front, but uh, and yeah. that's obviously been extremely hard to do. And that one guy is down trackside. Mateus Morgano's right. made it through the scale line area. He's down with Alexander Searle and Emery Lida. Boys? Mateus had to use the bathroom real quick, so he'll be back <laughs> ah. in a few minutes. <laughs> but in the meantime, we've got Jorge Ortiz. Jorge, a little bit of a disappointing race for you. Obviously, you started outside row two. Got into it with Blake and turn one. Just talk to me about the incident. Um, yeah, of course, it was very upsetting today. Uh, it was in the wall. Um, but I want to thank um, Speed, obviously, for giving me a good motor, good chassis. Austin for the coaching and everyone for the support. But uh, we'll for sure get him uh, next weekend. All right, Jorge Ortiz, a difficult result to a strong weekend. Back to you guys in the booth. Yeah, I can certainly understand where he'd be a little upset about that, uh, certainly on the first lap. That's where, not where you want to be bumping and banging, but nonetheless, you know, stuff happens in racing, and uh, that uh, happened to be exactly what happened to him, and obviously very dejected. Yeah, and understandably so here. Sure. Let's go back on down track side to Blake Nash here. Second today, solid points all this weekend. Uh, let's hear from the Nash Motorsports driver from California. Yeah, Blake Nash. Blake, you started off in a little bit of a rocky start there, obviously, with Jorge. First off, talk to me about that contact. Yeah, so um, starting on the outside here, obviously, uh, it's either, it either goes really good or really bad. Um, I tried to chop down to the inside as quick as possible. Uh, I, I think they all just clustered up on the inside, honestly, and I think when they hit the curb in corner one, um, that just it caused a collision between me and Jorge. I caught air. Um, honestly, I'm really lucky just to, to not get caught up in that crash. I think the worst that happened is I might have uh, tweaked the chassis just a little bit. But, uh, yeah, um, I think that kind of set us off on the back foot right away. Uh, we fell back to third, and uh, right away Morgado had a gap, and it was just really hard to, to close after that. Yeah, and the rest of the race, obviously, like you mentioned, you kind of just lost so much to Mateus while battling with Diego and everything. But over the course of the last few laps, it looked like you had quite a bit of pace in that cart. What can you take away from this weekend and the setup when it comes to going to Orlando in just about a month's time? Uh, just overall confidence. I mean, um, we made a huge improvement just from like last week alone at Scusa. Um, and I'm, I'm battling with the best. So, I mean, just overall confidence. I, I have the pace to do it. I just need to get my... Uh, my mistakes um, under control, you know, just be more consistent and um, just make less mistakes overall. I think I, I have the pace to do it, so. All right, one last thing. Obviously, the National Motorsports Operation, you guys have had a pretty big amount of success so far through the first two months of the year. Louie hasn't had quite as much results, obviously, with the rib injury and a few other things going on. But just walk me through who's allowed this operation to be as good as it has so far this season. Uh, well, obviously, uh, my dad, um, everyone under National Motorsports, they, they put together a great program for, for drivers to um, improve and, and do the best they can. Um, Speed Labs Racing Engines has given us a great piece to work with all year long, so I have to thank them. And then all my sponsors, uh, Electrical Source Holdings, Offset, Group A, From the Ashes Embroidery, AIM, um, there's just so many people to thank that, that make this possible for me. All right, Blake Nash ended up second in the final after a long battle with Diego Ramos. He'll be looking for even more in Orlando. Back to you guys in the booth. Really, really good head on his shoulders. Like no you said, Blake, Mash, Blake Nash that time is, you know, again, he's, he's dealing with, uh, you know, the, the, the best. He's going up against the best in the world. So uh, for Blake Nash to have that, kind of put it back in perspective and say, you know, it's just we're, we're there. Our package is, is getting there. You know, and it, it's there now, and, and my speed is coming along, and, and uh, the more s races they really put under his belt, I think he's really going to be there. How about races under his belt being at zero coming into the weekend at 125 Pro Nationals and only his second ever weekend at all running in the senior classes? Elio Meza gets his first career Pro National podium in his rookie debut. He's down with Emery. Elio, what can I say? Your first ever Rock GP senior race. You put it on the podium. You've been consistent all weekend, but in this final, you took another step forward. Just walking through your race. Yeah, so um, coming off the line um, on the start, we, we didn't get the greatest acceleration. We had a little bit of a gap going into one. Luckily, no one took it, so we were able to come out P4. And then throughout the race, we stayed there. And then uh, 
we just kept hunting down, pushing, 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 and then towards the end, I started catching Diego. I didn't want to send it on him, ruin his race, you know, the championship and stuff, so I made sure I was nice and close to get to the pass, and then from there, we came in home with a P3. Yeah, and obviously VLR this weekend did not go quite how you would have liked it, but still a lot of pace among both of your carts. I mean, in VLR, you were right there up there with Wes all weekend. Considering it was your first ever Rock Senior race on an old chassis, it was pretty good as well. As you look to this chat and reflection of this weekend as a whole, what do you think allowed you to be su so successful here? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the team, Iron Rock. They've helped me out so much to get ready, especially Charlie. He's been, he's been giving me all the tips on how to be fast in the GB class, um, just helping me get my mindset transitioned between both classes. And so a lot, a lot of the credit goes to him. It's, uh, my dad, my only mechanic, been going back and forth all weekend between two carts. So pretty much throughout the whole weekend, we're running back and forth, up and down the grid, just to make the session. And then Offset, Forti, and then Tiago for helping us straighten out that old chassis. Um, yeah. All right, and you'll be in Orlando both for USPKS and for Rock. You're going to be running both classes for both? Maybe, maybe. All right, well, we'll see what happens with Elio Meza, a spectacular Rock senior debut. He finishes on the podium here on Sunday. Back to you guys in the booth. Super, super humble young man there. And it was cool to hear the respect he's got for he all these guys. Does. Uh, you know, again, hearing how he did not want to uh, ruin Diego's race at all, wanted to, you know, only really take that spot if it was going to be uh, given to him. And uh, he does an awesome job getting himself up to third. And as for Diego's teammate, Mateus Morgato, out of the bathroom, back to the interview booth to close this off for the morning sessions. Mateus Morgato has now won five Florida Winter Tour races in a row. He dominated this one from the flag to the flag. <laughs> He's down with Emery. <laughs> Thank you, Xander. I'm here with Mateus Morgato. Mateus, that run to the bathroom was probably the most adversity you had all day. You dominated the race, flag to flag, got, I believe, over a five-second margin of victory at the end. Just tell me how you did it. Yeah, for sure. It was a great race, um, really calm race, to be honest. Really happy with the results, really happy with the work of all the team during the week. Um, my engine builder, Ariel, um, they all did a very good job. Um, I'm really thankful for them. And, yeah, the final... I mean, was not I. I can't say it was hard because I was all the time by myself, so I was just there relaxing a bit while the other was were fighting. So I was really good, really happy, and yeah, thanks to everyone. Yeah, I'm looking at the pace you had this weekend. Obviously, in St. Petersburg, you were able to come away with the main event victory, but it was really hard fought with Connor Zillish, and you kind of were in the top three all weekend, but never really established dominance here. Really, with the exception of like one or two sessions with Blake Nash right there, it looked like you had the mesh on everyone. What does that speak to you guys' development? I mean, obviously, marion has been looking really good in the pro shifter category. Diego is up front. Just talk to me about what this means for PSL as a whole. For sure, everyone have good speed. Um, maybe miss a bit of luck. You see, like, Mario now start um, last, was already P10, and then had a problem. For sure, the speed was there. Also, Diego, we are having some problem with the tires this week, so... You gotta be lucky. Um, sometimes you get a bad set of tires and you cannot do anything about it. So yeah, I think overall um, it's really good result for the team and everyone demonstrating a good job. And looking ahead now to Orlando, you're in a really good spot for the championship, having won both main events, won a lot of heat races as well. What's your mindset going into that one? Well, I want to make this year three out of three finals. Last year I tried, but Marin didn't let me, me do that. So maybe this year I can. I will do my best to make that possible. And yeah. All right, well, we'll see what happens in Orlando. We'll see if Marion can be a bit faster and make it a little bit of a duel up there. But in the meantime, Mateus Morgado, you're round two Rock GP winner. Back to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Emery, here. And again, forgot about that, actually. That's my mistake. Uh, Cameron Weinberg got his uh, a big time win at Orlando uh, last year and went there. So for Mateus Morgado, that's about as close as he'll get to a home racetrack uh, down over there. And uh, then here we've got his teammate, Diego Ramos, down, who is, uh, again, just looked a little bit kind of deflated at the end of that one. Yeah, he ends up P4. Tough race. Diego Ramos. Diego, you had a pretty good start to the race. We're up in second, but kind of as we've seen throughout the weekend, just maybe a little bit off of what Mateus and Blake were able to do over the course of a 16-lap main event. It kind of exacerbated itself. Just walk me through your race as a whole and where you kind of felt like it slipped away. Uh, for sure, the race in the beginning uh, was good. I, I had a really good start. 
But I feel like frustrated because in the warm up I had the speed, the same the Morgado. And after we changed the tires for the final, the speed disappeared. You know, like I, I try 150% to be at the front, but and then I just going like lose and lose the speed. Uh, I had no grip, and like this, I feel like frustrated because uh, you just need to be like luck with the tires, you know, and this is not good for the competition. For sure, and looking ahead, obviously PSL even without the race that you maybe want, had wanted, you guys still had a really good weekend, top three throughout the all pretty much every session up until the final. Obviously, you mentioned the tires having a negative impact on that, but still a lot of pace. What you can what can you take away from this one? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I just uh, would say uh, like for my team, they work like a lot. Uh, they did the, the car perfect today in the warm up. I feel like I felt like weight confidence. The my engine build idea also the engine was amazing. Uh, just not luck with the tires. All right, Diego Ramos, unfortunate in the final, just did not quite have what he needed under him, but still a solid P4 result for him. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Emery, there. That was Diego Ramos, and I believe we've got one more after that one, if I'm not mistaken, before we clean up uh, and uh, wrap our morning uh, sessions. But, uh, yeah, Diego Ramos, you can hear the frustration in his voice, uh, no doubt, for uh, not getting to where he uh, wanted to be. But... At the end of it all there, he was uh, in a battle coming to the checkered flag with Nolan Bauer, who had to come from way back to even crack the top five. Got to fourth for all of about maybe two corners. And uh, let's hear from inside of it. Nolan Bauer had a great drive forward there in that one. Emery? Yeah, here with Nolan Bauer. Nolan, you started way back there on the grid. You got up to about 14th at the end of lap number one. And over the course of the rest of the race, worked yourself to where you were battling right there with Connor Zilch and Diego Ramos for a top five. Walk me through how you did it. Uh, well, we changed the chassis up. Uh, going into morning warm-up, we had the hard seat in, and uh, it wasn't really working out, so we changed it up. And um, in the final, the car came alive. Like, we went new tires, and immediately we knew we had pace, so I was like, I have to capitalize on it. So, you know, we, uh, overall, uh, Prime Power Team did an amazing job. Like, Trevor Wickens and my mechanic, Kenneth O'Keefe, like, overall, just absolutely amazing weekend. So, going into Orlando, we're going to be pushing for another podium, if not top five for sure. Yeah, and talking about going to Orlando, obviously you guys found a lot of momentum over the course of the weekend. Really just kind of got put everything together in the final. Does that give you a lot of extra confidence heading to the final rounds? Oh, absolutely. You know, we, uh, we know we have pace now, so we're coming and we're, uh, we're going to go for a podium this time. All right, Nolan Bauer, probably the standout performance in terms of going through the field in the final. He goes all the way from the back row, almost to the top five, and he will be looking forward for another strong run in Rock GP heading into Orlando. Back to Xander in the booth. Thanks, Emery. That'll wrap up our morning coverage, ladies and gentlemen. Live from Loxachi, Florida at the PK Race Park Entertainment Complex here. Uh, we'll be, uh, oh, we got one more. No, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken. We've got one more barrel art driver before we wrap things up. Let's go ahead and send it to uh, one that maybe didn't have uh, the best of days. Marian Crummers is down with Emery. Yeah, Marian, why didn't you win? Um, Xander, not the best of days so far. I'm planning on doing something else later this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I had to start 20th after that pre-final, so um, I knew it was going to be tough, and then I had a really good start. The first half of the lap was amazing. I think I was up to P10 or 11, and then um, dropped the chain, unfortunately, which is a, a big shame. I mean, the team worked very hard for me to be out there. Um, I was my own mechanic for most of the week, and then I finally got a mechanic this uh, yesterday, which helped me out a lot, and then um, I made him work a lot in the heats and the pre-final that I did, so um, thank you to, for my mechanic. Uh, thank you to the team for putting me out there, AM Engines for uh, giving me a great engine and uh, having me, giving me the uh, power to win. Um, unfortunately, I didn't really uh, deliver this week. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll uh, get another chance next time. Yeah, and real quickly, to kind of sort of hammer home the point about being your own mechanic throughout the weekend, I mean, obviously you were running two classes all weekend long. This format kind of makes it a bit easier with having the lunch break and everything before you get set for the shifter stuff. But throughout the week, I mean, having to work on your own stuff, then go out there and race it. Just talk to me about the mental challenges that presented over the course of the weekends. Um, yeah, it just it's very challenging. It's mentally very challenging. You have to think about um, setting up the go-kart, making sure you tighten everything and don't forget anything like that. And then you have to go out there and race for 10-plus um, laps or whatever it is. So uh, it's hard. 
It's tough. This track's very physical. Um, the bumps really don't help. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it on the stream, but like my arms are black and bruised, and the rest of my body is too. So um, yeah, it's tough. Uh, I can't wait for the two weeks that I've get, I get to like lay down a little bit and relax, and uh, then we will be back for Orlando for uh, a whole month. All right, you running Rock GP down in Orlando? Uh, I don't know yet. We'll have to talk about that with PSL. I'll definitely be in Shifter. Um, I'll be in USPKS Shifter, Pro Tour Shifter. So um, we'll see. Maybe I'll do some single speed here and there. Yeah, if you are, try not to hit Mateus this time. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. I don't want him to win three main events in a row before I can do it. So uh, I might have to challenge him for the win in Orlando. All right, well, uh, Marian Kremers, a solid weekend in Shifter, obviously, but Rock GP just wasn't seeing an amazing half a lap and then broke a chain. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Emery here, Marian Kremers. Like you said, not the best of days yet. Expected something good. He rolls off from the pole in the main event to close off the afternoon here from PK Race Park. Once again, we're back live at 1.20 p.m. local time, 10.20 a.m. Uh, Pacific. We'll see you then here as we'll keep the stream up and going with the first of our main events of the afternoon, Rock GP Masters.
welcome back from lunchtime. What a fine afternoon we have here in Los Tahatchee, Florida. Thank you all for this great turnout. An amazing event here. Round two, Rough Cup. Please remember the situation of the parking. The people that are parked on the outside of the park and the rented parking, those vehicles need to be removed before 9 p.m. Buenas tardes a todos y gracias a todos por tremendo evento aquí en Los Ajaxi, Florida. La gente de Pique Race Park poniendo tremendo evento. Muchas gracias, la gente de Rock Cup. Recuerden todos la situación del parking, el parking que está afuera del parque. Si su vehículo está allí, debe removerlo antes de las 9 de la noche. Muchas gracias. Up next, we got Rob Masters to the grid. Rob Masters to the grid.
Guys, once again, thank you all for this amazing turnout. Round two of the Rock Cup. Also, if you want to, if you would like to practice, we will have an open practice day on Tuesday. Tuesday, the track will be open for open practice. Also, remember the situation with the parking. If you're parked outside of the park, remember that parking closes at 9 p.m. So all vehicles from that property got to be removed. Thank you.
Welcome back here to Loxahatchee, Florida and the PK Race Park here for round number two of the Rock Florida Winter Tour. I'm Emery Wyatta and this is the final set of finals here on Sunday afternoon. It's main event time. First, we've got one more warm up to do. You can see the VLR Master guys are finishing up their final session and then we will get into the Rock, the second part of the day you've got rock micro in this session you've got k you've got the rock master also coming up you got rock junior as well and then finishing off the day the main event the premier class rock shifter where you'll see marion Kermers up on the front row they're getting set to go out for their warm-up in just a minute here in the meantime it's been an exciting morning so far we've had a lot of good races coming coming to mind you've got obviously the main event Mateus Morgado rounding out the morning with a, another victory in the Rock Senior category. We've also seen guys like Elio Meza get on the podium in that category. And then Ernesto Rivera, the dominant showing that he had at VLR Jr. Wes Duchak getting his first ever national victory aboard his RPG Cosmic in VLR Senior. And this afternoon, we might be having some rain. You see the clouds up above this beautiful sports complex here. Showing that it might get a little bit windy at a minimum. Maybe see some rain going on later on. It's been a beautiful day so far. Temperatures in the mid to high 70s. Almost cracked 80. You've seen a lot of sunshine throughout this weekend. We've been very fortunate. At the start of the weekend, it looked like it might be all rain the entire weekend. And thankfully, it's been the complete opposite. So not much to complain there about the, the weather. As we now see the VR Master guys have finished up their warm-up session. Again, very quick and brief warm up before you get into the main event. It's only five minutes of warming up before we get going again. So each of the sessions today have had their five minute warm up and seeing a little bit of the weather forecast, it does look like it will be clear for the rest of the day, at least until we're done here. Maybe some afternoon showers for the pack up situation, but certainly all clear from what we can see so far. But again, the warm up session almost complete. The only guy to go through Rock Shifter. Again, Marion Kermers for the main event for that one. We'll start on pole position. Big storyline overnight was AJ Myers getting DQ'd. Uh, something that happened in post-race tag inspection. He was set to start on the second position as such. He'll have to start all the way from the back of the grid. Other storylines in that year is you got Jock Conker coming back to the field a little bit. He'll start inside the top three. Also got guys like Colin Daly up there. Vincenzo Saracino will start outside or inside the top four. Giorgio Carrera, who has kind of had a rough run through the heats, will start on the outside of the front row. There you're going to look at some of the guys going out on the track. There's Josh Conker passing through the camera. AJ Myers coming through turn three and four. And yeah, I mean, you can see this rock rock shifter category has been electric all weekend. It's been the dominant force all season long. There is Colin Daly for his DR cart. You can see him making a return from Jamaica. His first full-time senior shifter race in almost a year for him. So it has been a while to be Daly. He's been pretty good this weekend inside the top six for the majority of the time. Just to find a little bit more pace. So we now continue to follow him through that back here. But again, Daly, a very nice starts the week if nothing else it's good for him to get seat time back here again so there we go completing his warm-up lap again only five minutes in length is this session so it's going to be going by pretty quick probably only going to get about four representative laps from this session and again it's more than they got yesterday because yesterday they didn't have any warm-up but still good to see there's josh conquer as well as Giorgio Carrera, or er, yeah Giorgio Carrera there in the turn five heading into tar turn number six. Both of those guys are set to stop in your top three. You see Carrera there, let's conquer go. Josh Conquer yesterday, looks like he was about 10th or two off. He seemed very confident in his chassis. Felt like they were gonna get on a bet, little bit of a better set of tires heading into today for the final. So that'll be interesting to watch, but certainly the Marinello machine of Josh Conquer has been quick this weekend. And then you see him rolling down around the final hairpin coming up onto the final bend into the main straightaway. Again, this track has brought up some really good action. 15 corners along the track. A lot of tight, at, tight spots in it. Kind of makes for some difficult rough racing. There's a look at Vincenzo Saracino. And there's the man that will have to start from the tail of the field in the final. AJ Myers. We've seen him work from the back of the field before. Most recently at Homestead going from last to second in the Scusa Winter Series. This is a different beast. A tighter track. Not a lot of passing opportunities, and A.J. Myers aboard the Magic Cart 
for Magic Kart USA is going to have a lot of work to do. It's had the pace this weekend, but still going to have to do a lot in a shorter amount of time, 16 laps of distance of the main event. So that's AJ as he continues to get just a little bit of a look. There's Marion Kremers, the quickest so far on this track. He's won two of the three heats. He won the pre-final. Was able to pass AJ early on after losing the whole shot initially. He has been probably the man to beat in pro shifter. His pace in the pre-final was sensational. Almost four tenths clear of the field in terms of lap time there. So Marion Kremers, again, he has been the dominant force. We saw him and Rock Sr. have a little bit of a rough go, but obviously crashed on the opening lap, but certainly... Kremers is going to be interesting to watch. Getting a look at some of our other competitors here. So now come down the main straightaway. There is one of the storylines of the weekend. Vincenzo Saracino, top three in pace for a lot of the weekend. Obviously had the bumper bowl come loose in heat number one. That kind of thwarted a really good run from Vincenzo. In the pre-final, he looked like he was set for another top three finish. Got passed by Josh Conker right at the end. So Conker kind of stole that spot from him. But since Saracino's had some pretty good pace, and if we look at the pace so far, he's third on the list, now make it fifth as Colin Daly and or, and Josh Conker go through as Giorgio Correra sets a good lap. So Mario Kremers, again, has been the main point, but Vincenzo Saracino has had a really good run reward his privateer TV cart effort. Again, small operation for Vincenzo. He's been kind of a two-man show here with his, just him and his dad running on that TV cart. And he has had the pace so far this weekend. As Jan Torino goes purple at 51-006. First time we've seen him up at the front this weekend. If he's closed in on the last minute of practice, the number 488 machine of Jan Torino puts himself on P1 as Conquer and Carrera go. There's a look at Torino. Yesterday for Torino, had some pretty good pace at various points. Worked his way from the back of the field to the midfield, but just was not able to put it together. So Torino goes fastest. Kramers is still in P2. Hunter Pickett is in third for his, his PSL Burrell art. I talked to him at the end of yesterday. They felt like they were just lacking just a little bit, but he's consistently gotten faster throughout the weekend. Just like in St. Pete, we saw on Sunday he was fighting for a main event victory. We'll see if we can do that again. There's Pickett coming into the pit lane. You just barely see him. He's doing a practice start there. He'll roll off inside the top six, I believe in sixth position. See another couple guys doing their practice starts. Some of them waiting for the checkered flag here as we get set to finish up warm up onto the final couple seconds here. Yeah, this pro shifter category, you've seen a lot of faces in the top six throughout the weekend, but it's been Marion Kermers at the front. And this morning, warm up here second quick again. Yano Torino goes purple, Kramer's second, Hunter Pickett in third, Giorgio Carrera fourth, Vincenzo Saracino in fifth. And that's going to wrap up morning warm-up. The final lap's being brought down. No one really improving. And it's about that time to get going into main event action. You see this final couple of standing starts. Josh Conker on the grid. They're getting set to go. He'll be one of the guys to go off. But until then, it's going to be a couple of hours till we see your rock shifter category out there. So Giano Torino gets his day off. Started out nicely in the morning warm-up as he goes purple here in senior shifter. Coming up next, it's main event time. We've got the Rock Masters, the Rock Micro, Rock Junior, VLR Master, and Rock Shifter all coming up next live on Car Chaser.
Welcome back here to Loxahatchee, Florida, as we get set for your national anthem or for your main events. It's Rock Master time, but before we get into all of the racing and all of the fun action coming up next, it's time for the playing of your national anthem. In session, it's finals Sunday here in Florida at the Florida Winter Tour for the 25th year, wrapping things up for the second leg here in Loxahatchee, Florida at the PK Entertainment and Race Center. Looking forward to some fun racing this afternoon. Of course, uh, track's going to be awfully hot. Sun is out, beating down on it, so uh, these folks will definitely need to make sure that they are uh, plenty of hydration going on down there because it's going to be one hot one here in the afternoon session for our, our groups. But uh, that's the least of their worries. They still got to get out there and battle against this track. So, Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch. Obviously, 84 degree or temperatures right now. That is about as hot as we've seen it all weekend long. Yep. A lot of humidity in the air. Again, we saw clouds briefly. We'll see if that kind of makes it a little bit easier uh, for the drivers this afternoon. But certainly, I mean, this has been a grueling weekend for a lot of guys, especially the guys that are running double duty. I mean, again, a lot of the junior guys we'll see in a few minutes have been really running through this throughout the weekend. I mean, they already ran VLR Junior. Now they're running Rock Junior. Again, guys like Stephen Miller had to pull out because of a rib injury. We'll see him at the back of the grid of Rock Junior later today. Other guys in Rock Masters and VLR Master, they've obviously putting a lot of stress on a body that maybe hasn't been running as much competitive racing as of late doing this a little bit more as a pastime. So it's going to be interesting to watch how drivers are able to hold up. I mean, this has been an exciting weekend so far. We've seen a lot of good races on this track, but it is going to be interesting to watch because we've seen as well as that kind of the race of attrition and then Masters. I mean, it's going to be interesting to watch. Obviously, there's this grid's been pretty, uh, pretty competitive. I mean, Mike Rollison went right away, won the first seat, but hasn't been seen since. Don't <laughs> think he or Mario Barrios are racing today. So that's been a storyline that's worth noting. Renato Jader David has kind of found his rhythm. He's been fast this weekend <laughs> and certainly is going to be one to watch with him. Isaiah Takaro Nakamori's been fast. Andre Nicastro. Nicastro is dominant down in St. Petersburg this weekend. He's had moments where he's looked really fast, hasn't necessarily had the consistency, had a couple of scuffles in the heat race. As they get set to head out onto the racetrack, we'll see what they can do. There is a look at Dutter DeVita aboard the Orsalon racing machine. Got a number of fast cars in this category. And Ron John, 
I'm excited for this one. 16 yeah, laps of distance. And Renato Yader David made such a great move yesterday on William Isaiah's coming through turn number 12, heading for 13, able to get around him, made a great pass, ended up taking that afternoon uh, victory for Renato. And so Renato is on the pole, the 625, the Orsalon racing driver. It's William Isaiah's, the 627 up next on the outside pole, Takahuri Nakamori in the 616. In the third spot, Andre Nicastro up next in the 628. Alex Mueller will roll off outside of Andre in the 621. It's Martin Stone up next, the 606. David LaPlante in the 684. David Waite rolls off in the 617. It's Pablo Savalas in the 630. Alfonso Santiago in the 611. Daniel Robertson in the 604. Scotty Carapalotti in the uh, Carapalotti, that is, in the 602. Sylvain Colombi in the 681. And I don't think we'll see uh, Mike Rollison and, and perhaps Mario Barrios. We'll have to just wait and see, take a look out there as they get ready to come around for the first time. Getting all formed up, getting ready to take, kick off our afternoon session. Finals for the leg number two of the three-leg Florida Winter Tour. And like I said, we're here in Lockahatchee, Florida at the PK Entertainment and Race Facility. And here we go, folks. Green flag is out and we are racing. I say that I look out there, I actually see the uh, uh, yellow lights are flashing on the, so I think they're gonna, gonna go, around go ahead one and more scrub, time. That, uh, scrub that start, get them to come back around. Just not exactly where they wanted them. You can see there, I mean, just looked to be a pretty clean start, but there was something I guess that kind of Bade Justin Dittrich and the rest of the Rock officials decide no go on that one. So we'll send him back around, re rack the top order, and see if we can't get a better start going on this one. So Ronaldo Jader, Daughter David obviously aboard the Orsalon Racing Machine. William Isaiah aboard the International Motorsports Cart. You've got Takahoro Nakamori aboard the Super Tune OTK. Andre Nicastro, the REM OTK. Alex Mueller as well as aboard an OTK. So a lot of OTKs there in that third to seventh range, or third to sixth range. David Laponte, we saw him have a bit of an issue in one of the heat races yesterday. But he's had a fair bit of pace aboard the premier karting entry. So, I mean, there's a lot of fast karts out there. And I think Nick Castro, Martin Stone in the REM machine is going to be fast as well. But we'll see. So they get ready to go. Renard Jedevide, William Isaiah, the two front row guys after Mike Rawlson left. We'll see what happens. They are getting set to go. This time we got it. Green flag. Renault Javidivian already goes wide to cut him off as they come into turn one. You see one cart going way off into the barriers there. That looked to be one of the entries in the back of the field. Not oh, sure goodness. exactly the number on that. That might have been uh, one of the Formula K carts. I don't know. That might be Sylvia Columbia aboard the premier karting entry. Not entirely sure on that one. But it's yeah, it was kind of hard to tell there just based on his helmet when he popped up, but we'll keep an eye on it and see if uh, as that number obviously will drop down the list here. Yeah, it looks like Alfonso Santiago was also involved in that in the Orsaw machine. He's dropped back to the back of the, the grid as well. As we now see coming into the second to last hairpin, you can see it is Renato Jotter David leading the race in second position there. Looks like Nakashiro has found his way up into the third spot. Then he'll come across to complete lap number one. Takahiro Nakamori is into second. Nakashiro to third. William Isaiah down to fourth. Martin Stone in the fifth position. It was David White aboard the Racework, Racework CAF karting uh, Formula K kart that did all, go off on that opening lap. As we see a pass, potential pass for the fourth position there. Heading into turn number five. You can see Nicastro, or, uh, Martin Stone made a look down the inside of William Isaiah. Could not make it stick. Isaiah is going to have some work to do. We've seen him all weekend. Has been able to challenge Renato Jotter to beat. But in this race so far, a poor start from him. He got swamped up by Nicastro and by Nakamori. And now he's going to have quite a bit of work to do here over the next few laps. Yeah, William right now in that fourth position. Takahuri, uh, Nakamori, that is, Takahuru is uh, doing really, really well. Very, very fast in that super tune cart. At one point there, he was sitting in the second position, but Andre Nicastro has gotten around him. The REM driver, the Brazilian, now up into second. Looking to try to run down Renato Yader David out there in front. The 625 of Renato with a 
to a 53-4 of the second place driver, Andre Nicastro. But Andre now starting to stretch it out just a little bit over that third place driver of Takahuru. Yeah, you can see Nakamori's got William Isaiah all over him there. Again, Isaiah trying to get what he can out of this one. We saw him start on the outside front row. He's been the fastest cart for really the last three or four sessions, but now going to have some work to do. Nakamori continues to hang on aboard the Super 2 to OTK entry as they now come to complete lap number three. Renault RJ to the beat. Another purple lap briefly, but Andre De Castro resets fast time of 53.011. He's got 1.2 seconds. This is as close to the lead as he's been all weekend long. And now De Castro aboard the REM OTK Cosmic Cart has some work to do still. He's not in the clear yet. He's still only about six minutes ahead of Nakamori. 1.2 seconds back from Jada David, but certainly encouraging from the guy who dominated round one in St. Petersburg. Yeah, no kidding. And I tell you what, Andre is definitely making up some of that ground on, on Renato as he goes. Uh, it's 1.2 seconds, but it doesn't look like that out on the track. As you look at, look at him on the track, it's only probably about 15 car lengths back to him. As I look, they're just now, Renato just now coming through turn number 14, heading on to 15. He'll come through the sweeper there and head down the front stretch once again. Let's see what kind of change we had there. A 52.7 to a 53 flat, so he was a little bit faster, picked up a couple of tenths. So Andre Nicastro still in that second position, Takahuri Nakamori in third, but it's Orsalon racing. Renato Yader David out there in front in the 625. Four laps down of the 16, it's the first final of the afternoon for our master rockers here at the Florida Winter Tour in beautiful Loxahatchee, Florida. I know we've been talking a little bit about the possible weather but it doesn't look like that's gonna be here until later on this evening. So we should be able to get everything through here with no liquid sunshine. Yeah, this has been really beautiful weather all weekend long. We're very thankful for us. We see a battle for the third spot down the inside. William Isaiah, then down, Takao Nakamori tried to cross him over, could not get it done. So Isaiah with a strong move through the turn 13 hairpin gets himself into the third position. Now, three seconds back from our Jotter David. One could argue that the damage has already been done. Because Jotter David's been up at the front running purple lap time after purple lap time. And that's five laps that Isaiah's lost behind some slower traffic there. Nakamori got a good start. He's looked pretty good all weekend long, but now just does not have the pace to run with the guys like Jotter David. And now William Isaiah will set his sights on Andre De Castro, who's about a second ahead of him up the road. And you can see. Trying to bring Nakamori with him. So far through Apple Lab, Nakamori's doing a nice job of hanging with him. Also in the background there, Martin Stone run out the top five. You also got Alex Mueller about a second and a half back from Stone. He's kind of been on his own running that OTK privateer entry, and he's trying his best to stay alive here. He's got a lot of work to do. Pace hasn't quite been what it needs to be, but he's doing his best. A 53-2 that last time by Zala complete another lap. Dar David pulled another two tenths up on Castro that last time through. Isaiah, a 52-9. So Castro is not, the Castro is not quite able to match what Jada David's doing, and Isaiah is still closing in on the Castro. He's going to have to do quite a bit of work there to get up through and catch Andre De Castro for that second position. All right, so got 10 laps to go here. Lap number six in the bank. They come around the bank lap number seven. But as you had mentioned, you still the Castro still got some work to do. About two seconds right now out in front of him is Renato Yader David an international champion, and of course, a several time winner of the Florida Winter Tour. I believe I've handed him the trophy at least three times myself, so he's definitely a multiple time winner here. He's one of those drivers that uh, just is so consistent, so fast. Now, hey, you know, like, like most drivers, he's not absolutely perfect all the time. Uh, he's, he's made some mistakes this weekend as well. But uh, he's a tough he's a tough guy to have to catch and pass, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Jotter David is probably the most accomplished driver out here in this field, and certainly he's had a lot of experience running high-level races, big time. And the Orsalon racing guys, I mean, they do a good job too. I mean, you've got we've seen this weekend. They've also got Antonio Pizzonia Jr. in right. the Rock Master Shifter right. category. He's been doing an outstanding job there, and I mean, Pizzonia Jr.'s. One, again, one of the most accomplished, experienced drivers in the racing paddock, in 
karting in general, but especially here at Rock, at the Rock Florida Winter Tour. I mean, Pazonia Jr., Daughter to be these guys are guys that you can really build a team off of, and we've seen them have a lot of success so far. Could all hit the halfway point, eight laps down, eight more to go. Daughter to beat a stretch his lead out to two and a half seconds up at the front of the field. Andre De Castro continues to run in second. You've seen the battle for fourth just behind William Isaiah, so you can barely see him on the screen. Third, fourth, and fifth there. Isaiah has about a seven or 1.3 second gap back to Takaru Nakamori, Martin Stone in the fifth position. Although I think in that last stop, Isaiah has kind of made a little bit of a bobble there because there's no way Nakamori is that far back from um, Isaiah. As you can see, the top three all kind of, or the third through fifth guys all sort of bunching up together. And you can see Isaiah continue to stretch that about six, seven car lengths back to Nakamori. It's just been slowly pulling away that gap. That last time through a 53-2, this time a 53-0. He pulled another tenth or so. Now there's a look at the back of Martin Stone coming into turn number one. Stone's had a good race. Yeah, Martin's actually starting to make up a little bit of that ground there on Takahori. Yeah. You see, um, and you're right, Isaiah has uh, managed to get out there in front of him and has absolutely gapped him a little bit, probably about a good 10 carts, perhaps. And that's probably yeah. being a little... Yeah, I mean, Martin Stone might be a little bit... Um, my, he struggled a little bit over the course of the season so far, but certainly one of the more, more accomplished master drivers you'll Absolutely. find. REM, again, he's on the OTK. His teammates with uh, Andre De Castro, And so far this weekend, he was a little bit off throughout the weekend, but in this final, he's found a bit of pace, and he's not quite going to be able to match what his teammates are doing up there. But still, Takahiro Nakamori, not invincible at all in that fourth spot. And that last stop, Stone pulled off another half a tenth. You see he's about two, three cart lengths back. He's pulling kind of a little bit of a wider line through a lot of these corners. You see coming through turn three and four there, watch his exit on turn one and turn three and four, and you'll see he's running. Just that, he's using just a little bit more track on that exit. There on the entrance into the sweeper, you don't see it quite as much, but on the exit, he's getting everything out of that cart using the curves on the end, exit of six into seven. Missed the apex a little bit into turn seven, but still, I mean, Martin Stone getting a lot out of that REM cosmic car and just trying his best to close that gap just a little bit more on the super tune of Takahiro yeah, Nakamori. Definitely, definitely going to take him some work to get up there, not only just to catch him, but to get back around him. In the meantime, uh, you know, one of the cool things about this race is a lot of folks standing along the fence line here, right on the track, and couldn't help but notice uh, uh, Antonio Pazonia Jr. Stick, sticking his head out there and stretching his arms out and letting no Renato Yeter David know hey, you've got a pretty good gap there. Yeah, I wonder if that's something they coordinated beforehand. I mean, we I've talked to a number of drivers on this. Me personally, whenever I race, I do not look at the side. No. I used to, and I got told not to, and so ever since right. then I haven't. But I know a lot of guys will have their mechanics or their tuners or even other drivers under the tent stand on the sideline and kind of give hand signals. Yeah. And, I mean, in the case of... Jared David, it could be useful to know the gap. Keeps him from looking back unnecessarily. Sure. Obviously, we saw it earlier today with Mateus Morgado. You could see him sort of run. Um, he was running well. Um, a couple of the Burrell Art guys were giving the hand signals. Yesterday, Marion Kremers had the same thing go on where Morgado and Ramos were giving him hand signals telling him how far back uh, A.J. Myers was. And, I mean, you're seeing it now with Jared David and the Orsalan boys, including Antonio Pizzonio Jr. So it's good to see. It's good to see. Jotter David has done really well. He's got a three-second gap already. We focus in on William Isaiah in the third position. He's had a pretty quiet race since the poor start. Kind of by himself, he's pulled out an eight-tenth of a second gap on Takaru Nakamori. He's got a second and a half to pull up to Andre De Castro. Only four laps to do. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen, but still, Isaiah can take quite a bit from this weekend. Again, down in St. Petersburg, he was right there with De Castro for certain portions of the weekend. Here in... Uh, in Rock Master, we've seen him run at, cer at certain times, the fastest on the track. Obviously, one pull position, almost won the pre-final. Just needs to kind of put it together for a full weekend. I think if he can do that, he'll be in a good shape come Orlando. Yeah, the International Motorsports driver has had a pretty doggone good weekend this weekend. Again, still continues to battle for uh, an opportunity to win the Florida Winter Tour, which will wrap things up next month. Next, next month as we head back into the state of Florida, the fir third and final leg of the Florida Winter Tour will be in Orlando at the Orlando Karting Center 
Look forward to revisiting our friends up in Orlando. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that Orlando track again here at Car Chaser, we're going to three events and four weekends to cover. You can see Scusa, the Scusa Pro Tour wraps that up. At the start of it, it's going to be the first round of the United States Pro Guard Series with the Florida Winter Tour finale here, as we mentioned, coming to Orlando in between those two events. So a big, big opportunity to run a number of consecutive weekends at that beautiful facility. We'll see how that turns out. Obviously, Orlando, one of the premier tracks on the national circuit, going to be the first time joining, visiting there this year outside of a little bit of road tax action as well. So you see now heading down to two ops to go. You've got Renato Jenner David continuing to lead up at the front. Three seconds back to Andre De Castro. He has been dominant. Just so smooth. Uh oh, the 606. 606 having an issue That's right there. Stone. That's Martin Stone. Ah, Stone had had a good race. He was close to Takahoro Nakamori. Now he's going to have a lot of work. Obviously, he's out of the race with only one and a bit laps remaining. So rough into the weekend for Martin Stone. He had done so well in this final, and now it's yeah, he had made his, his way all the way up into that Wait. fifth position, just not quite able to hang yeah. on. And whatever it was, it's obviously very unfortunate. We've got, uh, we got one a, lap to go here. We got a little bit of a timing issue there. I think Renato Dederdevi was not picking up time. We can clearly see he's on the right. track leading right. the race. So. A little we'll, bit strange we'll there. We'll wait for him to come back around. Yeah, we'll wait. It should be fine, but certainly strange situation. I mean, uh, Andre De Castro in the second position. William Isaias will take a podium spot in third as well. We get a look at Pablo Savoyas, who is the teammate to Jotter David. Not picking up Jotter David here. We'll see as they come to get the checkered full. It's action. showing him in. He pull in. This is. No, I'm looking uh, out there. I don't think so. I think Nicastro just won the race. I think so too. Bam! That was very interesting. I, I, I did. never did locate him out on the track. Obviously, talking a lot about him, he had a, a big lead there. But it looks like something obviously we, had happened to uh, we were, to Renato Yader David, and so Andre Nicastro. We had picked up uh, Pablo Savoyas after yeah. after the. Um, Martin Stone retirement and then suddenly you look down on the timing screen and Jotter David's pulled into the pits so I don't know what's up with that but something obviously had happened to his cart but Andre Nicastro right place right time he had a good race from fourth to second and then takes the win so yeah. a big win for the REM boys again Martin Stone was not able to finish the race but Andre Nicastro picks up the pieces wins here in the Rock Master category, William Isaias takes it up to second position. Takaro Nakamori gets on the podium for Super Tune. How about Alex Mueller in fourth? A solid run for the Privateer. And David Lapante aboard the Premier Carding Barrel Art rounds out your top five as we will head into a quick break here and be right back for your Rock Micro category. 13 laps of distance as they get set to go for their final here on Car Chaser.
Welcome back here to PK Race Park. And we are here for the Micro Rock Final. 14 laps of distance there. Sorry, I shortcut them for one lap. Again, getting set to go. Antonio Pozzonio Neto will start on pole position. A couple clarifying notes here. We did get word that Ronaldo Jader David did blow a chain heading to the white flag. So really difficult break for him. Unfortunate. <laughs> Andre De Castro again, right place, right time. He gets himself in the race winning position and wins there in Rock Masters. While we have this little bit of lull in the action, I think it's important to talk about how good of a weekend this has been for a lot of drivers. Think about Ernesto Rivera and Rock Jr. We'll see him coming up next. Antonio Pazonia has had a very strong run across both micro and mini. He gets that to start on pole position there aboard the Ar Orsalon machine. And again, Pazonia moving up to mini. It's a big jump, but he has been sensational. Has opportunity to pick up two podiums and two classes, which is a rare feat for someone as young as he is. No, Yeah, no doubt. And he's been really strong. He definitely has the cart to do it. He'll just have to make the moves and put himself in a position to be able to take the victory. Again, Antonio Pizzonia Nito, the Ursulon Racing driver, the number 73, will be on the pole. Again, we'll be going 14 laps in this final for our micros. Zanella Racing, Gavin Decay. What a great run for Gavin, all the way up into the second position and starting in the 75. Maxwell Macha up next, the SLA driver in the 33. Hudson Jack Erline and the Canadian in the number four. It's Josh Bergman up next, the PK Sports driver in the number 44, Juan Diego Garcia Stavila in the number 36, Nico Orbezo. Nico in the number 58, Colton Scheinenberg in the number 17, uh, Yao Paolo uh, Bondman in the number 27, Matthias Romalo in the 16, Alex Chandler in the number 26, Lorenzo Varela in the 64. It's Lucas Ferreira up next in the number three. Dominic Mox Moscalinko in the number one. Zane Burgess, 55. Nicholas LaRusso in the 99. Santiago Diaz de la Vega in the number 37. Lucan Brusella. It looks like uh, nice to see Xander down there on the, on the grid. Looks like maybe he'll get a talk or something yeah. with that. Yeah, I mean, he's sporting the beautiful KC merch. You can yep. go to the merch tent right now, set up over by the grid. You can see quite a bit of shirts there. We've got Las Vegas apparel. We've got yeah. the vertical shirt that you've seen for me on the interviews really nice. You've right. got the normal KC logo shirt. Got some hats. Got some beanies. Got some windbreakers. I mean, so much nice merch all under the KC merch booth. So if you have not checked that out this weekend, go ahead, see it out there. It's really nice, and you will be sure to find all of your KC apparel <laughs> needs, both in the merch booth and online. But for now, go check out that beautiful booth. Absolutely. Nothing like plugging ourselves, huh? Uh, speaking of that, speaking of doing things like that, let's go ahead and take a quick little break here and um, actually mention our, our sponsors because they've done a phenomenal job with our group here. Uh, obviously, Rock Cup USA, our friends at Vortex, the Levanto Cart Tires, which has been interesting this week. OMP, Eni Oil, Sunoco Race Fuels, and of course, all of our sponsors, all of our teams, all of our mechanics, all the families. Just can't say enough for all of you, and thank you so much for coming out here and being a part of this great race for the Florida Winter Tour and a championship. Uh, we'll get to see that next month in Orlando at the Orlando Karting Center. Looking forward to that. A great turnout here at the PK entertainment and race facility as we get ready to go micro final rocking right here 14 laps yeah out on the cat uh, they're just now rolling out onto the track emery yeah antonio pizzonia again starting on pole he's been good throughout the weekend maybe not as much raw paces we got one stuck on the grid there can't quite get the number on that that might be let's see it's not gavin decay he's clearly out and about <laughs> There's another one. Got another one out too. Out there as well. There's two guys that have been stuck on the grid. Let's we'll see if we can't get a number down the grid. That might have been Hudson Jack Girl, and I'm not entirely sure on the number. But the cart livery looked eerily similar. So we'll see if we can get him. Yeah, I think that might have been Hudson Jack Girl and Slater okay. to start off in the four spot. We'll get confirmation I on that. I think he was, sure. was he able to get it back off and running? Uh, they, they left that shot, so I'm not really sure whether or not he was able to get going. Let me quickly run down a couple more names here just to make mention of them, seeing how they're here racing. Number 18, Leo De Silva. It's Asher Pavin in the number 54, Rafael Canaeus in the number 52, Sebastian De Mosaic in the number 23, my buddy George Ho. The little G in the number five, Jaden Francisco in the 13, Aiden Cushion in the number 80. It's Melvis Dos Santos in the 57, Dominic 
Dominico, that is, Groupie in the number 98, and William Chalkett in the number 24. So, again, Antonio Pazonia Nito on the pole. Gavin Dete in the number 75 on the outside pole. Here we go. Hopefully we're going micro racing. Final 14 laps here. A little bit messy on the start that time, and they will wave it off as the hands go in the air. So yellow flags will go out, and we'll send them around one more time. So Antonio Pizzoni needs to in that Orsalon Racing number 73 parallel will bring the field around. How about Gavin Decay on the Zanella Racing entry? Uh, the uh, driver part of the new We Can All Race organization helping bring diversity into motorsports. Super cool program they've got going on over there. Uh, at uh, We Can All Race, uh, a very, very new charity, but uh, basically set up fully to help uh, kids from different backgrounds, help get us some girl drivers up the motorsports ladder, up to the national circuits. And Gavin Decay, one of the new drivers here with that brand new program, helping make it possible for him to make it uh, to a handful more races this year on that Zanella Racing Benick. So representing a whole lot of uh, bringing, again, a lot That's more exciting. color, a lot that more really walks is. of life. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just, a, again, a cool really really cool we can all race bring everybody in and and get us a lots of different uh faces and personalities into the sport so for more information on that stay tuned throughout the rest of this year but it's a really cool program to help again uh kids get a little bit more funding uh to move on up the motorsports ladder as for the motorsports ladder well antonio pizzoni nito has got about as good of a mentor as you can ask for to try and tell him what it need what he needs to do to figure out uh, to get around PK Race Park and to get a win. His father, Antonio Pizzonia Jr., already got the win. Here comes Pizzonia Nito to the lead into turn number one. He'll bring him down, and Maxwell Macho will follow through to second. Decay is going to get hung on the outside lane. Josh Bergman will get through for third. Man, look at him going four wide. <laughs> man, oh, man, did they fan out. You're just kind of holding your yes, breath here you through are. turns three and four. Can everybody wow. survive? Give room, boys and girls. We will get through cleanly here, and the Micro Rockers are underway as they head down to the PK Teardrop. Bergman for, or third, Decay is fourth, Then it's going to be the Orsalon Racing parallel of Juan Diego Garcia Davila rounding off the top five as they head through turn seven. But Antonio Pizzonianito gets away with the lead, and unlike the rest of the kids here, he's got double seat time running mini and micro in the age overlap here this weekend. And uh, he is, uh, again, in the championship contention really for both with a yeah. good run through the minis and especially here in micro as Garcia Davila goes through on Gavin Decay for fourth. Decay going to go a little narrow to turn 14, cover that one off. And just like that, we're off and rolling. Micro Rock will round the final turn. One lap down, 13 laps to go. Antonio Pizzonianito, your leader. And, man, we have got one long line of racers coming past the start finish for the first time and uh, Antonio out there in front getting ready to come uh, through turns number four and five and Maxwell Macha is all over him yes, in that SLA is. kart racing Parolin as well it's Parolin one and two and I think it's either a KR or it's a Dap Kart PK Sport North America uh, Kart Republic chassis in third but Maxwell Macha locked onto the rear bumper of Antonio Pizzonianito as they head through turn number seven they'll come out of seven here and climb up the S's up the hill through 8, 9, and 10, then go through that uh, left-hand kick at 11, the jump of the curb over at 12. For the Micros, they're going a little slower, a little bit more narrow go-karts. They can avoid that. We've seen a lot of drivers really launch over that thing. And out of turn 14, we'll come around the final corner, this time by two laps complete, 12 to go. No major changes up front. Big line of go-karts down the front straight away. Antonio Pizzonianito, still your leader over Maxwell Macha. Then back to third again. Garcia Davila, Josh Bergman, and we got contact further back. That's going to be Nico Orbezo in the 33 trying to hang, hang on over with uh, Yao Paolo Benadaman. Yeah, Benadaman right there as well, yes. So here they go back on in the infield again. Macha yet to pull a move for the lead. Garcia Davila, the driver on the move, is up three spots. Uh, from sixth up to third and closing in on the leaders. He was the quickest overall last time by. Yeah, Juan Diego's definitely been hustling, trying to make his way up there. In the meantime, they still continue to battle it out for that first position. Antonio Pizzonia Nito and Maxwell Macha right there battling it out, but it was Juan Diego Garcia Stavia with a 59 flat to a 59-4. It was the fastest cart out on the track that last time past the start finish here. At one point, it looked like we had a line of about 22 carts coming down the front stretch, all nose oh, to tail. This. They've got a little bit of a little bit of a split. We're going to have a pass here, going into turn number one. Looks like the 36 has gotten around to 33. So one, Diego Garcia's Divila now up into the second spot, dropping Maxwell Macha back into third. 
out of turn four. He'll now set his sights on his Orsel and Racing teammate. His Macha faded backwards a little bit, and we're seeing kind of two packs start to form. You got that front four, then that next group led by Hudson Jack Erlin. He's going to come under fire from Gavin Decay. Decay gets through on that Zanella Racing Benick. Moves himself back into the top five. More drivers looking to go forward. How about Yao Paolo Benadaman? Picks up another spot. The Orsalone drivers on the move here. First and second, and now up into sixth on the racetrack in this micro rock main. So now, here he goes for fifth. Yao Paolo Benadaman to the inside in turn 13. He'll get the job done on Gavin Decay. And Benadaman starts to try and march his way towards the leading group of four across the stripe. Three down, 11 to go. Antonio Pizzonianito continues to show the way down to turn one. But Yao Paolo Benadaman knocks off another couple tenths. Maxwell Mach on that SLA kart racing peril and continuing to close as well. Meantime, they're just now coming through turns. Number three heading for four. Down this little quick little run down here to a nice left-hander and down to the what we call the PK teardrop. Two drivers collected over here. That's the number 64 and I believe the number nine about a lap or two ago over in the infield of turn number four. Actually, might have been the number one of Dominic Moskalenko and Lorenzo Varela. The PK Sports and Goodwood Cartways oh, drivers colliding, but Brazil has had one heck of a day on a Brazilian-designed racetrack here at PK Race Park. Mateus Morgado, the winner. Antonio Pizzonia Sr., a winner. Andre Nicastro, a winner. And now it'll be a Brazil versus Brazil battle as Yao Paulo... Bal or, uh, Juan Diego Garcia Arstavila goes at it with Antonio Pizzonia Nito as we come across the stripe. Still Orsalone green and white cars first and second. SLA Car Racing's Maxwell Macha back in third. Close enough as they head through turn number one here with now five laps completed, nine laps to go. The four driver breakaway remains with Yao Paulo Benadaman, best of the rest, trying to close up. A little more passing for the lead will allow him to get there. He needs... Uh, Again, more shuffling. We got you teammates first and second. I don't imagine you see too much back and forth. For now, Pizzonianito is going to follow him into the PK teardrop. Quite interesting. Looking a little bit further back down, I couldn't help but notice the number 58 of Nico Orbezo. Got kicked a little high there going into turn number 14. Hand up. You know, letting everybody know something had gone on. Not too happy about it. That dropped him down at least six positions. Right yeah. now he resides in that 13th spot. So he's still got some work to do. Here comes Colton Schneegenberg on that GWR Energy to the inside of Gavin Decay. He'll get by him in turn 13. That is for seventh on the racetrack here for Colton Schneegenberg. So a uh, good move there as he kind of gets himself now one spot up from starting in the eighth position and digging towards the front. Six laps complete. Now here, eight laps to go in this 14-lap micro main event. Garcia Stavila over Pizzonia Nito. Macha and Bergman still uh, looking onwards there in third and fourth. Where did Yao pa Yo Paulo Benadaman's lap times go? He did a 59 flat. The leader's a 58.6. Hall in the mail is Juan Diego, uh, Gar Juan Diego Garcia Stavila. My goodness. Great run for the Mexican driver. My apologies there, Colin. Brazilian the Mexican <laughs> Juan Diego Garcia Stavila. Then the Brazilian of Antonio right. Pizzonia Nito. Brazil-based, uh, Brazilian-American race team with uh, Fabio Orsolone. Uh, lives out of Miami. Moved over here to the States maybe a decade or so and a half ago. And uh, was quickly respected as one of the top driver coaches in the country. Not long after that, launched his own race team, a driver development program. And now, again, they are a powerhouse race team, especially with the contingent they're able to bring to these Rock Cup Florida winter tours, top to bottom from Micro Rock to Master Rock and Master Shifter. It's and always a great time when the Orsalon folks show up because they're a... Uh, oh, 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 wow. Juan Diego Garcia Estevilla got a little bit too hot, and he's going to get even a little bit more co uh, contact from Josh Bergman, who kind of got into him in an awkward place. He got into turn three really, really deep and was locked up on the brakes, the right le uh, left rear tire, and he dropped off the outside edge of the racetrack going in. And now Bergman and him both fade back a big way. So big mistake for Juan Garcia Estevilla. Bergman's now going to try and get by, and he does for third in turn seven, but the damage has been done. Now there's a gap up to Maxwell Macha and uh, the race leader, Antonio Pizzonianito, here with uh, halfway in, halfway home. This time by, it'll be eight laps complete, six laps to go in the micro rock main. These guys just continue to battle it out, making Look. moves every chance they get. Good pass back behind there. Well, it was one of the Iron Rock Tony carts. I believe Nico Orbezo got by on Lucas Ferreira. Edge of the top ten. So the top two getting away. There is third and fourth. Let's go backwards a little ways. Is Bergman way low Whoa. out of turn one. That was a weird line that for Josh. Sure was. I don't know if he felt the pressure or, or what, but I, I think in his case here, one guy, Davila, is happy to work with him. 
But with a blocking like that, he's going to go by him. There he goes. Oh, he hooked the bumper. They're hooked together. Oh. Just got unhooked there right before the corner. <laughs> Thank goodness. That would have been too much fun going in hooked together as they go into an awfully fast corner right there through the teardrop. Turn number six, now through seven and eight, through the S's they go. And look at how much time they've lost there. The next Big group time. being led by Yao Paulo Bonatum and Hudson Jack Erlin and Colton Schneegenberg trying to make up some time there. Fifth, sixth, and seventh through turn 13. Close in the gap here on the next two in third and fourth. They're not making up any headway on the leaders, but they're not losing a ton of time either. This time by, nine laps complete, five laps to go. Two two-car packs up front, then a three-car group, and then a four-car pack further back, led by Gavin Decay and that Zanella Racing Benick. But five laps remain here in the micro main event. It looks like it's shaping up. It could just be Antonio Pizzonianito versus Maxwell Macha. One, uh, Diego Garcia Estevilla will have to put on the afterburners. And again, on your screen right now is another Orsalon Perlin. That, of course, is Yao Paulo Bonadamin, Hudson Jack Erlin in that uh, purple and uh, white parallel entry. And then behind him, Colton Schneegenberg on the team GWR Energy currently rides in seventh. Decay, Mateus Romalo is ninth. Lucas Ferreira, the PK Sports DAP cart is 10th as we watch the field come on through there. Back to that three-car pack, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Here comes Schneegenberg looking for P6 on Jack Erlin. He'll get by. So Schneegenberg on Erlin gets through er, uh, for the uh, sixth position. Nice move by Colton. Hadn't really talked a whole lot about Matthias Mermalo, who was our pole sitter for most of the weekend. Unfortunately, he got put back pretty far here on the uh, initial lineup here and uh, kind of been struggling to try to make his way up the ladder. Right now, though, he sits. He's up a couple of spots. Right now, he sits in that eighth position, the number 16 of the Matthias Mermalo. Yeah, so that now it looks like Schneegenberg will try to catch Ben Ottoman. Ben Ottoman trying to catch Josh Bergman. The two leaders are together. Uh, way up the road for Maxwell Macha and Antonio Pizzonianito. Juan Garcia Arcevilla, he is pushing. He went purple that time by, picked up half a second on the top two. So Garcia Arcevilla is closing in. This time by, 11 laps complete, three laps to go up front. There is the leaders, and they've got lap traffic looming. Hopefully the lap traffic will get out of the way or pull in early and not affect this battle for the win that's coming together. Maxwell Macha, if we were to think back to uh, Pompano Beach last year, Cross the line first of what should have been his maiden national main event win, uh, national win. Got it taken away for a jump start penalty. Then here this weekend, rolls into PK Race Park. Not so bad pace, pretty solid. But it seems like he's even turned it up a notch higher here on uh, Sunday for the main, right when you want to be at your best. And Antonio Pizzonianito, of course, putting all that seat time to work. And how about Juan Garcia Stavila? Really, really quick right now. I mean, nobody is better than the number 36, Orsel and Perlin. And all, out there all on his own as well. So might allow him to uh, make his way back up there. But it looks like the two out in front there are kind of working together, Maxwell and Antonio. They're trying to. As They're they trying to push away from the third place driver. They know Juan Diego is really fast. But when does Macha go? He's going to have to go here in a minute or Juan Garcia Stavila is going to go on by him. You can see he's already closed yep. the gap now to a car length away, absolutely flat flying. Two to go, this time by, here we go. It's a three car party up front. Josh Bergman looks on in the catbird seat back and forth, but Antonio Pizzonianito sees the double sticks and it's time to start fighting, boys. When does Maxwell Macha go? Pizzonianito gonna cover the low side in two. Macha goes high, there goes the teammate Juan Diego Garcia Stavila into second, Macha back to third. Wow, exactly what we thought was gonna happen. He happened to open up the door a little bit there and he was able to squeeze right through it oh, look he's going to oh, do it again oh. teammates be careful be careful garcia arstavila oh, oh. get together no out goes antonio pizzonianito and garcia arstavila beneath nito hands on the helmet he can't believe it he's into the wall and look at the lead for maxwell matcha because there's damage to uh, juan garcia arstavila maxwell matcha hot off just six days ago got his first career national main event victory. And now a gift and a half as the teammates under the Orsalon banner collide. White flag wow. in the air. Maxwell Macha, he's got to still put a good lap together. Here comes Josh Bergman. Josh Bergman has never podiumed at a national race before. He might be able to get it done. Garcia Stavila right there. Colton Schneegenberg. Wow. Oh, man, did this race just change. Yes, it did. And that to say the least, it was not what we were expecting to see, for sure, when a couple of teammates come together. So here's Josh Bergman and Juan Diego Garcia Stavila. 
headed into the PK teardrop as around oh. goes Gavin Decay on the final lap. Garcia Estevila going to get by Bergman. Josh Bergman on that PK Sports Dap cart still fighting with him, looking low. Onto the tutelage of Nelson PK Jr. And oh, oh! They make contact as well. And they go out. Davila and Bergman are around. Here comes Colton Schneegenberg to second. Hudson Jack Erland to third. And back up front as the leaders have crashed. Wow. Oh my goodness, what a finale. Schneegenberg's gonna lose that spot to Hudson Jack Erland. And to the lead, Maxwell Macha. Back to back, main event national wins. Number one last week, number two in PK. Wow. And across the line, look at this, they're side by side for third at the stripe. Yao Paolo Bonadaman gets second. And Hudson Jack Erland, the Canadian, gets his first American podium. You go back, Schneegenberg fourth, Mateus Romalo in fifth, wow. Asher Pavon is sixth, Zane Burgess seventh, Lucas Ferreira eighth. There is carnage all over this racetrack. Oh my goodness, Ron John. Yeah. Trying to get him to slow down. Got one of the drivers still sitting in his cart over. There is Antonio Pizzoni Nito. Uh, Heartbreak for the kid. Led for the majority of the laps here in this one. Tried wow. to do everything right. Him and his teammate Juan Diego Garcia Estevila. Neither one wanted to give in that PK teardrop with two laps to go. They collide. And then Josh Bergman on the verge of his first national podium. A lap later, him and Garcia Estevila collide as well in turn seven on the final lap. And oh man, what a day. Maxwell Macha, his dad, see, I, I saw him uh, Friday evening and he just seemed defeated at the end of the first day, just frustrated with the way things had gone. They weren't sure if they were even gonna make the trip over to Orlando. Well, I think they might need to go ahead and book <laughs> the entry fee and the hotel bill because Maxwell Macha has just catapulted himself into the title fight with a main event win here in Micro Rock. Lots to unpack, lots to clean up. Holy moly, ladies and gentlemen, stick wow. with us. Three more classes still coming your way with the first two on through. Micro Rock is done. Master Rock is done. Junior Rock, if you thought that was crazy, the juniors <laughs> set the bar for insanity. They're up next. If you're looking for your first foray into car racing, the Formula Inter F4 Series is for you. It's an arrive and drive championship costing a fraction of the price of the US F4 Series or USF Junior Championships, utilizing a spec fleet of cars that are randomized at every single round. You can start with International Motorsports Karting Team and advance through the ranks to the Formula Inter Championship. For more information, follow us online at Formula Inter on all social media.
Welcome back here to Loxhatchee, Florida, the PK Race Park and Entertainment Complex as Junior Rock hits the racetrack, and we just saw some major fireworks in Micro Rock here. So Junior Rockers headed onto the circuit. It's a Rollison Performance Group 1-2 to lead it off, a full lockout of the front row. Ernesto Rivera and Teddy Musella make up the top two spots after a, a solid and smooth pre-final. Anthony Martella in the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed is set to line up on the inside of row number two to his outside, Enzo Vidmondian and that Motaz Sport Paralin who has been coming through the field every session to, uh, through the weekend, finally gets a decent starting spot to uh, the inside of row three. Emma Scarborough saw her earlier, nearly snag her first career podium. She got another shot at it, rolling off fifth here. One driver was laid off the grid, unfortunately. We're going racing, boys and girls. Here we go, down to turn one. Green flag in the air, and they're gonna get underway. And Teddy Musella is going to get shuffled to the wayside a little bit. Martella splits up the Cosmics. And Anthony Martella into second. Scarborough to fourth. Terrible start to Vidmontien. He drops all the way behind his Motaz Sport teammate in uh, Sarah Bradley, who got a great jump for the young lady. So Sarah Bradley and Emma Scarborough, the girls, fourth and fifth as they head to the PK teardrop. Excellent start for the young ladies out there battling against the kids. Against Look the at guys. Martella right there, turn seven. Wow. Tried to send it on to Rivera, knew he had to do something without dominant. Ernesto Rivera's been all weekend, and now Martella's going to have dirty tires. Got to clean them off, maybe give himself another shot at it in the hairpin. Scarborough trying to go on Teddy Musella. She does. Musella wow. gets caught way off guard there, and now he's got a block from Vidmontiano. We got Carnage behind them. A couple cars get collected further back. But you see the top three break away. Now Teddy Musella has got a hungry pack of wolves right there. Vid Montien on his tail, headed through turn number one. Bradley's there. Musella's way wide off in the grass. Teddy Musella nearly crashing there through turn one. Heck of a save. He'll lose about five, six spots in the process. Drops all the way behind Leonardo with Scorpioni's black and yellow Zanella Racing Tony card. Oh, Teddy just got a little too high there coming through turn number one. Got that right rear tire off into the grass. Excuse me, left rear tire out into that grass. Now here's here's the Makes deal. Makes him awfully dirty. Go ahead. If you're Anthony Martella, you've got it. Calm down. You got a shot at him. You're, you're going to get one more, maybe, if he is as fast as he is in the heat races. If you're Anthony Martella, you cannot overdrive. This is a key key part of the race. You need to put your marks, uh, hit your marks as they battle back further. There's a Scorpione going at it with uh, is that Christian Cam uh, Cameron? No, that is going to be Anthony Raducano. Oh, oh, into the wall goes Raducano. Oh. More contact here. That Raducano on that prime power team, Vera Lark, slammed into the outside wall at the outside of turn number 14 in the hard racing. And so a Scorpione and Musella get by. Sebastian Garzone drops back a couple spots right ahead of uh, Gennaro Trappa. Meanwhile, let's go back up front while Garzone works on Teddy Musella. Vidmontian and Sarah Bradley have gotten some clear racetrack. And Martella trying to hang on, just missing the mark a little bit in the teardrop. And at this point here now, now he's starting to fade a little bit. Ernesto Rivera is starting to set sail. And uh, as we've been talking about Ernesto all weekend, once he gets out there in front, he is so hard to catch. He's so fast, and he's been very, very consistent, and that's really helped him out quite a bit. In the meantime, Anthony Martella, Emma Scarborough, what a tremendous run for Emma sitting in that third spot. Enzo Vinmontian in fourth, Sarah Bradley in fifth, Leonardo Escarponi now up five spots in sixth, Sebastian Garzone on the move. Hadn't talked a whole lot about Sebastian. Great to see him now up into that seventh spot. Gennaro Trappa, wow, up seven spots. Steven Miller up 16. Yeah, again, Miller sat out that Rock GP Junior pre-final. There's a look at the Chad Dawkins Racing Cart Republic driver further back while his teammate Emma Scarborough goes to work up front. Steven Miller in that blue-red CDR suit. Uh, again, from the rear of the field for Steven Miller. We heard from him this morning before VLR Jr. He sat out for warm-up. He sat out the, pre the final pre-final of the day in Rock GP Jr. Try and nurse those injured ribs. Yes. Keep him in a fighting shape for one of the two championships going into Orlando. He knows there's more points there. He knows there's a lot of points here, though. He's got to manage everything well. And we go back now to the fight up front. This is second, third, fourth. Martella, Scarborough, and Enzo Vidmontien is closing in. He set his personal best that time. Vidmontien was only a tenth of a second off of Ernesto Rivera, so not far off for Enzo Vidmontien and what's been a week of climbing uphill, it seemed, every single session. Still having to do that a little bit here in this one as he started on the outside, did not get a great start, fell back to sixth, worked his way back up to neutral to fourth here, and now he's going to work 
on the CDR Car Republic of Emma Scarborough, who for a moment was catching Anthony Martella. Now she started to fade backwards a little bit as Vidmontien uh, closes in on her. And then behind them, Sebastian Garzon has it passed and uh, is uh, all over Sarah Bradley as they've had a little fight here for fifth. So here he goes, looking, looking, gonna run her a little wide there. Here comes Musella, looking for that spot in at 14. And Bradley's gonna lose another one as Gennaro Trappa goes by, Miller goes by. Sarah Bradley, just a little bit of an experience right there, maybe not uh, recognizing that more drivers were coming on the line as Gennaro Trappa goes wide, way wide, nearly into the wall as wow. Steven Miller gets through. Seen a lot of drivers go off in turn number one, maybe from the, the back markers. Uh, in the field, dragging grass onto the circuit out of the final turn. It's uh, a lot to keep up with now with five laps complete, 11 to go in the 16-lap main event. Let's go side-by-side -side and head down here to pit lane with Emery Lida and Alexander Searle. Boys? Thanks, Xander. Yeah, I'm here with your race winner in Micro Rock, Maxwell Macha. Maxwell, you entered the last lap in P3, came out of it P1. I mean, just walk me through that last lap and what your mindset was when you saw the leaders make contact. I mean, I was scared that they're going to flip, but they're fine, so, um, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, one more thing, obviously, you had a really good go-kart. Who would you like to thank for this victory? Um, Sebastian, uh, my coach. Um, we, we worked together, and we did the video, and, um, Santi, who, um, then my data and stuff like that, and my dad and my mechanic is my dad, but yeah. Awesome, yeah, Max Homach, everybody. Two-time national winner now in the Micro Rock class. Back to you guys. Man, what a week it's been for Maxwell Macha and that SLA car racing crew. As we were side-by-side, -side, Enzo Vidmontien caught and passed Emma Scarborough. So the podium's changed hands now to the Motasport Sport Parallel driver who has been marching forward all weekend long. And now he looks up the road to see that red and white and black speed contest racing red speed of Anthony Martella, the Canadian, with about a two-second gap back to Enzo Vidmontien and Scarborough. And Scarborough's got more company coming as uh, bearing down on her is Sebastian Garzon in that Orsolan Racing Tony cart. The green, white, and black colors as he heads through the kink at turn five and into the teardrop here. Vidmontien, Scarborough, Garzon, three, four, five. Steven Miller has worked his way all the way up 20 spots to sixth. If you go back from this fight for third to find that CDR Cart Republic, there he is. He leads over Caleb Campbell, who also had to come from the rear of the field in the SCR Red Speed. But Stephen Miller, that drive forward has to be commended in seven laps. He has gone from the back to nearly the top five as here's a good fight. Teddy Musella trying to gain back some ground. He and Gennaro Trappa getting by on one of the Racing Edge Motorsports Cosmics that was Mayor Dionorin. So now Musella, the out pole sitter, the second place starter, going all the way outside the top 10 to finally get himself back to ninth here. He's got a long way to maybe crack the top five by the end of this one, but not an ideal main event, in the, uh, unfortunately, for the Orlando, Florida native. Yeah, you're talking about Stephen Miller. What a great run for Stephen. Uh, already up into that sixth spot. 20 carts he's managed to get around, but Caleb Campbell came right along with him. Caleb now up 17 positions into that seventh spot. A 295 great run here for the Speed Concepts racing driver. The Canadian down here racing with us at the Florida Winter Tour in Loxahatchee, Florida. Round number two, it's final Sunday. Sunscreen Sunday out there today. My oh, goodness, is it sunny here it's again. Sunny. The humidity is back, the heat is back. Uh, it's picked up, and, and, and it's, again, on such a physical racetrack on these long main events here, 55-plus sec uh, second laps, more or less, class to class, testing the drivers, testing their stamina. And uh, we saw that uh, Garzon was closing in on Scarborough. Here he comes, fighting for fourth. Sebastian Garzon and that Orsolo Tony cart is going to be close enough for a dive in the PK teardrop. Here he comes, looking inside, clear. Got him. And so Sebastian Garzon pushes Emma Scarborough back to the edge of the top five as he gets around her for that four spot Scarborough fades to fifth. Yeah, that was a, that was a great move right there for him. I, I, I love when they do that. As soon as they get around the other driver, they tap the back of their helmet like, oh, now help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not helping you, but you should help me. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, so uh, now Garzon. What a Garzone. great run for Garzon. That's yeah. tremendous. He'll continue rolling forward here. 10 complete now, six to go. Garzon is not finished. 
He's going to get to Enzo Vidmontien at this rate. They won't catch Anthony Martella. Martella is safe and sound up in second. But Enzo Vidmontien over Sebastian Garzo, and that gap is shrinking. Caleb Campbell and Stephen Miller, by both of them sitting out that pre-final, they've got really good pace right now. A little, uh, little more rested maybe, because everyone's got brand new Levanto tires. You can't say it's a tire advantage for them, having to start in the rear, but right. for whatever it may be, big, big gains on speed for those guys. You just wonder, had they started up front, could the result have been a top three result? At this point, it'd be an outside shot to catch that second group and maybe fight for third, fourth, and fifth. Maybe. Maybe. But we're not going to have a lot of time left because it'll be five to go this time by, Ron John. Yeah, here comes the leader back by the start finish once again. This time we'll take a look and see how far. He's 2.6. 2.6 seconds. Enzo Vidmonti in his best lap of 52.997. But again, uh, laps winding down. 11 of 16 now in the bank. They're working lap number 12. It's a 15 turn, about three quarters of a mile layout here at the PK Entertainment and Race Facility. It's a rough and tumble course. Look uh, at Garzone, look at Garzone right here, oh. Ron John, turn seven. Whoa, that was sketchy. Locked up the brakes, Vidmontien went all the way to the outside of the racetrack, and uh, now he is uh, sideways there as he was way wide in the marbles. Scarborough all the, up, all the way up to him, but Garzone takes the third spot away, and Sebastian Garzone, after Orsalon Racing, loses multiple podiums and a potential race win in the micro rockers he's at least trying to bring some hardware home with a third place run here in junior rock with four laps to go great run for sebastian garzone the colombian yeah you know you saw it in the beginning when he started off you could see he had already passed quite a few folks maintain that speed and make his way on up and lo and behold here he is sitting in the third positions up seven spots now solidly in that third position enzo vidmontien here uh, it still needs to worry about Emma Scarborough making one last charge at him. She's not really gone silently into the nights, hasn't faded too far back. As the Junior Rockers climb the hill here in the S's. Sebastian Garzone, Enzo Vidmontien, Emma Scarborough. Chad Dawkin Racing's got two in the top six with Scarborough fifth. Stephen Miller from dead last to six. Caleb Campbell has rode that ride with him to the front of the field. And uh, they're almost there. Might go up a couple laps short. They're still quicker than the group in front, I believe, but they're running low on time. They may have burned their stuff up a little. Miller that time, 52-9. Vidmontian and Scarborough, 52-8 and a 53 flat. So kind of holding station there from fifth up, uh, or sixth up to fifth. Unfortunately, it may only be, it may only be 20 spots for Steven Miller. Only being a, only. a funny way to describe that here with three to go. Tremendous drive for himself for yes. the Tampa, Florida native and for the Canadian Caleb Campbell to drive to the grid in the way that they have. You know, I spoke to Stephen last night in the, and of all things, of the, in the elevator at the hotel, and he was actually telling me he was so sore, he wasn't sure he was gonna be able to run this morning. Of course, he did go ahead and not run the uh, pre-final and uh, took a little break this morning, but obviously uh, he was well enough to get out there and pass 20 people because he's sitting right there solidly in that sixth spot. Great run for Stephen Miller. Yeah, a fantastic run for Stephen Miller as the uh, two to go signals given. 14 down, two to go here in the Junior Rock main event. Miller and Campbell, they've worked together this whole time. Does Campbell try to fight him here for six? Does he just ride and say, you know what, that's good enough points for me? Oh no, Sebastian Garzone. I don't know what the heck is going on with Sebastian Garzone and Enzo Vidmontien. He just blocked low, he's losing power. Vidmontien just gave him a little bump and run and a teardrop. And Garzon has lost the podium. Enzo Vidmontien back to third. All of a sudden, yeah, it's, uh, obviously something must have happened there, but it might have gone like, off. Yeah, might have gone off a little bit. Got his tires all dirty, and Enzo just took full advantage of it. And obviously, laps winding down. They're heading for the white flag now. So one more lap around the 15-turn layout here. And this is going to be it right here, this the fight for third. The fight for third, exactly. Enzo takes a look over his shoulder. He knows that Sebastian's coming. Yeah, Garzone is only a car length away from Vidmontien through turn two, turn three. He'll close into a half car length away, up and over the curbing, over the left-hander. Sebastian Garzone, Enzo Vidmontien through turn five, half a lap to go. Vidmontien's going to block low this time. Oh! Garzone is going to pay him back big time. They're going to bang wheels on the exit of the corner. Vidmontien gets knocked wide. Here comes Scarborough for fourth. She'll get through as well. Garzone might get lucky and get away with this one. 
We'll see if the officials say anything. He might have knocked the bumper in as well. Chaos for third and fourth. But up front, Ernesto Rivera flies the Mexico flag to the top in both junior classes. He wins in Rock Junior. Anthony Martella finishes in second, and the battle for third coming to the line. Scarborough almost gets there, just comes up short. Vidmontien. That was Garzon. Garzon yeah. in third, but with both of those two taking shots at each other, if they both get penalties, Emma Scarborough might find a promotion. No, no kidding. Up to third. I mean, that was. We're going to have to wait and see on that. That was uh, that, that was interesting. We talked about physical. Yep. That got on track. Physical. Yes. Lots, of, lots of contact there in the final few laps between Sebastian Garzon and Enzo Vidmonti, and you can bet they are not going to be thrilled with each other the way that race unfolded and how they drove uh, against each other as well. So, uh, nonetheless. Vidmontien, for, uh, for now, uh, finishes fourth, and Garzon gets the last lap, picking up seven spots en route to a podium. Stephen Miller, again, 20 spots gained behind Emma Scarborough. CDR, Cart Republic's fifth and sixth. Sixth, of course, coming from dead last on the grid. Caleb Campbell, 17 spots gained to seventh. Sarah Bradley, eighth, a solid run hurt for her in that Motaz Sport Paralyn. Puts two of those Motaz Sport Paralyns in the top ten. Leonardo with Scorpioni, Zanella Racing, Tony Card ninth, and Teddy Musella up, down, sideways, and all around. Didn't have too, uh, too much uh, contact or chaos with other drivers. Just a, a wild race for Teddy. He survives with a top 10 result in 10th, but his teammate, Ernesto Rivera, gets top honors. And how about Anthony Martella? Smooth, consistent, quiet race for the Speed Concepts Racing Red Speed driver. Just needs a little more speed to go into Orlando to fight for wins, but man, was he close today. Solid run for him, and congratulations. Rawls Performance Group gets another win, this time in Rock GP Junior with Ernesto Rivera. We're gonna wrap up with Rock Junior now. Two classes to come, VLR Master is on deck. Rock Shifter Pro will have a lot of pre-race coverage here during this next main event, so stick with us if you haven't already. Two more races to go, live from Loxachie, Florida. You're watching Car Chasers coverage of the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Don't go anywhere.
Apologize about those technical difficulties here. Short little power outage. Little ghost in the machine. Shut the whole boot down. Yeah. <laughs> so now back up, back green. VLR Master underway. Only missed the opening couple laps. And don't worry, folks, you haven't missed much. Not Everyone much at all. stayed pretty much clean off the start. Kim Carapalotti leads. In fact, he just went purple last time by. And for a driver that was nowhere near race winning pace most of this weekend, Oh man, Kim is getting after it right he, now, Ron John. He certainly is. A 56-9 for Kim. A great run on that lap to the 57 flat. So, again, Alex Dalbon right there in that second position, the 721. Talked a little bit to Alex earlier. He was pretty excited about the race. Felt like he had something for everybody. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. Still just winding down the laps here. We're working lap number four of 16. It's the BLR Masters final for the second leg here of the Florida Winter Tour. So they'll head through turns 13 and 14. There you see the difference from Kara Pilati back to Alex Dalbon, back to Christian Vomir. Luis Quinones rounds out uh, and Ryan Molina, the top five. And we've got Vomir, I think, might go purple this time. He looks pretty sporty. He will. Quickest driver on the racetrack, the man in third, hunting down Alex Dalbon in that LFB Racing Tony card. So Christian Vomir, of course, we saw him and Mark Pavon collide on the opening uh, circuit in one of the heat races. That put him on the back burner. Then there was chaos in the finish <laughs> of that VLR Master pre-final yesterday. So there was all kinds of wild, wild stuff going on. And look at uh, Vomir there. He is it's digging boring. hard, man. That was, that, was a, that was a dive it in deep and then dive it in even deeper type of mentality for the PK Teardrop that time by. Man, I tell you, it took everything he had to keep that card on the track, too, because he was really battling coming through turn number six there. Looked like he just happened to hit the bump in the wrong spot. Yeah, just got Really kicked him up high. Up. Well, while we're still going green again, we'll be having some of our Pro Shifter Rock pre-race interviews during this main event here. And uh, we already got one down on the grid, Alexander Searle and Emery Lida, they were ready as soon as that power outage went, and now they're ready again with us down on the grid. Let's take it away to you boys. Thanks, Xander. Yeah, I'm here with Vincenzo Saracino. Vincenzo, it's been a solid weekend for you, obviously up and down, right? Maybe luck wasn't on your side. You know, heat one, you lost the bumper. So just walk me through how the weekend's gone for you so far and what your expectations are for this race. Yeah, I mean, my pace has been solid all week. Every heat that I finished, I was third. I was third in the heat where the bumper came off, and in the pre-final, I, I had a pace for about third or fourth. I think Georgia was a little faster than me towards the end, but um, I had a penalty in the heat, so, or in the pre-final, so I'll be starting seventh. But uh, AJ starts in the back, so it'll be interesting to see how we make our way up. Yeah, and obviously this being a fairly new racetrack, and it's, the, you know, it's pretty hot out, weather constantly changing. I mean, it's Florida, right? So walk me through the progression of the track uh, evolution, how it's been. Yeah, I mean, it just gets more and more grip as the week progresses. I mean, there's some corners you can see, it's a totally different shade of black. You can go in there and just almost get completely back on power right away, whereas in the beginning of the week, you kind of coast some more through the corner and just wait till you feel a good uh, exit grip and then go. But track got better as, as uh, you know, more laps got put down. Awesome, yeah, one more question. Obviously, you're starting P7, so that's inside row. What has the grip been like to the inside and outside as the weekend's gone on? I've actually never started on the inside. I've been on outside every time, which has been better. So uh, I'm not looking forward to it as much, but we'll see what we can make do. Awesome. Yeah, Vincenzo Terracino, everybody. He's shown really good pace so far this weekend. Look for him to make a run for the top three. He's running P7 and Rock Shifter. Back to you guys. Well, VLR Master looks like fatigue starting to set in just a little bit here for these top guys. Everyone faded off that lap. Looks like they're fading a little bit. Kara Pilati starting to fade. Alex Dalbon starting to feel the heat as well. And Christian Vomir continues to apply pressure for second and third, but again, these guys. It's you know, warm out there, Xander, you know that. It's hot out, I mean, this, is, really this is. is really a long enduro for the Masters. I'm sure they would have been happy with a 10 lap main event today. All things considered, Kara Pilati trying to hang on. Again, these guys, they're not, you know, professional athletes. This right. isn't the top pro rock shifter class where they're in peak physical shape. These are guys doing this as a hobby, having fun, trying to be competitive, and right now, it is putting them to work and they may not, uh, not, you know, they may be regretting a little bit the decision to come to this Florida Winter <laughs> Tour with how demanding the conditions have been thus far this weekend. No doubt it's going to take a couple of days after this race to kind of recover because it's, it's been brutal. It's, it's a physical track. It's a fast track. And it, it really, really pounds on the guys. The carts, the carts have been taking a pounding all week. So uh, laps winded down here, 7 of 16 in the bank, halfway home here the next time by. And uh, right now, our top four are pretty, pretty much getting to about, uh, be about uh, nose to tail here. Just Kim's got a little bit of a lead coming off of turn number 15, probably about two cart lengths, maybe three. Back to the second place of Alex Dalbon. 
It was actually all the way down to Louis Coonis that uh, went purple that last time by the fourth place driver with a 56-3 to a 57-2. Oh, look at this right here for second. Vomir threw on Alex Talbon there. And Quinona is, the, like you said, the quickest last time by, closing in also. So we'll go side by side for more action here to see if any of them can run down Kim Carapalotti. Halfway in, halfway on for VLR Master. Down to you, Emery. Thanks, Andrew. I'm here with Hunter Pickett. Hunter, you've had a pretty decent weekend so far, starting this final in the sixth position. Just walk me through what your weekend's been like so far. Well, I'm starting on the outside. Uh, we've had some luck there. Um, when we started the inside, everyone kind of just bunches up, and there's not too much room. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Carpen, feeling all right? Depending on the situation, yeah. All right, well. We'll see certain lottery might play Hunter Pickett's way, but he'll start in the sixth position for the final. Back to you guys in the booth. Well, Hunter Pickett there, man. If you were, definitely you can tell he's in the zone right now, Ron yes, John. Is, we're yeah. not going to get too much out of Hunter Pickett here. He's going to keep his cards close to the chest. And he did. Keep his mouth nice and uh, shut and try to <laughs> lock in for today's main event. Fun guy to be around, though. Really cool dude. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Grandpa quite a driver, too. Yeah, racing in the family they've already got a kid cart for his son uh ready to oh, go that's crazy uh, i know his uh his, his wife and son back home in yeah. uh, california watching on and uh, ready to cheer dad on from sixth as uh in vlr masters here it's become a bit of a four car party again we talked about fatigue everyone's lap time's fading and now vomir has closed in on kim carapalati let's go side by side here while vomir closes in for the race lead with more pro rock shifter pre-race action thanks andrew yeah i'm here with baylor griffin baylor i mean you're on a new go-kart today, right? You're on the Burrell. Obviously, yesterday you had not the pre-final you would have wanted. You know, ended up out of your go-kart. Just first, before I talk about the Burrell go-kart, how are you feeling? Uh, a little sore, first and foremost, for sure. Um, I'm just happy, though, that I'm able to at least participate in the finals still. I'm glad that I was able to rent a go-kart from PSL. And uh, it's definitely not what I'm used to, but uh, the go-kart, it feels nice. A, a good driver will make the difference, so uh, I'm just going to do what I can and hopefully see the finish this time <laughs> yeah and one more question obviously first time on a Burrell you only had the warm-up this morning how did the go-kart feel and you know is there anything that you want to change for this final um I mean compared to the CRG for I've had that for so long now it's definitely a little different um I like the balance it's not too bad just getting the right driving position and getting everything how I like it uh I didn't have too much time obviously to get it really where I really want it but I've got it close enough, and I think i got a go-kart to go racing with. Awesome. Baylor Griffin, everybody. Different go-kart from today on the Burrell, but look for him to make up a few spots here in this Rock Shifter final. Back to you guys. Thank you, Alex. Here, Kim Carapalotti has withstood the fire, and Christian Vomir gave up the second spot back to Alex Dalbon with five laps to go. The VLR Masters having a good, fun fight up for the lead, and Kim Carapalotti has held on so far as now the, the lap times now are nearly a second off of where they were earlier in this race run, John. All of these guys are just at the limit right now. Yeah, they are. Every one of them looks like right now they'd love a bag of ice yeah. just to put in their chest, right? Because uh, it's, it's, it's scorching hot out there. The track is hot. These guys are uh, putting in 16 laps here. Uh, <laughs> and without a doubt, they are definitely starting to get Oh, low. and there's the mistakes that'll happen. Yes. Luis Canones was trying to go down the inside, broke a bit too deep, tried to back out of uh, getting into Dalbon's rear end, and that's going to spread them out now. And the Look Bobblehead 500 rolls on. VLR Master now with four laps to go. Put out a lot of rocks right there in that particular oh, turn, too. You know, that's a good point, Ron John. That, that turn 13 hairpin got a lot of rocks from him kind of sure driving do. over the inside curb and moving the barriers. And I mean, like they're going to do what they can to clear it out. But that might get on some guy's tires. And yeah. first guy to get there is going to be Kim Carapalotti on that privateer comp cart. We'll see what happens. Let's go side by side again. Down to the grid, boys. Thanks, Xander. Yeah, I'm here with Marion Kremer as your pole sitter here in Shifter Rock. Marion, before I get into Shifter, I just want to say that you kind of let me down there in the, in the Senior Rock race. You know, you told me to pick you. I picked you. You made up a lot of spots there in the race, and then you lost the chain. Just, I'm so, what, do you, what do you have to say about that? i got to apologize, I think. I, uh, <laughs> I was feeling it before that main event, and I really thought I had a shot, but then uh, ruined it all myself. So, sorry about that. Um, I would pick me again if I was you, though. I think I will. Maybe. I might have to pick AJ, though. Um, that being said, going into this race, obviously you're on the pole. Your main rival, AJ Meyer, is starting in the back. I mean, how do you feel? Um, confident, obviously. I think um, AJ's been a bit unfortunate this weekend. And uh, I've been 
I've had some good luck, at least in this class. So, um, yeah, we ran our race tires in warm-up. They felt pretty similar to the tires I had in the, in the heat. So, um, yeah, confident going into this one. Awesome, yeah, Marion Kremers, everybody. Pretty confident going into this race, starting P1. Main rival starting in the back. Let's see how this Shift to Rock race uh, handles out. Back to you guys. Alexander Searle there uh, getting maybe a little bit of stage right there, a little, little stumble at the end uh, right in front of that trash talk in the former world champ. I don't know. i got to give him a little bit of heck because he's giving Marion some, and oh, it's yeah. all fun. It's all good. It's what and, it's about. Uh, everybody's having a good time here at the Florida Winter Tour as now Christian Vomir is trying to make it one more good time, uh, one spot better. You know, for second, it's two laps to go. He needs about two car lengths to get to Alex Dalbon. What a day it's been for Kim Carapalati out front trying to hang on as this fight rages on for P2. And uh, we'll see how it unfolds with a lap and a half to go. I got a funny feeling we're going to see a lot of pop oh, oh, up oh, the tops oh, here. Oh. Yeah, oh. You right. almost <laughs> got him right there. He was trying turn number three, Ron John. That just couldn't get it. crazy number three turn, which we've seen so many passes through that particular area. It just wasn't quite close enough. Yeah, almost there. He'll send it deep into the sweeper. Christian Vomir, half a car length away from Alex Dalbon. They'll go through that turn seven sweeper. And then again, you know, you're seeing everyone just, you know, hanging on for dear life right now as uh, they go on through. That time, Kim Carapalotti turned down the afterburners. He found some speed back again after having a lot early on, then slowing back down. He's been the most consistent. Everyone else has been up, then down, up, then down. And now they're fighting. Vomir trying to cross over. One more shot at Alex Dalbon. White flag coming, one to go, and the fight for second continues. Vomir looking for a little more straight line. He doesn't have it into turn number one. Wow. He's certainly trying, though. I, I thought perhaps maybe he would Watch take a right dive here. to the inside. Yeah, we're looking for him. Oh. Oh, oh, he ran him oh, wide oh. in two. He got under him, going <laughs> into two, and runs Dalbon <laughs> wide, and Dalbon hand in the air. He's frustrated. He's just trying to get He's continue. not a happy camper for sure. But what a, what a day, what a Sunday drive for Kim Carapalotti. The pressure's been mounting all the way through this main event. They've been close to him at one point, three different drivers all within a second and a half of the race later. But one of the elder statesmen in the Masters class here been saying, you know what, we almost did a super master class for all these 35, 40-year-old young bucks <laughs> right. coming in and trying to take my trophies away. Well, Kim Carapalotti, sir, you've beaten them all today. He'll round turn 14 for the final time. And the old man is going to get it done. Self-driven, self-mechanic, Kim Carapalotti wins in PK. Bam! Boy, what a great run there for Kim. He got out in front and just kind of kept it out there the entire time. I, I promise you these guys are going to be absolutely exhausted. It is a, a tough 16 laps out there with these 15 turns. And uh, as we wind things up here with our Masters here, we're going to send it down. I believe that we've got Emery down there, Emery Lido with one of our drivers. Let's go check it out. Emery, take it away. Take it away. Thanks, Xander. I'm here with Josh Conker. Josh, first off, how are the ribs feeling? Uh, a little sore this morning, you know, tried um, some, some adult measures last night for the ribs, um, but didn't very, work very well. So uh, we got them wrapped pretty tight right now. You know, uh, got to stay in it, got to fight through the pain. You know, 16 laps here, uh, you know, got to kind of keep the championship hopes alive. Starting in third, same place you started in St. Pete. What are your thoughts going into the start where obviously the inside's kind of been touch or go early on in the race? Yeah, I did, um, I did a practice start this morning in the box just to try and lay some rubber down. Um, hopefully that makes a difference, but um, yeah, you know, just gonna go out, try and do our best, and try and hang on for the 16 laps. All right, Josh Conker starts in third. A good opportunity to get himself into championship contention, possibly take back the lead with a win here. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Emery. Josh Conker getting ready here. AJ Myers, you can see with his helmet already on. This is a look at the scale line area. As uh, I get a little smaller crowd, you got a lot more self mechanics for uh, the VLR Masters, but. Ron John, it's time to start with those fantasy picks once again and give <sighs> our little bit of a breakdown for the final race at the PK Race Park stop for the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour here in Loxahatchee, Florida. A.J. Myers, the, one of the perennial contenders, a disqualification at the end of the pre-final for an issue with the carburetor, puts him to the tail end of the field. Got a long way to go forward. Probably going to put on a big show. Yep. Marion Kremers gets gifted. Of course, uh, he won the pole, but now it's going to be a shaken-up grid. Giorgio Carrara will join him on the front row. We mentioned Josh Conker right there, starts third. Colin Daly, the Jamaican, will start in fourth. And Gianna Torino rounds your top five. Who you got? Um, it's interesting you mentioned that uh, Gianno Torino is right there in the fifth position. You know, he was really fast yesterday. Now, of course, his 
physicality has been something he's talked about a few times, whether or not he'll be able to maintain the speed and what it takes in order to win a race of this type. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, my, my money's going to be on Giano. You know, all right. Hey, gutsy pick for Gianno Torino, but kid always has a smile on his face. He sure does. Big, big kid, and, or a <laughs> uh, little guy. kid and a big kid, uh, <laughs> big kid body for Gianno Torino, which is why it's so funny, but it also is such a big testament to how, f how physically demanding uh, these pro rock shifter carts are. I mean, that's, uh, that's a guy that races sports cars. Uh, he's uh, in the gym. I mean, he's, he's got a good amount of muscle mass, but, yes, I mean, this does. is a mix of that muscle to hold on and, and r roll the go-kart through every corner and keep it from rocking, uh, you know, the wheel out of your hands at the same time you got to have really really good cardio and, and cardiovascular strength as well so the mix of that can Torino hang on can all these guys hang on in probably the toughest weather conditions the humidity at its highest this weekend the temperature's probably at the highest it's the end of the weekend and it's the longest session and the one that matters the most so we'll see if Gihano Torino can get it done we've got our boys Alexander Searle and Emery Lida down on pit lane we're going to send it on down to them and see where they think things will fall here for uh, the main event and then we'll come back up here for my prediction here to close things off for pro rock shifter but boys do we have you down there on pit lane yeah Xander I want to send it over to Ron John real quick because I thought you said Hunter Pickett was your guy and you didn't pick him no I, I decided you know I, I didn't want to put that kind of pressure on Hunter he'd been uh, having a little tough time obviously but I happened to notice that Gianna, Gianna was having such a great race yesterday so and with his strength who knows might be might be his day yeah, but. fair enough. I mean, I got to say, though, Hunter looked pretty good in the heat races, and I think he's a little bit under, not feeling so great about his PSL machine, but I have confidence in him. I have confidence in Martin Krimmers as well, but I'm going to go with Hunter Pickett to at least get on the podium. As for my race win pick, though, Josh Conker, he won in St. Pete. He's looked really good all weekend long. He's progressively got better. I think this is the session where he puts it together and wins. Alex, who do you have? Yeah, I mean, I like your picks. I, I, I happen to agree with you. I think Hunter Pickett will find his way on the podium. I think the podium for me is going to go Hunter Pickett P3, Colin Daly P2, and uh, I got to go Marion Kremers. I have to go Kremers. He told me before the race he's going to win. <laughs> I, can't, I can't go against the confidence. So Marion Kremers P1. What do you guys, Xander? Well, you know what, Alex? I mean, Marion Kremers, safe pick, solid pick. There's no question about it, right? I mean, it's really just been the him and AJ show when you look about the lap average over the course of the entire session. That being said, Giorgio Carrara, if Kremers picks that inside lane, gets the clean part of the racetrack on the outside, and you're talking about another factory-level pilot in the field who's been working on that Lenzo cart throughout the weekend, and I think of all the drivers that have been making all those complaints and whining about the tires, which, again, we don't know. There's no testing and all that, <laughs> but we do know that drivers like to whine when the cart doesn't feel good. Right. Carrara looked really, really good up until qualifying, and even through qualifying, was decent, and he felt like his race pace was better. Everyone's got a brand new set of Levanto tires. He starts on the front row. I think that the Lenzo Kart driver could break through and give that brand its first win on American soil in only their fourth start here, debuting in 2023. So I think Giorgio Carrara, a good shot. We'll find out if he can get it done. For Marion Kremers, though, he's got the best seat in the house. He'll roll off from the pole. Uh, and then as well for A.J. Myers, I think – He's going to be able to find his way up onto the box. I think your podium could look like Giorgio Carrara, Marion Kremers, A.J. Myers in third, and he will keep his championship hopes alive to try and get himself a third Florida Winter Tour title in four seasons, which would be absolutely massive. Uh, we've got a couple announcements here in the paddock we're going to make really, really quickly before this Rock Shifter bank gets underway. So we'll go quiet on the live stream for a moment. And then again, Rock Pro Shifter getting set to go green. All right, so announcements all done. Again, we talked about uh, the lineup here. We've got a, a shot, of course, uh, down on the grid. And, uh, well, let's go back to pre-race. We've done our picks for our KC team. How about another honorary KC team member? We had Connor Zillish go around with us Saturday night. How about the big man, reigning Florida Winter Tour Pro Rock Shifter champion who swept all three rounds in 2022, Danny Formal is standing down with Alexander Searle. Thanks, Xander. Yeah, Danny Formal. 
It's been a while since we talked to you, actually. It's been a minute since you've been in a go-kart. Obviously, you're coaching the juniors and the micros this weekend. Just from your perspective, what do you, what do you think of the track? Well, first of all, it feels great to be back in the camera here in the karting track. Uh, it's been a long off-season for karting for me. I haven't driven at all since Vegas, and, and we, we kind of know how that ended in the final. Uh, but, yeah, it's been great. Great winner with RPG Group. Uh, been working a lot with the juniors. I worked with a micro this weekend. Uh, it's just been fantastic to see the progression, the help that I could bring with my experience, and just to see how, how that team works. It's just incredible. Yeah, and obviously one more question. I mean, you're coaching Ernesto Rivera this weekend. He's had one of the most dominating performances I've seen in karting in quite some time. I mean, how is he doing it? What, what, what's the difference between him and most of the drivers you've seen? Well, this weekend, uh, our, uh, Cedric Lupian, one of our coaches, was helping him out. And, uh, yeah, he drove incredible. Uh, I've coached a lot of people in my, in my career. Uh, he's definitely a special talent. Very tall driver, similar to me. Uh, very aggressive on the fronts of the tires, so it gets him up to temp real quick. And this track just fit his style, you know. Uh, bumpy, uh, you have to drive in quite hard into the corner, and that's what he likes to do. Uh, the RPG group just gave him a great package in both VLR and, and Rock GP Jr. So, yeah, you know, win and everything, and I think can win a lot of races this year. Awesome, yeah. One more thing, actually. You know, shifter driver yourself, who do you have winning this race? Uh, Kramers is going to win. Uh, Carrara finished second. Pickett will finish third. I think AJ can make it in top six. Passing here is quite hard. Uh, maybe top five. Uh, depending also, uh, yeah, what tire he has on. Awesome, you heard it here first. Dana from Al picks Mario Kremers to win the Rock Shifter race. Back to you guys. Again, that's a safe pick. That's the pick that everyone expects to win. This could be a runaway, so we, we don't know. But Mario Kremers has already had one mechanical failure today. You'd imagine after that, with the chain coming off in one pro class and the other pro class, the entire go-kart gets fully inspected, Ron John. They don't want anything to fall off on that 401 machine because that could knock his title hopes completely out of the sky. Absolutely, and I'm sure they went over that time after time before they loaded it up onto the cart and brought it over here and put it on the grid and getting ready to go out and go racing here. Senior shifter finals for the Florida Winter Tour. Leg number two here in Loxahatchee, Florida. It's been a very, very interesting last couple of days. It's our last race of the day. And we'll be able to stick a fork in the second leg of the Florida Winter Tour and then look forward to heading for Orlando here next month and uh, be able to crown some champions for the 25th year of the Florida Winter Tour here in the great state of Florida. So uh, here we go. These guys are in those uh, amazing machines, as Xander, you so lovingly talk about, the 125s, the six-speed gearbox. Here we go. It I'm ready to do it. Let's go. 16 laps. Time to line it up. Marion Kremers has elected the clean side of the racetrack, the outside lane. Giorgio Carrara has struggled every start on the bottom, but A.J. Myers, for the first time yesterday, got the whole shot from the inside. The rest of the weekend's been the outside, so does it have enough rubber? Conker said he did a practice start in his box on the inside lane. There's your look all the way back to A.J. Myers in that 428 Magic Cart. The field is set. The flags go up. We go to the lights for the final time this weekend. The Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Pro Rock Shifter. The red lights are on and lights out. We're racing down to turn number one. Marion Kremers with a massive hole shot. Carrara gets popped and Whoa. Hunter Pickett noses it into the wall. And the start in turn number one. Pickett went around the outside, got popped in the right rear, and nose dives the barriers into the gravel. Hunter Pickett's day done at about 500 feet. Absolutely nothing he Josh could do Josh Conker about. is Josh out as, as well. well. Oh, no, a broken left front tie rod for Josh Conker. I think he and Mar uh, Hunter Pickett were the ones that collided, and this championship now completely changes as Josh Conker just needed a top five result to continue from St. Petersburg. He gets a DNF. Kremers and Myers have a DNF in round one, but this one's going to sting a whole lot worse. And Gianno Torino is up to third. Colin Daly sits second. Carrara with a terrible start in that Lenzo cart. Back to fourth. Probably could have been fifth or sixth had the two. Hunter Pickett and Josh Conker not collided there on, in heading into turn number one. But now, where does the field line up? Well, A.J. Myers, he's up to seventh here at the end of the opening lap. He's oh, right at crazy. the end of this train. Look at that. The bright, <laughs> bright white and blue and orange magic oh, card is goodness. all over. Ricardo Escorta Lechuga for the sixth spot. Here he comes. Lap two. Myers gives him a little gap. Closes back up. Going to dive him right here. Oh, Lechuga's blocking the reigning, or the former Florida Winter Tour two-time champion. 
as they head on through. Inside, clear in turn seven. No Actually, I should correct there. myself. I believe three time Florida Winter Tour champion. Two times the Magic Card the year before with Pro Promotion USA. But two laps to be completed this time by. Car Torino left the door open. Carrara going to send it for third, and Giorgio Carrara is back on the box. Boy, that was a great move right there coming into turn number 13. Again, Giano just needs to kind of relax and make his way back on up there. Boy, they are really going at it here. Yeah, they. I are. don't know if that was, was that AJ. That, that did was it? AJ that got around Vincenzo Saracino. Wow. So we're gonna we're gonna try and get a word here with the drivers that uh, uh, see what happened here. Josh Conker again and Hunter Pickett, heavy heavy damage uh, in that one for both of them that knocks him out of this race in the early stages. Unfortunate, something you hate to see. Part of the sport though, these shifter starts are so crazy. Marion Kremers continues to lead and pull away. Colin Daly though having a good start. I mean he's got himself safely to second. Here comes A.J. Myers on his Magic Kart teammate, Gianno Torino. Torino going to block a little bit, kind of unintentionally, went a little wide out of 12. Here comes A.J. inside and clear for fourth. A.J. Myers is going to rock it onto the podium at this right here on that Magic Kart. Yeah, no kidding. A.J. really has turned it on. Obviously, I would say that this uh, set of tires that he's obviously uh, not been too happy with seems to be doing pretty good so far. So. Keeping an eye on AJ, I believe that's all the way up into that fifth position now. That since he may, puts him in fourth, excuse me. Yeah, AJ in yeah, fourth right now. He's the second quickest. He's the only. Him and uh, Giorgio Carrara are about even to Marion Kremers when it comes to fastest lap times, and they're about even right now as we're watching this. The battle for third about to rage on here. Ron John Giorgio Carrara is losing time. There's Kremers on through. Colin Daly, Myers might get all the way up to second at this rate. Him and Carrara quicker than Colin Daly. Here he goes on Carrara, looking. Carrara oh. going to throw a little block there. <laughs> yeah, because he was definitely set up to get around him. Thought about it right there as well. Giorgio definitely protecting a little bit there coming out of 14. Let's see if AJ's going to be able to set him up as he heads towards turn number three. Again, AJ just right there, not quite close enough to be able to try to make any sort of a move on him. In the meantime, Giorgio also making his way up onto the which uh, part number is that? That is the 427. I'm sorry, that's the 422. That's Colin Daly. Yeah, Colin Daly's in second. I'm sorry. AJ Myers got around Giorgio Look Carrara right there for third. <laughs> Look All right good. past Porter. Oh, All Colin. Good. Just missed it out there. So Colin Daly's still second. Man. AJ Myers is on him, though, looking for that second spot. Daly knows he's got pressure coming from the multi time Florida Winter Tour champ. And AJ Myers that time by at a 50.8. Oh my goodness, he just got around Colin Daly for second. Ronjot, he's only three seconds from the lead. A.J. Myers was half a second better than Marion Kremers the lap before. Could A.J. Myers pull off the unthinkable? Wow. Could he come from dead last on the grid to the win? It's not over. There's 11 laps to go, and A.J. Myers, we thought we were not going to get the Battle of I the Titans. I didn't think so at all. Nobody did. Nobody picked A.J. Myers except for maybe the magic car driver himself. <laughs> but he's up dead. to second. <laughs> and now at 3.2 seconds out in front, A.J. Myers has got a small margin to run down Marion Kermers. Kermers probably has no idea where A.J. is. Maybe he does. Maybe he can see that all of a sudden that bright white, blue, and orange magic cart is closing in on him. Wow. But again, folks, A.J. Myers, the 428, the three-time Pro Rock Shifter Florida Winter Tour champion, is chasing down Marion Kremers, the guy that beat him in the Scusa Pro Tour Pro Shifter Championship on the regular season last year. That time by A.J. Myers, half a second faster than Marion Kremers, a 50.63 to a 51.18. A.J. Is Myers over. is flying. This is definitely not over. What a lap of 50.661. Unreal. Unreal right now, Ron John. He's, he's, I can't believe it. Marion's got to know, yeah. Marion's got to know he's coming. This, this, this is unprecedented. No one in the history of the Florida Winter Tour Rock Shifter class has ever come from dead last on the grid to win a main event. It has never happened before. We've never come to PK Race Park before. Right. This could be a history-making drive for A.J. Myers, a career-level drive here to go through this grid. It's not the biggest grid. I don't want to overhype it. Right. There's not a million factory pilots, but right. my goodness, is A.J. Myers rolling. Meanwhile, let's go side-by-side. Side. There's a fight for third. Myers is closing in for the lead. A quick word here with Josh Conker down on the grid. 
Oh, never mind. Sorry, he's not ready yet. We'll, we'll see if we can tag with him later. A.J. Myers just picked up set, uh, nearly a second. He was nine-tenths better than Marion Kremers. Kremers probably knows he's slowing down. He's not running the times that he needs to win this main. Ten laps to go. A.J. Myers is 1.7 seconds away. And he's Marion Kremers just trying to survive. Inch by inch, he's definitely pulling up on him. It's not inches, Ron John. No, it's this is hundreds of feet <laughs> every corner. Look how close the gap yes. is now. It'll be under a second and a half when we come by the start finish line, and we'll still have nine laps to go. Oh, Again, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we've this seen this story before. Eight down, eight to go, sorry. He picked up six tenths. Yep, six tenths another that time. six tenth advantage. This is where A.J. Myers saw himself on Thursday afternoon in final practice. He said he felt like he really did have six tenths on the field. They bolted on a set of tires for qualifying, and all of a sudden they slowed way down, and he was right even with Marion and Giorgio Carrara. And now he puts on those new Levantos for the main event, and that cart comes to life. Sure and the did. SRP engine's magic cart driver is hunting down. He's into frame. Marion Kremers, you've got company on the way. There's a great battle going on for third as well, but we have got our sights locked on what is going to happen in the next stage, the next chapter of the oh, Marion Kremers, A.J. Myers saga. It's four car lengths between them, seven laps to go as they come across the start-finish line. Holy mackerel, look at the run that A.J. is getting on Marion. He is, again, he picked up six tenths again that time. A.J. Myers now gets Look at to this, he's within a card of him. A month ago, A.J. Myers was leading and Marion Kremers was trying to get around him and that's where the chaos struck because they were on a racetrack they felt was hard to pass. The, both of them have said it's a little bit tricky to get around on this racetrack. Even Danny Formal thought Marion Kremers was going to run away. He didn't even have A.J. Myers on his podium. None of us did. I thought he could get to third. He's got himself to second. He's on the bumper through turns 10 and 11. Here we go, folks. A.J. Myers through turn 12. Marion Kremers Mar starts to block <laughs> down blocked. the inside. Can he low line it for the rest of this race? He's going to have to. Out of the final turn, Man, he'll get the launch. AJ definitely looks a little faster through that area as well. Let's see. Six laps to go. Wow. AJ Myers started last, has caught Marion Kremers. He's on the bumper now as they go to turns two and three, and he has to get creative. Marion Kremers knows how to defend, and they've, uh, you know, he knows that he's just got to go narrow in only certain spots on the racetrack, and he can keep AJ at bay. He just cannot make a single mistake, and he would bring PSL carding a clean sweep of the headline classes something we haven't seen from them in a moment. But as they head to turn seven, Myers oh. looking, turn seven, he yes. gets by! New leader, A.J. Myers from dead last on the grid. That is absolutely amazing, and it's so clean. Good clean race and good clean pass right there. And just and like look that, at that already, yes. The gap opens up, Marion Kremers, nothing he can do, but watch A.J. Myers drive off into the sunset now. Five laps to go. A.J. Myers is going to have that Checkered Motorsports Magic Kart USA factory team having one of the biggest parties in West Palm Beach, Florida Man, tonight. There, there's some magic in that cart today. That is for sure. From dead last to out in front. Think about how they ended Saturday in night, 11 right? laps. That's amazing. Yes. Think about, again, how they ended their Saturday, thinking that they've got a top two run. And now they find themselves, you know, then they get the DQ in post-race tech inspection. And then we fast forward to today, to the main event, and all of a sudden, A.J. Myers does what A.J. Myers does. does. He puts his head down, <laughs> he goes to work, he gets to seventh by the end of the opening lap. He got a great start, he avoided the carnage, didn't throw the race away, kept it going forward, and has got himself into the lead. Four to go this time, let's he's, look further back. He's going to stretch Kremers, it out. Yeah, the lead stretching out here. There goes Myers, here comes Kremers. Let's look at this fight for third. The final spot on the podium has been an all-out dogfight. Colin Daly, Giorgio Carrara, and Gianno Torino. 3-4-5 with four laps to go. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Colin has really been strong considering he hasn't raced in a while. It's great to see him here, but he is really showing some serious strength here in this card here, the number 422. Colin Daly, Jamaican me crazy. Yeah, the flying Jamaican right yes, there indeed. working his way through turn seven. Four car lengths back to Giorgio Carrara on that factory Lenzo cart for International Motorsports. As uh, Giorgio, oh, Torino with a big mistake. Oh no. Out of fifth, slides wide, tries to get oh. back in front of Saracino, and Saracino gets collected. Oh, Saracino is out. The privateer VTM Engines TV cart oh, was running sixth. That. 
And when Torino came back on the racetrack, he takes out Vincenzo Saracino with three laps to go. Oh, no. Definitely did not expect that. Well, now it's gone from a three-driver fight right. down to two. I don't know if Torino got any damage. Ricardo Escoto Lechuga moves to second. How about let's go back all the way to the man running in seventh on that black and green Orcelone racing barrel art today. Baylor Griffin has worked his way up to seventh. This guy was laying on the racetrack yes. when the checkered flag flew with a heavy impact into the outside wall. He said he's a little bit sore, got some painkillers, <laughs> rented a brand new go-kart from PSL overnight because his go-kart was trashed. It was destroyed. Rode it off, totaled it, and he is looking at a potential top six run as he chases down his fellow Orcelon Racing teammate, Ricardo Escorta Lechuga. And again, he also, like A.J. Myers, had to start dead last with now two laps to go. He might just get there for six, but let's go back up front to the top five to recap their stories here on the day again. Man, and look at A.J. again, went purple that time. Here we are just two laps from the end and he's putting purple laps down yeah. with a 50.5 to a 51.5, a second faster that last time by. Yeah, A.J. Myers again last year, right? I mean, you know, seemed like when he came off such a dominating 2021 season, wins the Florida Winter Tour, wins the Supercarts USA Pro Tour, just comes up shy from winning the Super Nationals in Vegas. I mean, he had a, an amazing year. And then 2022 comes around, and it just seems like bad luck would strike, he, and he comes up as the bridesmaid in the Winter Tour in second, bridesmaid in the Scusa Pro Tour in second. Bad luck hits him again in Las Vegas. And now the 428 factory magic car driver. It's bad luck on Saturday, has to start from dead last, and A.J. Myers will make his way to the PK teardrop for the final time with a near three and a half second lead. Yeah, that magic car truly has been magic for A.J. today. You know, starting at the tail end of the lap full of incredible young drivers and be able to make up that many cards in the very first lap. Here we go. Coming to turn number 13. Final time to turn 14. No one has ever come from dead last in a Pro Rock Shifter Florida Winter Tour main to win. A.J. Myers makes history. He wins round two in Loxahatchee. Bam. Unbelievable. He's pointing at his tires as he went by, so. Yep, well, that's what it was. They, hey, he must have found the right set because they worked. They worked. A.J. Myers from dead last wow. wins at PK Race Park. Unreal. Goes from 16th on the grid to the win. Marion Kremers in second. And how about the flying Jamaican? Colin Daly in his wow. return to North American Pro Shifter Kart Racing with basically zero seat time coming into the week. Gets third. But A.J. Myers, your Pro Shifter Rock main event winner here at PK Race Park. And again, Colin Daly on that DR North America entry Phenomenal, phenomenal run here for a Fantastic. driver just getting back into Absolutely. the swing of things and he gets himself a podium. How excited is that team going to be? Oh, the DR boys, they got to be pumped up. How is excited is the Magic Car team going to be, though? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, wow. Well, dude. I saw Andrew and the crew down here, the Checkered Motorsports guys. Them boys got to be fired are, up today. Andrew's still taking a look. Look at this. We got some donuts Come on, here. donuts. Give it up. Burn it down for the crowd. A.J. Myers is victorious at PK Race Park. And you can see, man, the crowd is pumped up. They are <laughs> loving it as he burns that motor to the ground and christens the start-finish line here at PK Race Park. He's got it pumped up. He says, you know what? I just needed some new shoes. Yeah, you got some good new shoes, too. Oh, yeah. A.J. Myers just going to take it in here. Let's see if we can send that microphone. Boys, if you can go down onto the racetrack, we'll see if we can get Emery Light and Alexander Searle to go meet him because we got a great shot at A.J. Get him to hang on tight for a moment. Oh, he's going to push himself over into the scale line. We'll see if we can grab him there. He's got to get over into the scales regardless. But A.J. Myers on that factory magic cart, doesn't matter if he burned that thing down. It's all good. Oh, there we go. Maybe we can help him out there. He'll take the, uh, the helmet off. He's got to be gassed after that one. A big sigh of relief for the uh, three-time FWT champion, wow. multi-time national pro shifter champion, A.J. Myers. One and the 428 the Magic Cart will push himself into, into a probably the happiest push into the scale line you will ever see. That's probably one of the finest drives by a driver I've seen in a long, long time. As we mentioned, never has anybody gone from dead freaking last 
to the front. And we saw A.J. Myers do it right here at Loxahatchee at the PK Entertainment and Race Facility. Fantastic race. Congratulations to A.J. and his crew. What a tremendous, tremendous victory. Alexander Searle, Emery Lida down in pit lane. You guys got a copy on us down there? Let's see if we can get a hold of the boys there down there, trying to find themselves a, a spot as they work through the, uh, the scale line area. We'll see if we can get a hold of, there they are, right over there. Alexander Searle, Emery Lida, we got you. We could see you down there on the screen. You guys caught us? There you go. Let's see if we can chat with him. Emery. Here, you Alex. got me? Yeah, we got you. What do you guys got, man? We're, we're flabbergasted Dude. up here. We got no words for that one. This is absolutely crazy, Xander. I mean, A.J. Myers, 16th to first. Only took him nine laps to get there. I mean, half a second, seven tenths a lap. His ability to just pull that out of the bag. Pulled away from Mario Krimmers at the end. He'd said all weekend long it was the tires. It was the tires after the first heat. Puts on a new set for the final. And he makes history here. Absolute pandemonium. We'll get a word with him after he clears the scales in just a minute. But this has been absolutely insane for the rest of the grid. I mean, you've got Colin Daly in third. A fantastic story for him aboard the DR cart. Marion Kerbers comes up just short. Still in a good position for the championship. But the story of the day by far is A.J. Myers and just what he was able to do. Just insane run through the field. Well, yeah, no doubt about that, Emery. I mean, I'm right there with you. That, this, uh. is, this is just absolutely crazy stuff here from A.J. Myers and the Magic Cart USA Factory squad getting the job done, getting, the, again, the mission complete. And all of a sudden, this championship completely changes here. You can see the, the Checkered Motorsports Magic Cart guys waiting, everybody waiting to make sure there's one last thing they got to hold their breath for. They got to make sure they make it through the scale line. And tech. And, and tech. Uh, again, it was a, a weird little issue there for A.J. Here's a look uh, back into the scales. There's a look, Gianno Torino. There's, uh, there's A.J. Myers Chanto. just behind. Uh, I think he's probably chatting with a few of the drivers at the front of the field there. A little chat there. Maybe that might have been uh, I think that was Yeah, I think that was uh, Gianno talking to uh, Vincenzo about the little incident there on the track. Both of them kind of talked it out and patted each other on the back and make their way to the cart. Yeah, un unfortunate deal for Gianno Torino. Hate it for Vincenzo oh, Saracino. Had such a consistent, strong run going. And then, you know, you compare that to how consistent he was back at St. Petersburg. I mean, you know, Vincenzo Saracino gets a six result here. He, he keeps a, an outside shot right. on the championship podium, uh, but has that happened to him, and, and it just kind of all falls apart, which is, again, just, just so unfortunate there for, uh, for Vincenzo. You know, and you've got to give it out, uh, as you had mentioned, and now that it's kind of quiet around here, we've got to give a big shout-out to Baylor Griffin. What a run. Considering the, the shot he took yesterday evening, uh, congratulations to Baylor. I know he ended up in probably the top ten, so the 420. A, a rental cart from PSL, happy to have that, and what a tremendous run. I, I tell you, he said he was a little sore. I think he's a lot sore, but that's just me after seeing that. Yeah, I mean, Baylor Griffin. He I really mean, did take a heck of a shot yesterday. Oh, he, yeah, no, no, no doubt. I mean, Baylor Griffin took it, and, uh, you know, again, he was quick up, and, you know, again, class act from Baylor Griffin. His first thoughts was not really about his health or anything, as we see Colin Daly moving on through. There's Marion Kremers in the PSL card and Bureau Arts squad. Unfortunately, second all that he can muster here in that one, and a frustrating run for him as the pace just was not there. He did everything in his power to do it. He tried to block, tried to hold the lead, and uh, Marin Kremer is just going to end up there, unfortunately, down in the uh, uh, second spot here in the main event podium. But he's still, again, I mean, that's consistent points for him. And to make up for uh, PK Race Park, it's going to keep things super, super interesting here, Ron John. There is no clear-cut runaway in no. this championship. I don't know where the points are all going to add up, but we're going to have a pretty heads-up fight in Orlando. Orlando is going to be absolutely amazing. Yes, we've got some really, really good fights set up for Orlando in the championship. But uh, who would love to be one of those Florida one or two or champions for after 25 years? Love to have my name on one of those trophies. So looking forward to Orlando. I know there will be a lot of racing going on in Orlando for at least three good weekends. So, Yeah, again, the Orlando stretch, of course, the next thing on Cart Chaser yep. that we've got with that uh, run through the order with, of course, the Rock Florida Winter Tour smack dab in the middle. you got the U.S. Pro Kart Series on the front end the week before. It just makes it possible for a lot of race teams to come in there and get a whole lot of racing done at a world-level facility. And, uh, you know, again, I know the drivers, again, you know, sometimes they don't like getting put in a box. That makes it a little bit awkward uh, for them to uh, figure out how to make it go. But, you know, I, I sometimes, outside of the rib injuries, I don't want to discredit any of those from a safety point of view. But 
whether they like the layout or not. You don't got to like every layout. They didn't like St. Pete. St. Right. Pete, we still got good racing. Yes, you know? we did. If we give everything they want, uh, well, you know, everyone's going to have the fastest engine, and that means no one has the fastest engine. So that's another thing the drivers always want. You can't always listen to, right? <laughs> Uh, like I said, I've heard them. And I say that, you know, with all love because well, of course. I was one of those drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Still kind of am one of those drivers. <laughs> Halfway. <laughs> wannabe. Whatever you want to call it. Well, you know, Xander, I hadn't heard as much about the idea of making mistakes as I've heard the drivers mention that this weekend here at this particular facility. Yeah. Again, I know, I know the track is pretty fast, but watching... Uh, throughout the weekend, seeing people, uh, some of the best drivers in the world, making mistakes out on the track, uh, and, and mentioning the fact that they are making the mistakes out on the track. So uh, the track definitely did its job. The teams did their job, and we had some great racing this weekend. And, of course, we also had some of those incidents where uh, the guys would get out in front and say, adios, and take off and get out there and end up, you know, five, six seconds out ahead of everybody. Well, we're going to have the podium ceremonies over by the Levanto Arch for uh, those here in the paddock. And, uh, of course, as the field continues to roll through the Greyhound Racing Seats final corner, there is the 428 Magic Card of A.J. Myers. Had to come in at the back end of the scale line <laughs> after doing some donuts and uh, stalling her out on the front straightaway. Probably blowing her up. Doesn't matter. They'll rebuild that thing. they got to burn it, tear it down in uh, post-race tech inspection anyway. But uh, there you go for A.J. Myers on through. And... Um, We'll uh, see if we can chat with uh, some more on it all, but uh, congratulations there. Big round of applause for A.J. Myers as he rolls through the scale line. There's uh, Ursula from Rock Cup USA giving him a little bit of congrats as well, and there's the Magic Kart team. They get the number one. There goes Robbie Pajoso on through, and A.J. Myers get that card on the stand and celebrate, my friend. Heck of a performance for A.J. Myers. Oh, no. What is that? Is that a pen? We got a penalty. Are you kidding me? Oh. Whoa, A.J. Myers with a post-race penalty for maybe a jump start? That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. Oh, oh, we're, we're going to wait. Got to have to wait and see. Oh, I, I, oh, I know oh, he had a tremendous I, 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 first lap. We're not going to speculate yeah, here on no, the street. We don't know all. what's going on, but A.J. Myers signs the document there for a, a penalty, in, uh, and uh, that might give us the, the win to Marion Kremers. And now the championship changes again, yes, Ron Johnson. <laughs> I mean, unreal, and hate it for Hunter Pickett. Um, man, you know, again, him and Josh Conker didn't even make it out of the first corner. Good to see Hunter smiling. I know, again, he's got a big fan club back home in the Pickett Racing family with so much lineage, and just hate to see it for Hunter. Sure you know, do. I mean, such a, you know, likable, really, really humble guy, and uh, wanted to put on a good show rolling off from that uh, third row, and, and it just ends up uh, in, in, in some carnage for him. So we got a lot to unpack from Rock Pro Shifter. Well, let's take a word from our partners, try and see if we can get some information, and we'll come back with post-race interviews after this, ladies and gentlemen. Stick with us. part of the magic that's taken A.J. Myers to multiple national championships? Check out Greyhound Racing Seats and their full catalog of options from their R1 and R1 Extra Soft Seats for high grip conditions, their Viper Medium Seat for medium grip, and the RS2 Stiff Seat for low grip conditions. It's time to win. It's time to see why Greyhound makes the difference. If you're looking for your first foray into car racing, the Formula Inter F4 Series is for you. It's an arrive and drive championship costing a fraction of the price of the US F4 Series or USF Junior Championships, utilizing a spec fleet of cars that are randomized at every single round. 
You can start with International Motorsports Karting Team and advance through the ranks to the Formula Inter Championship. For more information, follow us online at Formula Inter on all social media. start with uh, unpacking this one so let's let's just send it down to Alexander Searle who's caught up with the driver across the line first AJ Myers Alex thanks Andrew yeah AJ I mean last to first and shift to rock how'd you do it uh, it was easy I mean we, we didn't want to address a problem with the tires so I proved my point and uh, that's it you heard it here first AJ Myers said he proved the point cross the line first I think the point was proven back to you guys so again, what AJ is elaborating on in that one here, Ron John, is uh, uh, that uh, AJ Myers ran uh, with a uh, different set of Levanto tires than what was checked in for his race tires. Heard a lot of drivers kind of saying that yeah. there were some different batches going on, and uh, AJ put on his practice tires from Thursday when he was way clear on the field, and we saw the pace difference there. He rolled across the line, and he, he knew he was DQ'd. So. Kudos to him. Very interesting. Yeah. Takes him out of the championship, obviously, but I'm right. sure in his mind with that DQ in the pre-final, he may have already been out. So, yeah. Well, oh. let's go to the other half, who <laughs> is the official winner. Marion Kremers is down with Alex. Thanks, Xander. Yeah, Marion, cross line second, but officially you're the winner in the Shifter Rock class. I mean, how does it feel? And obviously, what do you think about uh, what happened with uh, AJ there? Uh, feels a little strange, to be honest. I mean, um, I think everybody knew there was a problem with the tires. I mean... I knew from Thursday on that the, there was difference in the batches and I asked the officials what batch was going to be used for the race and that's obviously what I practiced on as well so that's, that explains my pace in practice and then explains their pace in practice as well and I, saw, I think you could see it again in this main event where I, um, I think I had a gap on the field, um, the similar gap I had on the field in the pre-final and in the heats but uh, obviously AJ was way, very, very faster so um, yeah props to him, he was fast. Uh, Obviously not on the same tire as me, so it's a little deflated to, f to win the race like this. I mean, I would have liked to celebrate with the team on crossing the finish line, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try that in uh, Orlando, I suppose. Yeah, and speaking of Orlando, obviously, I mean, now you're going in with such a huge lead in the championship, it's essentially locked up. I mean, I don't want to commentate or curse you there, but how do you feel going into Orlando? Uh, confident, obviously. I mean, uh, we've been fast. We've been fast in St. P. We're fast here again, so I know we should be fast in uh, Orlando as well, and then uh, having a huge lead just helps with, uh, with the confidence. You don't have to push it that much. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go for the win. I mean, I don't come to finish second all this way over here, so uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Mario and Kermers, everybody. P2 across the line, but your official winner is Shifter Rock. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alex. Uh, yeah, I, I it, like, you know, you hate it for Marion as well. I mean, AJ obviously had a point to prove, feeling like uh, they weren't the same. So he wanted right. to run uh, the tires that he was fast on and, and, and see the, the gap there. Uh, but, you know, like, like hearing from Marion, it, it, do, it does uh, suck a little bit for him to oh, you know, absolutely. not get to celebrate across right. the line. But I think he understands where AJ was at as well. And, and we saw AJ Myers give a hug and congratulations to the PSL crew and say good job to those boys. So, you know, it just unprecedented. Very interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Well, we got some more. Obviously made his point, though. Yeah, he did. Point proven. Last to first. Big time. Seven tenths, eight tenths a lap clear. Let's go down here, though, 
to the flying Jamaican. Colin Daly is going to get scored officially second. How a podium, that? a P2 result in his first race back on the North American Pro shifter cart scene. He's down with Emery Lida. Here with Colin Daly. Colin, obviously a lot was going on in that race. It started with a four wide at the beginning that you kind of were a little bit in. And then after that, you were able to kind of get yourself up into provisional third position. Just walk me through your race and how it evolved for you. Um, the, main, the main start to the race was just to get the perfect start and be as consistent as possible. I mean, that was the only way we could do it. Uh, we struggled a lot with grip all weekend and we had to make chassis changes every session and we had to just be very consistent and don't make any mistakes. Yeah, and obviously the first full race back for you in the U.S. in almost a year. You're in the senior shifter field. It's a lot of an adjustment curve from that sense, just kind of getting your feet back wet again. And all things considered, I mean, it looked like you got faster and faster over the course of the weekend. How did that, how is that possible? Um, it, it's a lot of work, you know, back and forth with mechanic team and everyone. Everyone is, you know, giving their input and wondering if maybe something is wrong with me, maybe something is wrong with the engine. But um, I was confident in the team and everyone, Scott, my engine builder, and Don, you know, he has confidence in me and we had to just work very hard to get the perfect setup. All right, one last thing. Obviously, not entirely sure what the schedule is looking like going forward, but what can you take from this weekend in terms of the races you're going to be planning to do stateside coming, going forward over the next year? Um, the main thing is, you know, the preparation and testing. We just have to get more in, and I think we'll be back on top. Sounds good. Colin Daly, a really good weekend for him, capped off with a provisional second-place finish here in Rock Shifter. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Emery. Congrats to Colin That's Daly. Huge. And such a well-spoken young yes. man. We're so happy to have Colin back racing. He's been a long-time pro shifter cart sure driver. Has been. Kudos to Don Gilbo. He was so amped to get Colin back in the States. We haven't really seen too much of him, uh, you know, over the last couple of years. And, and I know that Don wants to make a big push with the DR North America squad and, and uh, you know, have, uh, have Colin over here representing Jamaica. And, uh, man, is he just a bad, fast shifter cart driver. Absolutely did a phenomenal job today. And then to end up in the second position, Congratulations. Colin, you deserved it. You worked your tail end out there. Well, we go from uh, a good run for Colin Daly to unfortunately not much of a run for Josh Conker. It did save the ribs, but probably didn't feel too good going off the racetrack in turn one, lap one. Let's go down here as uh, Josh Conker is down with Emery. Here, Josh Conker had high hopes for you coming to this race. I even picked you to win this one, and it lasted no more than about 100 feet. Show me through what happened with that four wide sandwich. Yeah, it was an um, unfortunate ending to our weekend. We were really looking up towards the final. Chassis felt really good this morning. And, uh, yeah, we were looking to have some good pace in the race there. But, yeah, you know, uh, Giorgio had a slow start in front of me. It was a typical theme this week. So, I like, I expected it, but um, I went to the outside of him. Unfortunately, another driver got down the inside of him, and Hunter came around my outside. And you can't go four wide into turn one. So, uh, it's racing. Things happen. It's unfortunate. It ends the championship run for us. But... Uh, does save the ribs. Got two and a half weeks to rest up for USPKS. Yeah, I'm looking at this weekend. It wasn't the smoothest weekend for you. You had an incident in heat number two as well and kind of struggled at times for a pace, but ultimately, like, you found quite a bit of pace over the course of the weekend. And when you look at heading to Orlando, you've got multiple races there. It's going to be a lot going on. What can you take away from this one, and how are you planning to attack heading into the next few rounds, both of this championship and then heading into USPKS and Scusa and beyond. Yeah, so this weekend was a good test weekend for us. We learned a lot about this version of the Marinel chassis um, on a regular racetrack, so it's good for us, good knowledge to take into USPKS Orlando. And I've been to Orlando before, thankfully, unlike everybody with PK, but um, yeah, so looking forward to Orlando, looking forward to the knowledge we got and uh, putting together two strong races. All right, well, Josh Conker, it was a good weekend for him, all things considered. Just could not get away from a tough situation in turn one. He ends his final on the record, and we'll have to look for more in Orlando. Back to you guys. Thanks, Emery. Unfortunate for Josh Conker, but, you know, like you mentioned, good test weekend. Did everything he could, you know, and just uh, sometimes that's the way it that's the way it goes, right? You know, you just uh, have, a, have a good day, have a bad day, and the speed is is what it is but as we wrap things up here ron john from the broadcast booth um you know i i think there's a lot of different things to pull out of this race weekend uh a lot to talk about um but what sticks out to you i mean this is still you know hey first trip to pk race park right. in loxahatchee 
The ambulance didn't move. <laughs> you know, we, we end on time today. We only had eh, one, I think maybe two red flags. I right. think it was just one during the race weekend. So that's a plus. Um, for those of you that are watching, talking about the racetrack, yes, it is a little bit rough. There was, uh, you know, super, super soft ground. This is right. built on. This is just really, really sandy. We're in the swamps. We're in the, yeah, we're in the swamps. So there's a lot of uh, progress these guys have made in the last three weeks and that they're going to be making over the summer. So the racetrack looks gorgeous. Uh, really the layout's does. cool. Um, and, you know, they, they've honestly got a really, really group he a good group here, I would yep. say, um, that, you know, first of all, they've been great with us. They've been great, you know, fitting rock in, fitting the Rotax race in as well and, and, and getting it up to where it's at now. And I think this place is going to continue to grow. And if nothing else, I mean, it's an, an amazing uh, area as well here to, to kind of get karting back in the West Palm Beach, you know, um, you know, central east coast of Florida. You there know, have another a, pocket that we, we really knows, haven't had. There's a million people down here, that's for sure. So yeah. they've got a lot of opportunity to possibly bring in some new drivers here. I think this facility is just going to get better over time. Uh, obviously, um, hearing the drivers, I, I, I heard about the tires. I heard about the bumps. But the racing was really good. The, 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 ra the track raced a lot better, I think. Even this layout, you know, it raced pretty good. We had some really good races all the way down to the wire. Uh, lots to pull out of this weekend, oh. right? Pro Senior Rock was a runaway with Morgato, but for Micro and Mini, I mean, it was crazy. It always is. Junior had some good storylines. So, Masters. How about Masters, Rock JP? Renato Yadder blowing a chain coming yes. out of the final corner. Um, a lot of unpredictability. And then the shift to Rock stuff aside, um, overall, again, a safe weekend of Rock Cup Florida Winter Tour action. For all of us, of course, at Car Chaser, this ends this six-week stint we've had of back-to-back -back racing. There's two weeks off. And then we go for the month of Orlando, uh, three U.S. Pro National races there. The U.S. Pro Kart Series first, so we'll be back. We'll have the Rock Cup Florida Winter Tour finale to cap off the winter season as the regular season gets started the week before with the U.S. Pro Kart Series. It's going to Pro Tour at the end of that month. There's that regional race, the Texas Sprint Racing Series, kind of smack dab in the middle. Um, and then we keep going all the way through the year uh, for the Rockers and everyone all the way to Vegas season. But the regular season's upon us. The winter stretch, almost over. We just got this one Florida Winter Tour event coming up. And no matter how it all worked out for these guys this weekend, another 33% bonus in Orlando. So it's still anyone's game. For Ron John Ebersole, myself, Xander Clements, the Rock Cup team, the PK Race Park team, and everyone here at Car Chaser, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in two weeks.